This is a mic check. is a second, and yet no less important. Ladies and gentlemen, it is 8.14 p.m. on March 5th, 2024. I am, yet again, a little late because I had to do chest and shoulders today. And I hope when I finally hit this button, you'll know that it was worth it. That it was 100% worth it. You are listening to Westside Tyler Live, the Internet's premier show with me in it. 
Hello, everybody. My name is Tyler Bell, host, writer, creator of the Long Running Horror and Dark Fiction Podcast, The West Side Fairy Tales, which you can learn more about at westsidefairytales.com. Free horror stories for the discerning communist. Um, I say that, but I, I think even communists won't fucking like my shit. Nobody will like my shit, but cool based individuals like you. Shout out everyone who is in the audience right now. Welcome to motherfucking VOD gang. Yes, we're hitting this one hard. Damn, son, we're, going where'd you find this? This? we're talking about Vodgang. We're talking about mother fucking VOD gang. We're gonna hit this episode running. If you didn't know, if you want to continue these conversations, comments, concerns, all that good shit while the show is no longer running because hey man this stream isn't this is the stream isn't convenient for everybody okay sometimes it's at night sometimes it's during the day sometimes it's while you're at work who the fuck knows if you're trying to catch up back after the fact vod gang vod g-a-n-g join the discord the west side and become a part of vod gang today in order to ask questions content requests all of that good shit the invite code is in the episode description as always Tonight, we got a pretty solid show for you. Uh, I'm going to be talking about James Summerton and that whole uh, situation, I guess, is how I'll say it. Um, we'll be throwing up the red tag for a little bit about that. So if you have an issue with content regarding certain triggers, uh, suicide, etc., we will be throwing up the tag for that section. When you see red, skip ahead. If you see red, skip ahead. Okay, as per always. We're also going to be talking about a um, lefty video that was recommended to me on a movie that I thought was fucking hilarious the first time I saw it that I think is supposed to be portrayed pretty hard. It is called Lone Survivor. It is a Mark Wahlberg film. It is the first video ever made by this uh, little lefty streamer who is now like half the size of my channel, like 6,000 6, fucking subs off of one video. Good for them. Hopefully they can keep up the momentum if it's a good video and hopefully they fail utterly if it's not. God damn them to hell. Uh, but it should be cool. And we're also going to go and pay a visit to um, our, our good old friend, um, the longest running gag in internet history, Critical Drinker. He released a advertisement or a trailer. I don't know how to call it. I would say an advertisement for his, <laughs> a, a cinematic advertisement for his new movie. Um, I watched like two seconds of it because it auto played and I was exhausted just fucking looking at it. So uh, we'll, be, we'll be doing that tonight too. And if we run out of time, we'll be taking some viewer requests as always. Boy, oh boy. How are you guys doing? It's been a rough week. Last episode. Last episode was intense. Last episode was hot. Hot and heavy. Arguments in chat. Um, I am going to start trying to, as per usual, Jesus Christ, this thing's fucking blown out. I am going to start trying to um, force conversations from chat into Discord. I think if I have mods around, or even if I don't, I should be able to um, to make that happen. Let's see. Right there. There we go. Apply. Doesn't need to be that bright. Uh, so that I can just have these conversations like as fast as possible, because it is it is now officially almost too fucking difficult for me to follow everything that's happening in the live chat. Um, ba -ba -da -ba -da. Let's see, who, do, who, who, who is first tonight? Doc, shout out Doc with the 2.34 p.m. First, first comment. Best side, Tyler, you are correct. Correct and based. Correct and based. Um, hope you get some rest side. We're going to talk to chat and then we'll get to the, um, get to the regular program here. So I'm going to say hi to all you guys. Good morning, good day, good afternoon, evening, all night, folks. Welcome, William West. By the way, it was it was it was shoulders and chest day. I'm feeling fucking awesome. I did the adult thing finally, and I switched up the order that I approached my exercises in and started with dips. And I'm doing fucking great. Three sets of ten. I weigh two eighty. That's a big dip. That's a big heavy dip. <laughs> and I'm pretty proud of them. My shoulder was a little achy. Uh, but I've been working on dips for a while. I'm going to start starting my sets off with them uh, because I spent just too much time doing flat bench. I got my flat bench way up there, way up there. Flat bench was doing great, right? And then I was just like, I got to start doing other stuff because I can feel that plateau coming. Started just doing only incline bench and dips, big heavy dips. I'm going to go to dips. I think I'm going to go up to till I can get 20 on assisted. For a while, I was doing assisted dips. I was so stunned. I was like, how the fuck can I do a good dip? I can do like a little one, you know, a little... That bullshit, but I was I didn't have like good body control where I feel like real like it feels real nice, you know. You're not relying on your bones; it's all just muscle shit. Blah. Good dips, very happy, very very happy. 
But how are you guys? How are you guys doing out there? How are you guys doing? Out there? Hello, goobers. West Side Tyler implies the existence of an East Side Tyler or an East Side Kylie or something like that. What is the opposite of the name Tyler? Or is it a chiral? Is it a chiral opposite? There are actually a total of four directional Tylers. <laughs> we all represent a different season. I think Summerton just changed the name of his con of his channel and kept right on track. And we'll get into that. And I am, I am, I'm very sus. I, I'm going to say I'm very sus, very very sus about uh, what's going on with all this. If you theorize enough, there might even be enough proof for Quaternion Tyler, so you can own co encode Tyler rotations in content space from Snoozeveld. I don't know anything. I don't, whatever knowledge base you need to know to understand that comment is, I don't have it. <laughs> but it sounds cool. That sounds awesome. I like it. Mike is good. Mike is based. Yes, 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 yes. Everybody, yeah, shout out Miss Fennec. Why is the fursona caked up? <laughs> Miss Fennec likes to do, Miss Fennec has to take care of herself. She likes to do a little exercise on the weekends. I got fucking donut icing on my fucking hand. I ate a donut right before I started. Very proud of myself. It's a Homer donut from a place called High Five Donuts um, in Louisville. And it looks like the donut from The Simpsons. Those big purple ones. Hey, 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 hey. with 10 euros. Is that 1077? I, I, we can all know the exchange rate. Thank you. Corpo, Corpo. Thank you. Uh, it's 2 a.m. and I won't listen to all of this VOD gang forever. Thank you so much, Snoozevelt, for popping through. Thank you, Gorpo, for providing the entertainment. If you want to summon Gorpo, just give five dollars in a super chat or more. Uh, five dollars American, not just a five dollar or five unit increment of your own currency. So I don't know, hit the exchange rate or just guess upward, and then you can get Gorpo to show up for a super chat. Um, did it, did it, did it, did it, did it, did what about high and low altitude, Tyler? Based Tyler is all the way up there. The truly based Tyler actually floats in around the moon all day. I don't know what I'm fucking saying. Oh, yeah, but that's Mrs. Fennec. Miss Fennec hangs out. Not Mrs. Miss Fennec. She is my producer. She works here. She has to stay in shape. That's why she's she's a little fucking, she's a little thick. She has to stay in shape because she's got to do slug wrangling. She's got a very active, very active schedule. When she's not dealing with me, she's doing a whole bunch of other shit. So she's always either sleeping or behind the scenes making things happen. She's working right now, and you guys don't get to see her. She's she's truly the feminine energy of my of my uh, live stream in that she is uh, barely seen only it talked about because people are like, why doesn't she smile more? And she thick. And uh, otherwise she's, she's not seen, but, but nothing would happen if it wasn't for Miss Fennec. So shout out all of your um, unspoken office workers. Um, if you're out there, she, Miss Fennec is, is, is your persona too. <laughs> she's not mine. <laughs> That persona got me acting unwise. <laughs> yeah. It was a serious Monday yesterday stream. Yesterday I had too much share. We're gonna try to mix. Uh, I'm gonna try to mix the uh, the thing. I think that's a fucking acoustic, acoustic issue, right? Because that's one of the ones that my fucking my uh, therapist, right? When I have to talk to her about like my fucking ADHD prescription, I'm like, hey, what's up with? Uh, this aspect of my life, you know what I'm saying? And she's like, do you ever think that you have to, you feel like you have to do all of a single project all at once and you can't like spread it out over different things? And I'm like, yes, I like to deal with everything individually once at a time. What do you think that tells you about me? Why are you taking notes? I, I was starting to think I can make the good part of the podcast last really big other days. And then the eat your veggies news part of the live stream could just be on one day. And then we got to the end of that motherfucker and it was just like <laughs> tears of fuck beating up somebody that was just named Doggo Doggo. Shout out Doggo Doggo for feeling fucking big sad. Let's see, let's see what else we got. Mike is a legend. Yes. Are Miss Fennec's eyelids red by default or is it a stress response? They are red uh, by default. That's just like her back, that's her cartoony back of her eyelids. Um, just to make it more obvious. How is this guy 36? He looks 25. Thank you. It's because I go to the gym, I drink water, and I use cocoa butter to moisturize my skin, and that's it. It's not like that was that sounded sarcastic, and that's it. 
That's it. Don't smoke. Uh, be a little frugal with alcohol once you pass your mid-20s. Be chill with it. You know, um, moisturize as much as you can. If you when when you say like, oh fuck, um, fuck moisturizing's gay. Okay, well then you get to look fifty-five when you're twenty-six. If you sm- if you smoke, you're fucked. Stop smoking immediately. All right. You'll be one of those like uh, you know. Th- th- that's why you have to like fucking starve yourself if you're one of those uh, like scrawny Europeans. All their fucking faces are about to fall completely off. <laughs> Been maxing your streaming? Yes. <laughs> I needed to drink juice because I need my calories back. Jesus Christ. Let's see. Vod gang, vod gang, vod gang. Yes, space, space, vod gang. Did you hear about Jason Blaha? He's an ex mercenary and veteran who was scouted at age 16 by the U.S. government who lost his sense of balance and coordination in a terrorist related a- accident but overcame it by just becoming really strong at squats. And good mornings. Also, he's bald. Jason Blaha sounds... That name sounds super familiar. I don't know anything about that person, but, like, I think it's probably just because Blaha sounds familiar. If there's another Blaha, I'm probably mistaking them both for each other. Man, why is Amy Dinov retracting all their messages? Are they getting fucking... Are they getting smoked? Let me see. What are you saying? What are you saying? I'm going to look at your going to look at your messages. No, I can't do it. <laughs> Eastside Kylie canonically smokes, doesn't work out, doesn't drink water and doesn't moisturize. Eastside Kylie is like just the grimiest femme cell goblin. She's just a creeper, dude. She's she's real weird. She like she likes yandere shit. <laughs> Drink water, jugs a count of Sunny D. No, this is like real. This is just Kroger orange juice with calcium. I actually got to fuck it. I'm going to finish it because I'm still thirsty as fuck. <sighs> Man, I'm still fucking thirsty. I haven't, I haven't like fully adapted yet to it getting like slightly warmer. <laughs> oh, I have to do something. If you guys don't know, we have a second slug now, but because stream elements is fucking weird as shit, I don't know if he works. So we've actually got to go into weird stream elements nightmare zone and check in a strange way. I've got to go down. So this isn't going to be real. If this pops up, it's not real. But if it does pop up, that means it works. Three times goof your friend. Let's see. Yes. Okay. So that notification will work. So if you sub, you'll get this notification. Shout out. This is from Osu. Osu Osu. Based Osu Osu. Hell yeah. And let's see. I want to see also. That's if you get goofed. New member. Let's see if new member works. Okay. And then let's see if gifts work. I just realized I could do this. Oh, no, did I miss? I missed it. These are not actually happening. Oh, no, I, I want to see the gift. Okay, it's, it's just reshowing the gifts. What's going on here? Hold on. I don't know if it actually worked and I wasn't paying enough attention. What the fuck? Now he just keeps going. (laughs) I don't know what I've done. I don't know what I've done now. I think I clicked that twice. I don't know how to end this, though. 
I don't know how to end him. I, I would never end Gorpo. But this is this is my this is Gorpo. Shout out, um, Jesus Christ! I've got to look up his stuff. Alan, Alan, I love you. Okay, but you have the most difficult to say channel name in the history of mankind. He's ABFG six one six. We are slug maxing. We are slug maxing. I don't know when it's going to end. I don't know when it's going to end. But he's way easier to talk over than the uh, the um, gun. Very nice. His gun. <laughs> you created a monster. No one want to see Gorpa no more. They want Fennec. She's chopped liver. I created a monster. Nobody wants to see Fennec no more. They want Gorpo. She's chopped liver. <laughs> Infinite slug exploit. So, yes. Um, that is, that's our other Gorpo. Pretty cool. Um, so, that's for members. If you join up, if you join, you can summon Gorpo just simply by joining. He will pop up there. Um, and I'm going to add some additional functionality. He should show up as well for gifts. But, like, the whole gifting section section of uh, YouTube is fucking weird. So, if he doesn't, he doesn't. But, he will. Uh, we have just proven it. If, fuck, don't, this is not a summoning. Uh, this is not an act of summoning. But, if somebody does the fucking members go up thing, it will. Here, thank you, Andy. Let's see. This should work. <laughs> For five subs. <clears throat> Shit. Okay, so it does not work for the gift itself, but it will activate for every every sub. Thank you, Andy, for testing it for us. <laughs> oh my god. But I do I do I do need to add the other thing, because apparently I can pause these. Um and then restart them later so that I can actually like halt the ads and stuff for the other things. <clears throat> Based, based Andy, based fucking Gorpo. McBurn, look, you're down in there. You're a little skull. Shout out, uh, Sean Healed, Dragon Goosey, Khan, McBurn, and Kira. Kira. Kira could be anybody. It could be anybody at all. I think you are. Oh my god! What's <laughs> a slug McGeddon? What the fuck? I I thought that they would politely wait for each other to go, but there was a slug Mageddon moment right there, and that was crazy. That was crazy. That was crazy. That was crazy. I like that. Oh my god. <laughs> Gigan Horming posting. I mean, sorry, Gigan Grave, $5. Hi, Tyler. I just wanted to confirm, is it okay to draw fan art of Miss Fennec jump roping in various compromising positions just out of curiosity? Bless. No horny posting in chat. Um, I, I, I will never say that you can't draw any character that I have will ever have on this because it will only cause more art of the character to be drawn. So I don't care <laughs> is, is my answer. Suspicious... Side eye, I don't care. <laughs> Double Gorpo slug apocalypse. We might, I might have to. If I can't figure out how to stop that, we might have to. Um, we might have to reskin the second slug, and he'll be one of the other ones. As you guys remember, when we first, uh, we first did the Gorpo name. Um, when we first did uh, Gorpo, we we had a naming competition for all the slugs. So there's Gorpo, Scud, Zeke. Um, Sliff, Gorpo, Scud, Sliff, and Geek, uh, Zeke. So like, the, we 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 do have to get other colored slugs for the rest of them. This is like a biblical plague, but but, but fucking pleasant. It really is. Oh. Streamer bot though the program is insanely complicated. True facts: all porn I have drawn or written was done out of spite. I feel like I should time you out for saying that. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay. Let's front load the weird news for the day. Let's front load the weird news for the day. Um, I don't know exactly how I'm going to necessarily... 
Okay. 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 Is this is this how we're going? But then I we're testing it. Because Gorpo is definitely too adorable to be popping up when I have the red the red line on. Let's see if I can see if I can add a SE live doc. Oh, it just won't let me it won't let me let it won't let me add them. Okay. Hey. I only want biblically biblically accurate angel corpo art. Thank you, Dietrich, for ten Westside Tyler memberships. My plan is coming to fruition. <laughs> oh no, multiple slugs! It's a slug Mageddon! <laughs> Will Critical Drinker movie be better slash worse than Shadowversity's movie, which got half completed or something, if I remember correctly? I think... Jesus Christ. Uh, thank you for the five pounds. Um, I think... I think Critical Drinker is actually going to finish his. So... There's that. Is there a character sheet for Miss Fennec for drawing references? Yes, there is. It is in the Westside Tylor section of the Discord. God damn. Hey, Saru, you just got a you just got vod gang. Saru's been here forever. Not a member. Strange. Strange. I got to I have to figure out. Okay, so how do I do this? Activity feed. Which one are we on? Ivory Inferno. Jesus. That should be the last one. No. Telecritter. What? Ivory Inferno, Telecritter, Saru, Frosted Moon Tips, Terry Rasher, Sharp, Doc E, Andrew Blood. Oh, June got one. And London got one. Based. You should make it where a random slug pops up. I'll have to buy, I have to pay for new ones, but I can do that. I can increase that functionality that it will randomize the um, the the thing that plays. Oh my God. <laughs> Tyler, I hope your night is going well. 10 Canadian from the Greenest Fae. I just wanted to see Gorpo barf. It's, here we go. <laughs> El Gorpo. <laughs> Symphony Eternal, yo, I'm out of VOD gang and gremlining my ass into live gang. Welcome. Bienvenidos. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to hit pause on the activity feed. And I think what that will do is allow everything to not pop off for a second, although it'll still pop up in chat, and then I can turn it back on later, and then it will go endlessly. <laughs> Tyler owned and obliterated by stream overlays. We could have it. To where, like, because it, it lets you program it in by the money, where it could be slugs literally everywhere. Like, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> One of the things I want to do for TTS is to have, uh, like, a little Miss Fennec animation where she goes, like, like, she pushes up, a, like, a little loudspeaker, and then it goes, like, you know, does, like, a little loudspeaker type thing. Bop, 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 bop. Then you hear, like, the, the loudspeaker AI voice. Tyler, I think you need to open the channel. Oh, I have it. Ah, oh, shit. I turned it off for just a second. What's going on? Obligatory checking if this is open. Yeah, sorry. I have so many things up right now that I can't quite keep track of it. I guess I don't need to have this up. I can turn that off. It's just endless. Uh, I need to have this stream elements activity feed on my OBS, but OBS just doesn't have it right now. So it is what it is. Okay, so my alerts are paused. So that we can go over, shame the emotes don't work in the video chat. Yes, I have tried to fix that. There is no, there's no way that I know how to do it. If you're a programmer and you know how to fix like something like stream elements and make it so that I can have my emotes from uh, YouTube pop up in my fucking chat box, I will, I will fucking work with you. <laughs> Tell me a fucking price so I can figure it out. Uh... I think the FX could be stand to be brought down a little bit. It does get obnoxious about the 20th time in the row. You could do the thing pirate software does, but slugs instead of weasels. I don't even know what he does. Does he have little weasels? But we will do it. We will figure it out. Um, yeah, I've, I've got to fix the uh, thing. Did it work? Is Gorpo paused? $2 is not enough to fire off a Gorpo, unfortunately. Gorpo, Gorpo shows up for $5 or more. Let's see, I think. Yeah, 
Gorpo only shows up after five dollars. I'm sorry, everybody. <laughs> I gotta put the two dollars. Maybe the two dollars can be like less than that because he just goes across the entire bottom of the screen. I'm trying to get a ghost SSP desktop buddy program to do a TTS for YouTube. I think it could work, but I have no idea how to do it. <laughs> well, if you figure it out, if you figure it out. <laughs> Westside Tyler owned and obliterated by stream overlays. True. True, true. I will never recover from it. I first found the channel during the Gorpo vote. So the first thing I did sled during a dream was to vote for Gorpo so I can confirm that voting works. Hey, democracy is here. <laughs> this stream is off to a sluggish start, I see. Shut the fuck up. That's so corny. And <laughs> what a fucking king, dude. Oh my god. Well, I do feel dumb. I do, I do say that Gorpo is only $5 in work. I know I said it out loud. I'm so sorry. Okay. Okay. We got to bring, we got to bring the, uh, we're going to have to bring the vibes down um, here in just a second. Let's see. Where did I have this? Is this in downloads? No, it's in my actual thing. Got to go through my uh, catch all folder. Oh no. There's so many horses on the screen. You can't see right now. <laughs> Okay, so um, I, this is, we're, we're going to be getting into a little bit of a heavy territory. I am not going to stand, I am not probably going to stay very long on the James Summerton stuff, but I do want to get the James, Summer, James Summerton stuff over and done with, hopefully, um, done. This is going to be a little bit negative, segment content warning, TW, suicide, self-harm, whatever, um, all of those things. Uh, yeah, I've got to get into it. Do, 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 do. Okay. So, uh, three months ago, I think it was now, um, H bomber guy who everyone knows Harris bomber guy, uh, slug folder incoming <laughs> Harris bomber guy, um, who is the like king of bread tube, you know what I mean? Whatever. Uh, he's like one of the biggest video essayists, I think on youtube um if not like the biggest definitely like the biggest in my area you know what i mean he released a video three months ago on the ongoing plagiarism drama involving illuminati which had a surprise turn as all of his videos do because they're four hours long so they actually really have to kind of be like two or three different videos combined um and then it ended up about being a guy up uh, ended up being about a guy named um, James Summerton, who I had never heard of before that video and could have stand to have never heard of again after it, um, because we find out in the video that James Summerton had plagiarized like almost fucking the entirety of his YouTube content, if not just outright lied about stuff. I'm not going to rehash the entirety of it. Just suffice to say the evidence is in and Summerton, I believe, ultimately admitted to it. While trying to, uh, he had an apology video, which has now been taken down. Um, he admitted to basically all of it while not really taking full responsibility. It was a, uh, not quite, not quite, but still close to a, uh, toxic gossip train level apology. So today or in the last like 10 hours or so, James Summerton's Social media have vanished. Kaputsky, right? The only thing I found left up still that I think I can tangentially connect to him is his LinkedIn, right? Uh, or not his LinkedIn, his link tree. <laughs> Jesus Christ, if I die or disappear, please just destroy my fucking LinkedIn. I would hate people just still sending you birthday messages with bots and it's been 250 years since the earth went cold. Um... His stuff vanished, right? And apparently, and I cannot confirm this independently, even though I tried because all of his social media is gone, he left some sort of, uh, people are saying, a suicide note. Now, this does not mean, this literally does not mean that James Summerton engaged in any sort of self-harm. This doesn't mean shit as far as I'm concerned until I know what the fuck happened at the end. 
I'm going to show you the thing. I'll show you the thing, and we'll, we'll, we'll proceed with this. I'm going to be hopscotchy as I can. Please don't get in the comments saying, popping off, saying fucking crazy shit. Um, because I, I'll find, if I find it distasteful, I might just fucking can you a little bit. So uh, keep, like, the bad jokes. If, I don't, if you tell a joke and I don't laugh at it, that's a fucking ban. I can't have unfunny people in my community. I can have quiet audience members. Um, okay, so this was, uh, this was shared. There's nothing graphic in it. You can read it. Um, it reads, and I found this from actual Jake Corn Guy. Corn Guy shared this on his Twitter. Just so you know, that's where I found this. He had screen capped it. I downloaded his screen cap just in case his shit disappeared. If this message is live, it means I scheduled it before ending things. I have videos scheduled to go out over the next couple days. Nothing new. I just wanted Nick's portfolio of work to be available. I think Nick is his collaborator. If I remember correctly from the other things, like Nick wrote shit. Uh, I, I don't know. I've left directions that any money from those videos be donated to the Canadian Association for Suicide Prevention. They've tried very hard to pull me back, but there's simply no life for me anymore. I've lost everything, my only friend, my livelihood, my name, and it's all my own fault. The world will be a little bit better off now. Goodbye. Um, this is the note that was left. And I really just don't even know what the fuck to make of it. Immediately, I am going to say, and this is going to come off callous, um, whether or not he persists on this mortal plane, so to say, I don't care. This is a stranger on the internet. I, I, I strongly urge you at home to also join me in not giving a fuck because this is a stranger on the internet and not someone that was like routinely harassed by, um, you know, people for like their, the way that they are or something. And that's kind of like, you know, they, they weren't just attacked and dogpiled. It's a person that sought fame, achieved it, and then was caught in basically uh, not necessarily criminal, but civil liable, civilly liable fucking uh, levels of plagiarism and copyright infringement that other people, I guess, just didn't know to push after. Uh, just, just absolutely unethical content. Caught seven ways to Sunday and um, felt bad about it and decided to check out. Well, I'm going to say check out for the rest of this um, because I literally, I don't know what happened. I am unironically without reservation 75 percent ish sure the dude's still alive somewhere because tmz exists and this was a this is too much blood in the water there's no way that they haven't used their fucking uh chinese government grade hacking fucking abilities to try to like look up the fucking death records in every place this dude's ever lived um there's ways to find these things out if the guy was in 10 hours, if the guy was legitimately gone by now, I feel like we know, uh, you know, it's speculating, but like, also here's the thing. Here's the biggest reason why I don't give a fuck other than a, he was just a highly unethical person and got caught. This is the, this is his choice. <laughs> this is his choice to do whether or not it happened. Um, whether or not he checked out, checked out for real, for real, because he did a bad thing and didn't take credit for it really. in the apology as I remember, didn't really like, can't do a comeuppance for it. And then he released this, which is still not making good. Do you know what I mean? Like while, and he still can, like he still has, um, his YouTube channel, which I've seen his YouTube channel is this. He changed this from James Summerton to James of Telos. Uh, people are saying that it's some sort of Greek thing for dying or something. Um, I don't know. I looked up Telos, and it's a, a very complicated Greek term that can mean like the summation or end of things, but it's got philosophical implications, and then it's also like a tech company. It's, I don't know. It's a little extra, first and foremost. It's a little extra. It, it's a little extra. Is it not like, is this not, is that not fucking crazy? This whole thing, the whole vibe of this strikes me as being way too, um, messy and showy and out there. This is not the conduct of someone who wants people to pay less attention to them. Or it was like, I don't like the attention. You could have just left without telling anyone. 
You could have just gone. Because I don't know who the fuck that note is for. Because <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, other than just to make people feel bad. And I think that's really where I'm going to be get, going into with this. This is regardless of what we find. Regardless of what happens. I don't care. I don't. I literally don't care if the worst thing possibly to have happened happened. This is textbook manipulation. Textbook. It literally is. By the way, if you feel bad, if you're like all fucked up about this, like, oh my God. Oh my God. Um, you're being manipulated. Yes, you can be manipulated by the actions of a dead person. That's why sometimes they do that. People will check out just to fuck up the lives of the people that survive. I know that's crazy, but when one considers the existence of suicide bombers, uh, it starts to fall into place a little bit more. This is directly, and the, the immediate effect that it's having is this is directly turning into a uh, H bomber guy tried to get James Somerton to kill himself. That is the current narrative online. It is stupid as fuck. Literally all fucking uh, H. Bomber guy did was tell the truth. And also, like, from what I understand, Summerton had a number of times where he could have just stopped doing the wrong thing. And then started doing the right thing and nothing bad would have fucking happened. He would have been A-OK. Life would have life would have continued on, darling. But instead, he just continued with his unethical possibly in some respects criminal behavior um, and eventually got caught for it and was so large and prolific that it became like a cottage industry overnight to fucking like make videos about him. I don't give a fuck that that happened to him. As a matter of fact, I will say this unreservedly. He deserved it. He deserved every second of it. Do you not? It was that video came out in 2023. Do you not know how the internet works? You were eventually going to get caught. You knew you were lying. You knew you were cheating. And you knew you were big. You had a large profile. The second you get caught, it is going to be a fucking firestorm on your name because the wolves are going to come out. They're going to sink their teeth in and they're going to devour you so that they can grow stronger, which is the natural. It's the life cycle of the internet. It doesn't have to be good or bad or moral or amoral. It's kind of like saying, oh, I'm upset. The wolves are evil. They have taken the sheep from the field. Like, no, that's just what they do, all right? You either put something in fucking place to stop it or just accept that that's what's fucking coming down the pipeline. And he did bad stuff. Once he did bad stuff and got caught, he put out a shit-ass apology, as, as people do, and tried to hold on to it. When that didn't work, he did whatever this is. Whatever this is, which is, first off, on its face, on its face, not anything but selfish. Quite literally. <laughs> he... he he got in trouble for ripping people off, right? The way to make that better is to try to make them whole again with the money that you took from them. There is nothing about that in this video. He said, no, 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 the new videos that are coming out, I, wanna, I, I, want, I just wanted Nick's portfolio of work to be available. I've left directions that any money from those videos be noted, donated to the Canadian Association for Suicide Prevention. I'm sure the Canadian Suicide uh, Prevention Association is a perfectly like legitimate body but why wouldn't you give the money either A, to fucking Nick, or B, to the people who you fucking plagiarized and stole from? Which he was doing in one of the other videos, right? I think they said that, you know, this video, it's, it's whatever, the, the, the big YouTuber monetization spiel. I am not going to be monetizing this video. Instead, I am going to be trying to uh, make people whole again. I almost kind of did a fucking H-bomber guy right there. That's, that's, that's first off, just if you don't, it's, it's lazy first off and selfish. I mean, really, I think I can kind of stop there. Lazy and selfish. Unironically, there is no like sacrifice that he made or anything. Like it's stupid. Like it was a stupid thing to do. If you really felt bad about any of this shit, just live, live, suffer the consequences of your actions like a fucking adult, overcome them and grow as a person. But like, this uh, fucking Ophelia and Hamlet level bullshit is what we have to deal with. I'm going to change the name of my YouTube channel and write a note. What in the fuck? And, and I can say that I'm so disgusted by this behavior. If you really wanted, if you really wanted to make everything better, he could have just done almost literally anything else. Just get back on the internet, start making content again, and start trying to get people paid. 
start doing restitution and shit. You know what I mean? Build it up. It's not like the thing that he did was so bad that it's one of those like, okay, it's probably better if you check out permanently. You know, like, like Hitler saved everybody a lot of time at the end of his life by just, you know, you know, we don't have to do the court thing. We don't have to listen to him talk. He's like, all right, hey, you know what? Fucking bygones are bygones, I guess. You know, I'm going to fucking hop into a puddle of gasoline and, and, and fucking eat a bullet. In this case, you're, it's, it's literally just yet again trying to escape from any sort of culpability for the thing that you did. It's just a, a series of acts of, of self-involved cowardice from an intellectually and emotionally lazy person. And I have no respect for it. And it should not be respected. It should not be respected. It should not be aggrandized. I think aggrandized is the, uh, the correct word. It shouldn't be built up. It shouldn't be like, this is a moment we can all learn for. No. No. At the very best, James Summerton is a selfish, manipulative, lying piece of shit. At the very best. At the very best. At the very best. At the worst, same thing. Like, literally, it's just a one for one. Uh, I know, actually, at the worst, he's faking this. And he's going to come back in two days and be like, I think this is a lesson we can all learn from. It is overdramatic, manipulative bullshit. And he should, if he's still alive, fucking don't ever log back onto the internet. Don't ever log back onto the fucking internet. You're, you're done. This is, <laughs> you should, you, this is why I kind of, when I was thinking checked out, this is it. You, you're, this checkout is a one way. All right. You know, I hope you, I, it would be better if you're not dead because then maybe some part of you, hopefully you'll hear this. And then you'll go and do something with your life instead of fucking dying pointlessly and wasting years of being a human on earth. It's like the fucking best gift generally when we're not fucking it up for other people that you can get. It's just being alive, able-bodied, and fucking white, bro, in America or Canada. Like, your life is not hard, my friend. <laughs> you don't know what I've gone through as a gay man. Hush. 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 Be quiet and never speak again, my friend. Like, that's it. That's it. That's, that's, that's my standpoint on this. Um, I'm direct about it. I will take questions down below for a couple seconds. I have not actually paid attention. I know it looks like I'm looking at chat. When I'm doing this, I'm only ever just paying attention to my own face and making sure that I stay in camera because these slight motions that are me rocking back and forth and my can make me lose track. I, I'm just literally doing monitor work. Um, so yeah, I, I'm going to check, I'm going to take things, but yeah, I would say this is unequivocally, unequivocally, um, disgusting behavior on his part. Regardless, I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck if he did or not. And, um, yeah, anybody that's anybody, especially by the way, anybody, especially that's trying to turn this back on H bomber guy is a moron. Because first off, most of the people I've seen that are posting about it just do harassment content anyway, you know? <laughs> like, they're just bad people to begin with. Um, and it's just like, it's just fucking rank hypocrisy left and right. So that is what it is. Um, but like, yeah, 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 yeah. I think, I think I've said enough. Yeah, don't. Trying to turn this on H-Bomber guy is fucking insane. Because H-Bomber guy literally did nothing wrong except for say, these are crimes. And I don't think that it should be done. Now, it's not strictly speaking illegal, but is it okay? Is it right? I don't think so. And this is why I'm going to talk to, a, talk to you about it for an hour and a half. You know what I mean? Um, it's insanity. More than likely, in the next in the day or so, maybe even tonight if we have time, I know that Peter Coffin, that f absolute refuse of a human being, is like talking about this. I've, I've covered Peter Coffin shit before. He is like a, a living meme. Uh, he is just using this because he's trying to attack H bomber guys. So just generally you're going to see a lot of people just being like, Oh my God, this is my moment to use this corpse or not <laughs> possibly even not to attack the left. Um, but yeah, Tyler be like, God's <laughs> God's be damned. Who is that handsome devil next to the chat? But, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm going to pop through here and, uh, and read up through chat and I'll check some of your guys content out and uh, comments out and I'll pop up. Why was that impression spot on? I, I was it was that a good H bomber guy finally? I feel like I kinda hit it. 
To be honest, faking his own death and living a new life in Mexico is the most respectable course of action available. <laughs> what? Just hopped into the Martin O'Donnell Discord server and was almost immediately greeted by a guy saying he isn't a Nazi but is a Christian monarchist, so off to a great start. <laughs> I want to reiterate that James is a corn ball, but the dude was generally getting thoroughly shout on everywhere all the time since the main video came out, as well as he deserved. Like, get off the fucking internet, like, if you fuck off that bad. Like, literally, it's, it, you should leave. You know what I mean? Um, and, and these things aren't, like, unique to the internet. Like, it's, it, it's a standard thing. And also, it happens to fucking everybody. To fucking everybody. Once you hit a certain level, like, H-bomber guy is getting it just as bad right now. You know what I mean? h Bomber guy's still getting fucking probably, like, Nazi shit from, like, 10 years ago. He, fucking thought slime. Probably nonstop. You guys want to see... Prof if you guys know who Professor Sunday is, um, I think I'm almost... I, I think I'm, I'm going to be bigger than him in probably, like, a few months or so if I just kind of start putting out content the right way again. All he does is he's, like, an, a, a fucking... Um, like, a destiny orbiter, Right? Who, who sometimes argues with Destiny and sometimes argues with other people that, like, argue with Destiny. And he gets nonstop. His Twitter, if you're, like, just literally, if you want to see harassment, look up President Sunday's Twitter. It is nonstop. Just him and other people saying the most raw, evil shit to each other. Have a, I have him on there, and I don't know why X shows me his twi tweets when I fucking have to look at Twitter for stuff, but, like, 90% of the dudes posting for the last, like, month has just been, like, Destiny, why is your fucking, why is your beard gone? What be Your beard's gone and your wife cheated on you. Your beard's gone and your wife cheated on you. It happens to fucking everybody. To fucking everybody. But James Somerton is a special boy. And James Somerton says it's worse for him than it is for everybody else. And James Somerton made a video about it. And James Somerton still kept his channel up. And James Somerton still stayed on the internet. Because James Somerton fucking cares about James Somerton. A lot. All right? Uh, that's my fucking personal belief about it. I, I literally will not change this opinion. I don't give a fuck what news comes out. I, I don't fucking care. Because this is my 100% vibe about it. He didn't have to do anything. Nobody forced him... No matter, literally from start to finish, to do any of this shit that he did. None of them. None of them did. Like, there's not a part of this that's not James Somerton's fault. Like, fucking Harris Bomber guy, it, it didn't like come over, like uh, float across the fucking ocean to Canada or whatever the fuck. And then just start hovering above James Somerton's bed every night screaming like, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it the fucking telltale heart or some shit, you know, like just fucking turn the internet off. You fucked up. You did it. It's not even like you're a 12 year old kid or something like that. Who's like being embarrassed in high school. Like don't try to decontextualize this. You're not a kid. You're not a child who kind of did a cringe, right? Or a gay person that happened to be like noticed and is being like bombarded. Like your triggly puff or whatever the fuck from back in the day or big red. It's not even that you actively pursued a career on the internet talking about internet style shit. You know what I mean? And like I existing in this area and then just did unethical shit over and 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 over again. And then you finally got caught in the fucking dam broke. But I'll tell you right now, Boogie 92988 gets worse than this on a daily. Tipster. I, tipster is nonstop. People are making fucking... I saw somebody made a whole music video diss rap against a tipster guy. If you guys don't know who I'm talking about, don't look it up. Like, this is how the fucking internet is. I know it's going to happen to me. And I'm not going to have the right to fucking complain about it because I'm pursuing a career being a celebrity. You don't get to have... 230, 240,000 plus people in your fucking like subscriber pool. That's a fucking major city, a population of a major city literally waiting for your next word. And then the second, like it goes fucking South start saying, um, all of the people that were paying attention to me are now mad. And that's not fair to me. Like you don't get to say that. I mean, you can, but I'm not going to fucking take it seriously. And no one else should. 
Because if you do, then you have to start creating this parallel world where you don't get held accountable for shit and people can't be pissed at you when you fuck up, which is exactly what it was. He fucked up and people were pissed. And because he's a massive creator already, a lot of people were pissed. Like if he was smaller and H-Bomber got, you know, if he was a fucking my size and fucking H-Bomber guy lit him up, maybe. But I see that happen to other fucking creators all the fucking time, and all of them fucking survive it anyway. Do you know what I mean? I get people call me a fucking Jew, <laughs> like, all the fucking time, or a terrorist, or, like, a Nazi, a uh, child killer, all sorts of shit. I don't give a fuck, because you're fucking, you're, your name's on the internet. You're not real. The thing that probably fucked James Somerton up the most was number went down. Number went down and number was not going to go back up without him having to do something he was never capable of in the first place, which is make original, good, original content under scrutiny. When no one's paying attention to James Somerton and he can steal and lie and cheat, fucking gravy, bro. Every day's sunshine and rainbows, but oh, you get fucking caught. You have two seconds, two fucking seconds of repercussions. And then it's got to be the fucking poor me show and everybody that's talking about you, big bully, me, me, me. Like, dude, grow the fuck up. Grow the fuck up, unironically. And get off of these, get out of these spaces and shut up and disappear if this is how you're going to behave after you get caught for something. Because I don't want anyone, like, literally, I don't want fucking anybody thinking that their, their eulogy, when they, if they try to check out early, on, on one of these things is going to be kind. There, there, there's not, there's not going to be like, oh, well, you know what? Maybe he was just a poor misunderstood. No, no, no. Fuck you. You better stay alive because I'll tell you what. You, you, you're going to want to fix your whole fucking reputation before you check out. Or I'm going to make sure it is carved three inches deeper into the front of that tombstone. How big of a fucking cunt you were before anything. I'll, I'll, put, I'll buy a bigger tombstone and I'll raise it higher to let. Like, I'll fucking shit on your legacy. Like a motherfucker. You guys think I, I'm, I'm dead serious about it. I know how powerful it is. When fucking Mitch McConnell finally kicks it, man, I fucking got my fingers crossed. I drive safer in traffic every day because I fucking despise that motherfucker. I'm going to fucking de-eulogize him like you wouldn't fucking believe. I'm going to go flip his fucking goddamn tombstone off in Cave Hill. I know where he's going to be fucking buried. Fuck him. And the thing is, you can fix this. You can fix it. You could have fixed it. You could have not done checking out you could have just not done that. Either way, now you're fucking, you're, you've, you've crossed the line. You can't come back. <laughs> if you're fucking, if you're, if he's alive and he logs back onto the internet one time, it's going to be 30,000 times worse than anything else he's already been unable to fucking weather. And if he's gone, he's gone. And now he can't fix anything. But they, wh why is it going to be on fucking the surviving people to like, well, maybe we should massage his reputation. Maybe we should be a little bit different next time. No. Fuck him. Fuck that dude. Manipulative asshole fucking plagiarist. Checks out early. Bye. Fuck, what the fuck? Who gives a fuck? You should have done something that was likable or lovable or changed your fucking shit. You can't commit a crime and then expect everybody to be happy about it the next day. And then you're like, well, that's the period on the sentence. Can you just re-edit some of that so that um, I'm thought of more fondly or that people can like, will start saying that they miss me? No, no. And I think unironically, like if you, if you put that out there, you'll save more lives in the future because the next person that comes along that wants to be like, well, you know, they did say nice things about James Somerton after he checked out that that person's going to go, well, they fucking dude, I'll tell you what, like they were saying fucked up things about him before he went. And then after he went like his mother read that shit, you know, like they couldn't get away from like the Googling his name for his obituary was like a nightmare for his entire family. So I think I'm just going to stay alive, try to fix what I've broken. <laughs> That's what you get from me. Someone else, if you want a nicer fucking, if you want a nicer fucking uh, response, you want somebody to be a little bit more delicate with someone's feelings. That, that's not this fucking chat. That's not me. All right. I, li I, I stand by this stuff. I'm eventually going to have to live it. I know what's coming. I'm going to have my Hassan moments. I'm going to, I'll say something spicy. All right. I'll have an unironic germ of germa moment. <laughs> you guys catch me doing cannibalism. It's a joke. That's a joke in the thing. But ultimately now I'm going to read the chat again. Sorry. I'm actually going to read it this time too, by the way. 
I think that if he's still around, he won't be able to resist logging back in. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. The happiest outcome is that someone posts on his behalf that he's getting inpatient care and probably not going to be back for a while. That'd be a good chance for him to figure something out. I mean, yeah. If I had to guess how this is going to happen, if the dude actually hasn't checked out, checked out, we're going to get a, um, um, like, hey, this was really, like, they caught him at the last mo- something. He has been in inpatient care. He's so sorry for scaring everybody. He saw all the well wishes and the love and the outpouring of support. And he mostly wants you to know that, like, he never meant for things to get this bad. And we want no one to be harassing anyone in James Somerton's name. He did what he did that was wrong. And do you think he could have redeemed himself? Yes. Basically, like, dude, you have to do the worst shit ever. You have to do the worst shit ever. You have to be the kind of person who can do the absolute worst stuff imaginable to be completely unredeemable. Uh, do I think James Somerton, um, before this moment, was on a path to redemption? Clearly fucking not. He doesn't he 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 cannot comprehend a path forward because I don't think deep down he thinks he did anything wrong. I think he thinks that he's a fucking victim, ultimately, in all of this. Like if people just kind of got it better, I, I bet if you had conversations with him up close, if people just understood kind of what he was doing trying to do a little bit better then like it wouldn't have been that bad because he's fucking like probably mixed himself up in his own head about shit you know but yeah like anybody else like if you fuck up real bad you know and you just get in the hole you can like i i believe in fucking rehabilitative justice which is why i think things like the death penalty or fucking early checkouts are fucking stupid as shit right even if you can't let somebody out of the cage for like a death penalty thing, you can just put them to fucking work. Like let them fucking try to give something back to society. Like, yeah, he was fucking whatever. He did like 15 murders, but he dug 10,000 miles of ditches. And for that, we will bury him in a fucking Christian cemetery or whatever the fuck. You know what I mean? He gets to be buried by normal people again. Cause he tried to undo the nightmarish shit that he did. The other way is the other thing around too. It's like if we're pretending like fucking, you know, redemption's not possible or like this was a foregone conclusion, not even remotely the case. Like he could just stop being a self absorbed piece of shit for five fucking seconds. You know what I mean? And then just try to improve himself. Just, just be like, hey, you know, I've been trying to learn about the subjects. Do something like uh, you go back through all of your old videos and then you like talk through, I mean, like, of course I have to come up with James Somerton's ideas for him. Cause he's not going to fucking do it himself ever. Even if he is still fucking kicking, like go back through your old videos and go over each one of them and talk about the people that you fucking robbed and like why you were thinking about it when you did it. Literally just put your, your entire crime on display so that people can fucking like see what your mind was working through when you did it. And you can say like, I think I understand now, like why this was wrong. That shit would be soul crushing. It would be so fucking hard. It would be so embarrassing and like painful to go through. But that's like what men do. You know what I mean? Not to be like callous about it or or even let me stop being misogynist about it. That's what like humans do. Like a, a real fu- like a real fucking like a mensch. I don't know how to say that. You know, like an okay fucking fella, but also ladies. You know what I mean? That's what you do when you try to fucking like rebuild shit. You got to fucking get down there. And do the hard work. Fucking easy as shit to kill yourself. It's easy as fuck. I almost fucking did it. I've told you guys this. Some of you guys here and some of you guys haven't. 2012, man. I almost fucking took myself out. Because I was sad about the war. All right? And I had little nightmares. And uh, I was drinking too much. Didn't I didn't fucking post anything on Twitter. I just went and fucking... I just went and looked the devil in the eye for a little bit. And then I decided to blink. Fucking... <laughs> Unloaded it. <laughs> and that's behind me in the past. You know what I mean? Get fucking get some therapy and try to work on whatever the fuck's fucking you up. Which in my case was just not dealing with three combat deployments to Iraq. Not to fucking diminish, I, I, I guess, the difficulty of having people talk shit about you on the internet a bunch more than normal. Um, but like, God damn, man. Like, God fucking damn it. Just, just fucking rebuild yourself and don't expect like pity or like kindness from me for checking out early. Like the dude, the world's in trouble. Like people need, we need all the help we can get. Imagine instead of like trying to off yourself, you're just like, okay, well I'm just going to give up all my fucking possessions and go do like aid work or something. 
you know, the most, the most white person fucking like trying to like, you know, church group type shit. I'm just going to go to Haiti and start fucking, I don't know, clearing debris after a hurricane. Like all I do now is I clear debris. I go places and I fucking pick up trash. It's what I'm good for, but I feel like I'm changing the world a little bit that you can do that. You can do that in silence and anonymy out of the public eye and fix the fucking world a little bit, but instead like, Ooh, Ooh, fuck that shit. Fuck it. Fuck it. I have no respect for it. I love you, Tyler. You have such her pronouns. Are they them energy? It's okay because you're doing your best thing. I love you. <laughs> is anyone to elevate the works and ideas of other career creators and copying their books and essays verbatim is not how you do that. You discuss those people and the work they did, which you could still do. You could still just do it. And yeah, people are going to make fun of you the entire time. They're going to be like, oh, did you steal this? Did you steal this? And that's just, you fucked, you ruined your life. That's what ruining your life is like. That's why you don't do shit like that. <laughs> Vosh. You know what I mean? Hey, I, oh, I have, feel like I have to hear about this every time. Yeah, you ruined your life. When people say, I ruined my life by doing a thing, that's what you meant. That's a scar. You know what I mean? It's like having, you're like, you're ex you have an existential amputation, an existential wound or missing piece now that everyone can see because they know you. But like, you can still exist. Anybody who gets fucking made fun of on the internet, right? And they decide to check, or not even made fun of on the internet. Anybody that decides to like check out because they got caught, you know what I mean? You got caught, you got fucking busted and now you don't want to fucking build shit. Like there are so many dudes that get like, or, and ladies, all kinds of people that like lose limbs and shit. Not even just because you're like, you're in, in war or something like you just had a dipshit fucking asshole boss and you were working in a warehouse and you got your entire fucking arm clipped off from the forearm up because, you know, fucking somebody wasn't forklift certified. There was an unfuckable individual in that warehouse that wasn't for forklift certified and you fucking lost a chunk of your arm. That guy's not going to be like, oh shit. Well, fuck. You know what I mean? And no one that's around him should let them check out because of that. You know what I'm saying? And there's so many people that get past it. And it's like you just learn to live with the disability. You now have a disability of writing anything and people believing you. Which you can get past by just always being right. Like you can just tell the truth every time. It's the easiest thing to get past. You just be like, all right, yeah, I did do plagiarism. And just ignore the fucking haters and just work and try to do good stuff. Prove to people that you could do it the entire time and you were taking the easy way out. Or just go do something fucking else. I don't respect it. I don't think people should have... You know, it's it's tra when kids check out horrible literal tragedy usually that's like the actual mental illness didn't catch him in time type shit i think for a lot of fucking adults especially people that play around with like putting fucking notes out and stuff it's the cry for help shit you still need fucking inpatient treatment and shit but there is a lot of like People that say like, oh, you know, it couldn't have, uh, oh, he had mental health issues. He couldn't have, couldn't have been dealt with, couldn't have been dealt with for like this, this, this. And like, for some people, that's actually true. Some people actually have serious fucking shit. You know what I mean? Like untreatable, like terrible schizophrenia and their fucking life is a nightmare of sounds and lights and voices that they can't control. And they're like, I'm fucking done. Like I'm fucking done. You have cancer and you're like, I'm fucking done. You know what I mean? Something like that. That's like, I get that. That's a, that's an adult choice to say the pain or whatever, you know, it's too much. I can't fucking, I can't fucking deal. There's no way to fix this. I respect that. But like for an adult to be like, oh, there's the repercussions of my fucking actions. I've got to check out early and fucking not deal with that. Like, fuck you. Like, what the fuck? You just, you're just going to hand your entire family, all the people that care about you, just hand them the bag and be like, my bad, man. Whoops, the doodle, you know, no fucking own it. Get out there, deal with being your, you answer for your fucking crimes and talk your way through it. Top to bottom. Shit. Fuck. Yeah, I did. I did. I did. I did. I did. Motherfucker. <laughs> Tyler, I think his redemption would have come from helping a college or some kind of high school use his equipment to get people into indie cinematography, like anything over what he did. Oh yeah. Speaking of which he has like, fuck he had, didn't I see that? He's got like fucking $50,000 worth of camera equipment. Like he could have just done anything with that stuff. You know, like he could have just done anything with all of those things that he had. Like it, that's fucking crazy too, to think about 
Like, yeah, he has tons of equipment. He has connections. His his account that I'm looking at still has 234,000 subscribers. You could sell your account to somebody else. You know what I mean? Give it to a school. Sure. They're just, the thing is, is if you don't, if you don't try to fucking check out early, all these possible ideas just keep coming. And if you ever have like, you have a sad moment. I'm not saying that you can't have sad moments and you can't think about it. That doesn't make you weak. All right. That's just a thing that happens to people. Don't do it. First off. Because I will be upset with you personally. You will have let me down. So don't do that. You can only do the right thing by not fucking trying to check out early. Go talk to somebody. Have you actually been like, and, and if you, if it's somebody, you know, you've been talking to the same people, maybe try talking to different people. Sometimes it's just a case of all of the people in your immediate friend group, your immediate group that you're around are shit. It happens. Sometimes all the people that you can talk to or interact with are garbage. And that might be actually the real reason that you're fucking trying to consider thinking about ending things. Um, and it, you know, it was kind of like what I was doing on, on ironically, like my fucking path forward was like literally, well, if I want to fucking check out, what do I want to end? You know what I mean? And then why not try to end that instead of me, <laughs> you know? And that's what I did. I had f- horrible chronic pain, nightmare level it was so fucking bad because I wasn't working out anymore and I, I have a serious fucking back injury. And if I stop working out basically at all, it starts like getting me. I have to do especially like squats and back exercises, which seems counterintuitive, but it's a back injury. It gets so bad when I don't fucking deal with it that I will get like a sciatica basically that makes my whole leg numb. I mean, down to like in the bone and it feels like my feet are like gravel. Like I can't feel the shoe that I'm wearing. It feels like I just have bones scraping the ground. It is the worst. Can't sit, can't stand, can't bend my back. Uh, It's very distracting. Can't sleep, can't roll over in my sleep. Like miserable. But if I work out and I keep working out, I feel better. When I fucking drink a lot, I get sad and weepy. When I was fucking college, I was drinking like a case of Natty Light, if not more. I mean like a a 30 rack. If not more, nightly. Sometimes like five or six nights a week. Uh, Rock and roll. Like it was real bad. (laughs) Oh, fucking bad. On top of some other shit. Uh, Your boy partied. I'm one of those sober people now. Uh, but like I got fucking my drinking and stuff under control. Started drinking other stuff. Quit smoking. I was smoking at the time. Jesus fucking Christ. Uh, messing around with other stuff. Not dealing with shit. Being really standoffish. Being fucking weird. Uh, and you know, hanging out with like people that didn't. Just even just didn't even enjoy shit. Like they were bad people or like they were like, you know, such negative influences, but they just weren't the influences that I needed. And so I just started hanging out with different people and start resetting my social circle in a different direction and shit fixed like almost instantaneously. You know what I mean? And you can do that. Every, everyone can do that. So like, I don't, I don't see any point in being nice about it i think it's at most a morally neutral thing especially when it it comes to adults which james somerton was and as a morally neutral thing if he did it for a morally negative reason then it's a morally negative outcome in my mind (laughs) fuck him Uh, i lost a really good friend to self-checkout a couple years ago and for a while it was really eight was really i i was really fucked up for not seeing the signs it's better now but that shit is rough yeah that's that's one of those things you kind of can't other other people can't do it it's a very very it's a very personal and extremely selfish decision you know what i mean it's not something you can very often do in front of other people like it's it's difficult because other people will tell you not to and if you tell them like i'm going to go do it they'll like don't now you fucked up my day yeah because it's got to be about you now but like let's go figure this out Tyler telling of his Harry Dubois era. <laughs> but what would be the morality behind kill Nazi children? What the fuck are you talking about? I don't like this sentence. With all due respect, I'm going to delete it. I had more empathy for James if he didn't have his audience harassed the first to plagiarize noticers off the internet themselves. Yeah, that happened too, from what I understand. Like, 
people were being like, hey, you fucking stole this from me, and then his audience was getting them. It's about as useful as those gambling app ads that have the little phone number at the bottom to call if you have a gambling addiction. They just put that there to cover their asses just in case. I don't think H-Bomb is technically responsible, quote-unquote, so you kind of do feel like he's responsible. But I've seen people say, like, oh, well, he told his audience not to harass XYZ when everyone knows that shit does zip, zilch, zero. So, like, th- but that's the thing. Like, here's the first, first off, you don't, people don't deserve harassment over minor shit, but, like, if you're doing something that's massively unethical, you deserve harassment. <laughs> um, if you engage in highly unethical behavior that's not covered under the law, then it's really on people around you to try to get you to start start behaving the correct way. Which means like, you know, like I, I would never tell you guys to like go actively try to harass anybody. And I will say forever, forever, you are never allowed to go defend me in other people's comment sections. You're not allowed to fucking defend me anywhere. I, I, I forbid it. Um, but like if I fucking, if I, if I tell you guys about, um, I don't know, let, let's be real specific. There is a guy who, if everyone doesn't say like, you're a bad person, you know, to them. 500 times like he's going to throw a child off a bridge i think that that's kind of like okay you know and you're gonna work back from there um people will have a natural reaction to certain kinds of content if you are doing unethical shit that people would be pissed about and you're doing it in secret and you're intentionally covering it up when people find out about it you're going to be harassed that's natural and that's not a part of the internet that's a part of the world um, I live in a neighborhood where somebody, somebody talked to the police and I was walking around. I have this picture. I'll probably, I might share it. If I can find it, I'll share it in the discord. Um, I was walking back from a subway and I saw that his house had been fully tagged, fully graffitied with the words rat over and over and over and over again. And me and my wife still to this day, even though those people moved, call it the rat house. It's a natural reaction to something that's not necessarily illegal, but it is unethical or impermissible in society. It's for people to go out and tell you, like, hey, go fuck yourself for doing that. You know what I mean? It's like if somebody's like, it's the same thing as if you talk loud in a, in a library and a bunch of people go, shh. You know, it's like, hey, this guy, like, can you be quiet? And the guy's like, I'm not being loud. And then a bunch of other people go, shh. You know what I mean? Like, that's not that's not like harassment, harassment, where it's like targeted, like, violence against you because of like you know some sort of protected attribute that you have you fucking did something wrong and not only did you do it wrong you were trying to get away with it so you're just being morally reprehensible people will have a natural reaction to that and that natural reaction will be negative i i i think i see this all the time you know like the but i've seen people say like oh well he told his audience not to harass xyz you know so like, what the fuck does he do? What do you do instead? Like, if you say that out loud, like, what do you do instead? Do you just, do you just never talk about it? You know what I mean? Like, do you just let people get away with shit because on the off chance that like people will be mad at them <laughs> if, if, if you, if they get told on, I don't think that's the case. Let's be real. If you parade someone's corpse to rally against a guy, you don't, you just don't like, you are as bad as the harassers. The fuck are you talking about? Like the week after the video came out, you had a bunch of people turning out James Somerton exposed videos and calling other plagiarists James Somertons and stuff. I mean, yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, yes. Yes. That is the case. I want to reiterate that James is a cornball, but the dude was generally getting thoroughly shot on everywhere all the time. So maybe you came out. Okay. I already talked to him. It's half an hour ago. I hope we find out he's alive and we can laugh at him for it. I do too. I would, I would vastly prefer, as I've said, that he was alive. But I think even if, if this is his last act on earth, I think it's still an unethical and disgraceful one. Harassment is something different than condemnation. True, but fucking use, you got to use the specific words on the internet. It's like my fucking, that's my, that's my Sisyphus. I have to, I, you have to enjoy, presume that I enjoy the boulder. Trying to get people to use the correct words on the internet? Fuck off. Yes, it is condemnation. It's, it's mass condemnation. Harassment is repeated. And unironically, if James Somerton had just done an apology video immediately and then fucked off, 
it would have basically gone away. But like, this is the thing. And I saw this with another person. I want to say their name, but they're up to it. I think they're probably a little bit pissed that somebody else is taking the spotlight for five seconds. I've brought it up before people that will kind of say like, Oh, somebody said something bad about me and then kind of keep it up. Like, Oh, this person said something bad about me. This person who I will like literally elevate above them. Like if you say anything bad about me, I will stop my entire show and I will talk about nothing but that and about you specifically. I will talk about you specifically. You will be on the TV, that kind of shit. There's some people that just thrive on the fucking drama. Even if they are the fucking they're the fucking lol cow. You know what I mean? Like Boogie2988 fucking loves it, bro. He fucking loves it. He's fucking got that humiliation fetish. Some people just want to fucking be in the spotlight. James Summerton could have fucking PR'd his way out of this in 10 seconds. A- anybody could have. But he fucking just fucked it up completely. I mean, we're talking about James Summerton, right? Oh, he got a bunch of flack. How, fucking the, the, the Paul brothers, Right? He went and filmed a fucking dead body and people talked about that. They talk about it to this day. Dude filmed a fucking dead body in his front yard <laughs> or in, in a video and put it on his foot. Fu- I said front yard. I meant to say put it in his thumbnail. I don't front thumbnails are the front yards of videos. He put it in his thumbnail. You know what I'm saying? Like that. So like that video is out there. That's permanent. People fuck with him all the fucking time, all the fucking time over it. You know what I mean? So like, why isn't that different? Why isn't why? It's because fucking what this guy like is being emotionally manipulative and it kind of hurts your feelings. And it's like the, it's the soup du jour at the moment. Like you kind of, you like, Oh, I don't feel good about it. I don't feel good about it. But it's the same harassment. It happens to everybody. It happens to everybody. Every time anybody does something fucked up, um, fucking toxic gossip train psycho. I've been getting a lot. That's what the whole toxic gossip train song is about. It's about her being weird or whatever. I can't even remember what she fucking got in trouble for. If she would have never sang that stupid fucking song, I would forget who she is. I would have never known the name Amanda sings if she didn't flub her fucking apology. Get it out immediately. The second that you, the second that you can't fucking walk away from it and it's going to be the biggest thing on the internet, get out there do an apology, say you're sorry, disappear for three months, and then come back like nothing ever happened. That's how you do it. That's how you beat a media cycle. It's not fucking rocket science. (laughs) I know there's people that fucking get paid hundreds, 200 millions of dollars a year to run PR like this. That's all you have to do. There's your advice for the future. Literally get out the day or two days after it happens. I am so fucking sorry. I didn't mean to do this. Sniff, sniffle, right? Don't do anything interesting. Don't have anything going on. Don't try to make any money off the video. Do your mea culpa, disappear for three months, come back. That's all you need to fucking do. That's all you need to fucking do. And you can, you'll be fine. Everyone does it all the time. We're talking, we're, we're in kind of like politics, YouTube, where things are slow. If you ever see, see, watch these fucking psychos over in like the K-pop area, right? Over in the VTube section, right? The big level VTube. They'll do the most insane shit you've ever seen. Like, okay, um, we did find out that people at the party were 12. And we were giving them uh, tabs of acid and telling them that they could fly so that they would jump into the pool. And we now know that that's insanely wrong. That is, I just don't even know the kind of, I don't recognize the person I was in that. I don't know why I was trying to do it. And all I can say is I'm sorry. We are going to be donating some fucking whatever the fuck, mea culpa money, to thing that is relative to the situation at hand. And then you say you're sorry. And like most of all, I just want you to know like my heart's with the victims and they are that. And then you disappear. You fucking get off the internet. Go to Maui, right? He's got fucking camera money. Go to fucking, go down to the toxic coast. Go to fucking Texas, man. They don't give a fuck. <laughs> You stole from people? That's amazing. How much money did you make? Go down to the fucking toxic coast, float around in the water a little bit, and then head back up to Canada after three months. You're good. You're you're good. You're good. Tell me I'm wrong. Go ahead and look up the... Start putting in uh, controversy and look at the fucking timelines and tell me how fucking wrong I am. I think the biggest knock anyone got was like Shane Dawson. And I think he was just like, I'll just do an early retirement and just basically own other people and have them do stuff too. Cause he was like, I'm fucking, I don't, I don't want to work anymore. I made like $500 million last year selling fucking face dust to dipshits. I'm good. That kind of thing. 
He doesn't fail. I think James Summerton should open a cameo and pay have people pay him to hate on him. You want to talk about fucking uh, gay icons. Gay icons being slandered and dogpiled. Fucking George Santos. And what did Papa Santos do? He fu- stole more money, first off. Didn't care. Stole more money. Off rip. And then he started a cameo where you had to pay $500 for him to read literally anything. And he would sit there in his fucking Gucci loafers and his Hermes bracelet and fucking just read shit and make fucking $500 every three minutes. Like, I just have no fuck. It's, it's, you either have to be, you either have to be so fucking stupid and like unimaginative that it was an accident that you got into this space, which I guess maybe is the case. Or just like, just not aware of what's going on around you. Like, don't be so fucking, like, people are too precious, I think, at a higher level about their their reputations in, like, a weird way. And you can just, fuck sh- like, shake it off. Just like, but fucking, I don't give a fuck. Like, just, just shake it off. Donald Trump's still out there. That fucking sociopath. He, he's, like, a fucking civil, I didn't know you could get fucking formally charged with rape in a civil court. He did, and he's still giving speeches. You know what I mean? Like, just stop trying to check out early. <laughs> Cut it out. You Stop. You're done. Oh, Jesus. You're right, and he should try his hand at post-2020 LA. It's a fucking cesspool of influencers. I would imagine LA is probably like one of the worst places in America to live if you're easily irritated by other people drawing attention to themselves, which is one of my greatest irritants. I think I'm going to stop talking about checking out. So we're going to turn off the uh, we're going to turn off the content warning so that it's not on all night. And I'll, I'll talk about a little bit of things. <laughs> Have you considered the career benefits of just fucking off the like West Side School of Public Relations? Tell me I'm wrong. Uh, go go tell like, literally if there's like, one of those people who's a PR professional on on like a tick you know those TikToks you're like swiping around or or fa- and like you're like. How, that you see somebody grading the most weird profession ever. I think I, the one I've been seeing recently is the cologne guy who goes and sniffs random, very young men in public. And he's, <laughs> that's a very, that's a very strange racket. I don't know why that keeps getting recommended to me. Um, and then another person who like rates male models. Actually, I think he rates male and female models uh, for like how, uh, how hireable, they would be like, okay, you're not going to be doing high fashion, but I think I would put you in a car hard. I would put you in a hard hat. And then you would just be putting boxes on the back of a truck. You'd be, you know, you, you would be in high demand. And the guy's always just like, <laughs> from this point forward, we're only checking out talking is at your local public library. Go get a card if you don't have one. Always support your local public library folks. I heard a few months ago some K-pop group was exposed for exploiting slash assaulting their female fans, question mark, question mark. That is the most non-statement I've ever heard. <laughs> I don't know if that, that is either, that is either just like adorable or that is the, fu- that's the funniest fucking post of the night. That's like a 10 out of 10. <laughs> that shit, every time, every time I come across K-pop, it is either accidentally in the replies of something that has nothing to do with K-pop and it's just 10 million people doing um, fucking what do they call those fan cams or something it's like Joe Biden's address on, on, on fucking like labor relations board meetings or it's because like some K-pop person has done either the least the least offensive non thing that you would never think was wrong, which is per, for some reason like a death penalty grade crime in South Korea, or they have done the most heinous shit you've ever heard in your fucking life. And people are going to bat in the con- like the contents. Like I would let him skin me. I don't care who he skinned. <laughs> oh, shall we got a, I, can, I guess I can turn. We're, we're back off. So let me see if this just works. This should turn on Gorpo immediately. Yeah. So now we know we can pause. Uh, we can pause these. Emmanuel Manzella. Yeah, man. It's like if you do enough bad things, you'll ruin your life, and that's that at the end of the day. Keep you making down to earth. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. I think we're. Yeah, I think we're solid. Corpo. Corpo has spoken. We're good. Let's start talking. Let's let's let's, let's chitty chatter it up. 
By the way, 288 concurrence in here. Thanks for uh, stopping by, folks. If uh, you have it, that was your time to like the page. Like the page. Or what do we call this? Stream? Like the stream. Like the stream. K-pop is a meat grinder of an industry. I think that's why they have so many of them. Like the moment, the moment I started seeing people putting together bands that have like such a high person count, my mind immediately went to like prey animals that naturally have like eight to 12 like babies per litter because like naturally, you know, they're going to fucking die off. Like that's all I see when I see K-pop is I'm like, okay, so this band is whatever down to ride some stupid shit like that. And I'm like, okay, that guy is one of the grips that they just threw in there. This dude definitely won like a contest. That guy, I don't think he can sing or dance. And it might just be an illusion that the camera is looking at him. There's the talent. That's the other talent. And this is the one that's going to actually get big. But maybe maybe it's a gamble. Because this, this dude looks like even in this hyper cleansed, shiny, soft, beautiful, white uh, K-pop video he is clearly yacked out of his fucking mind and i don't even think you can legally buy cocaine or like reasonably purchase cocaine in fucking south korea i thought it was the k-pop stands canceling made in abyss dude it would be in either direction the, the k-pop fans are never of a mind if they are you're in trouble it's like uh k-pop fans are like the ocean um uh, do you guys know what rogue waves are like k pops it's like you know you can tell like if there's some like industry news like the c will get like choppy right because different k pop fans like their energy is interacting inside the c and it just creates like normal things you know and sometimes like whoa and there'll be a high tide low tide because k pop shit is happening right um fucking sun yuto san fucking whatever shun chi yu is uh we found out is going to have to start his two year mandatory conscription and is not going to be allowed to go on to the uh do re mi sunrise happy happy tour and like that's like really changed stuff up and like his third band member kun yu son is really really fucking pissed about it like it, it's it's actually fucking him up and like all these girls <laughs> freaking out like the water's getting a little choppy and like that just happens, you know, like a little bit. But then something will happen where it's like, I feel like, like some famous person will be just like, I don't get like the appeal of like this guy. And for some reason, that dude happened to be like, it won't even be the most important person, but he just happened to be the linchpin of conversation. And it just perfectly charges all of the energy of K pop into one direction. And for a moment, it's the briefest of moment, but the energy release is like a freak wave. It's a hundred feet taller. The crest on it is insanely high. If you don't see it in yourself, you'll never believe it happened. Lighthouses washed off the face of the earth. Whole towns vanished. You know, shipping vessels lost for a hundred years until they're randomly found by directors uh, of, of, of high budget blockbuster movies from the 90s. K-pop. My dumbass nearly got, who got, who almost got killed by a rogue wave? I just found out about them the other day and they scared me so bad and I don't even live near a body of water. The closest thing to me is a mosquito-filled aqueduct. I mean, like, K-pop stuff kind of just stopped popping up for me, so I assumed it died, and now it's Psy and some other peeps again. I've seen Psy stuff and the K-pop shit got fucking quelled. I think a bunch of that was... Um, it was just for some reason, it was algo crack for Twitter for a little while. You know what I mean? And so like, it just got, it just got hyper boosted and it was just an insane wave. I think maybe the K-pop stuff is slowing down in general. It kind of hit mainstream. And I think that's what a lot of the K-pop stands were trying to do. And if I got to be honest, probably the fucking Korean PR companies who were paying to, you know, have their, have their shit, try to get mainstreamed into America so they could access an audience that's bigger than, south korea alone because the fucking japanese aren't going to be like oh yeah let's hear korean music <laughs> the japanese uh known 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 connoisseurs and admi admirers of anything korean uh da -da -da. korea is always un also very unfriendly to lgbt plus so a lot of k-pop stars have to deal with that oh that's fucked yeah if you're not friendly to the fucking gays it it's gonna get harder and harder and harder for you to make stuff 
The funniest thing I heard was when South Korean Genshin players bought a blimp to harass the Hoyo studio. I forgot if it was for the hand symbol or something else. <laughs> If I ended up on a game show where I had to figure out what K-pop bullshit was real and what was made up, I'd end up, I'd end that game owing money. Yeah, or like, it would be like when you fill out C, you know, you're going to think, just, just say C for everything, you know, on the, on the, on the Scantron. <laughs> Statistically speaking, you should get at least a 25%. K-pop wave analogy made so much sense. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I think a lot of K-poppies are Swifties now. Stu Taylor Swift's audience fucking absorbs people like crazy and sometimes they absorb people that like hated taylor swift in mass like <laughs> droves it's fucking psychotic okay let's do another let's do another segment real quick um because the second thing i do tonight might be excessively long and i want to i want to talk about it. so everybody knows the critical drinker um uh, critical drinker is a guy on the internet he has been here for forever 1.95 million subscribers I think if I had to guess, I think people have told me and I just forget because he, there's, he's not an impressive enough creator or has like the talent or like play in my mind for me to remember anything about him. Um, if that's like, oh, hey, he's bigger than you insult. Like, yeah, I'm glad I'm not that big in that fucking cringe. Um, he's been around since like the 20 early 2010s kind of thing. Like he, he's got very powerful channel. Awesome energy, even though he might not have been part of the like uh, a V G Y N or whatever the fuck, not a V that's angry video game nerd. Uh, what is it? The nostalgia critic. He wasn't part of necessarily like the nostalgia critic Omni circle. Who knows? But, um, he's got that kind of energy of being like a uh, person that's my age that got onto the internet when people were doing shticks, like everybody was doing a shtick. Um, his is, I guess, pretending to be, I, I, I assume he's actually Scottish, but he always pretends to be drunk. But then I've also heard him talk when he's sober and he still sounds like a, a mush mouth fucking slot brain. So it is what it is. Either way, uh, I guess he is a creator in his own right. I'm supposed to be reading a book of his coming up sometime soon. I don't know when I'm going to be getting to that. Uh, oh, no, we have to raise money for that one, but not yet. Don't give me any money for a crit critical drinker book in this thread because I still have to read Chuck Tingle and then talk about that. But he is a writer and a creator, and I think he wrote some like dog shit fucking Tom Clancy type books. I'm just going to say their dog shit off rip um, and see if I'm right when I eventually read one of them. I've, I would be stunned that somebody can give uh, media criticism that's as vapid and fucking aimless as his. And he has anything better to say than like, ain't it cool when the good guys win? <laughs> Either way, he's coming out with a new movie called Rogue Elements and we're going to watch the trailer for it. I'm very fucking excited. Critical Drinker is surprisingly shallow. I thought I've watched, I can't remember a single criticism of his he's made. He's kind of got like, uh, he, he's kind of like antithetical in a weird way to Shadowversity, where Shadowversity is kind of like an unrepentant and like unself aware charlatan. So he's got this kind of blubbering, exuberant energy when he's wrong that lets him be super fucking extra wrong. Whereas I think critical drinker maybe became somewhat self-aware. Like he gained a, a, a modicum of self-awareness along the line of like, maybe some of the shit I'm saying is fucking lame and all the people that would respect me in the industry. That is actually kind of my, like my passion would not like me. Like they would not like me. They would never work with me. Uh, my, my literal dream is dead because of the success that I've built here. He's got that kind of vibe, which makes me like, I, I'm just not, I'm just not into hearing him talk, but he is, um, he's making a movie. Okay. And it's rogue elements and, and, and we're just going to watch some of it. Well, let's just hop into this Turn the volume up. Let me know if you guys can hear everything. Bravo. I found a target. I got five guys inside that room. Hold on alpha. Let me check the schematics and see if there's another entry point. No time for that. Going loud. Bro, the fuck? Can you just tell the people that you're working with to make a PNG? I'll talk about this in a second. 
Like that's not bad. But this is, that's rough. <laughs> when your, when your production house logo is so fucking weak that it makes me feel like I can't take, like I, I the movie that we're talking about, I'm going to take it a little less seriously. That's a bad sign. <laughs> that's a very bad sign. This just uh, like 3D model of this fucking camera, which is an old film camera, I think. Isn't it not? I don't know these very well. I've never worked with the big ones, but that looks like a fucking film roll wheel back here. But then we have the modern, um, that's the monitor. These are interesting. I've never worked with like film film cameras. Maybe that thing is actually based as shit, but that's just fucking hilarious. Then you just got <laughs> gradual upgrade. They should call this gradient productions because my man used every fucking gradient tool that they have in Photoshop for this. We went internal, we went internal emboss. We went embossed with a fucking gradient, internal shadow gradient, external glow white. Uh, on the top, we're internal gradient embossed outward. And then also, <laughs> you know, you're embossed outward. We have a gradient on the emboss. And then also, we have a drop shadow that goes directly up and down, which is just unreal, especially considering this has the shadow on the top instead of the bottom. So like this shadow should be in a different direction. Well, I mean, maybe they are supposed to both be down, but it just doesn't look like it doesn't make any fucking sense. Where is this light source that's casting these shadows? This one goes like it's, it's right here. You know what I mean? But like hitting super deep, but these aren't very deep because it's got a gradient. Maybe that isn't even an internal shadow. I don't know. This is just wild. Fucking good old fashioned fog generator. If you were to just put gradual upgrade productions and then block, if you just block this out, get rid of the tripod because it's literally useless. Who gives a fuck about a tripod? Everyone recognizes a film camera. Get rid of this monitor unless that's really necessary for you because that's just extra information. Literally just do a blackout overlay. Make this white, make this white, make this black so that's just a PNG and it'll look so much fucking better. You worked so hard on this for this to look like ass. Last year, one of your CIA Shepherd teams infiltrated a maximum security prison. Their target was an operative identified by the code name Malas. <laughs> I don't. I love that you failed the match on that cut. I don't know why that's. I don't know why that's so fucking good. But you tried though. Wait, who's this? All I want to know is the name of the man who led this mission. I guess we're in for a long night. This is just, okay, is this, this is just James Bond Casino Royale and he's about to, get, is this the, did they find the same fucking dungeon? <laughs> this is just Casino Royale, isn't it? Because I don't know shit. That's somebody's Einstein's fucking house. team was tasked with retrieving. I love it. You always know. It, it get, this is this is one of those things. You always know that the production value or production budget is like just fucked. And I'm not really I'm not dogging on everybody about it, but the production value uh, budget is fucked when you have uh, most of your movies set either in clearly just the woods and it's unprepared like a park, you know, like mowed grass between trees, or like a fucking parking shelter. Just a lot of parking shelter shots. Like, dude, this is the trailer and we're in the fucking parking lot. Like, what the fuck? And this man, Ivan Fedorov, an agency asset investigating a new radical separatist group in Estonia. We have just under two hours to figure out how to get inside that warehouse, find Fedorov, and get the fuck out in one piece. Look around you, Frost. Does this look like headquarters to you? This looks and sounds like a bullshit rush job. Okay, I know the Scots have like the Scottish SAS because it's just part of like the Scottish military is just the English military, right? But you guys have some like Scottish regiments or whatever. I know I know that. But I am so unfamiliar as an American because like the international and war industrial complex belongs to us and everyone else just has like kind of like a fucking small share buy-in. Seeing like a fucking twink built Scot 
talking like he's a fucking like he's some sort of fucking operator is crazy to me. You should have cast an American. You should have just cast an American or told him to do an American accent because this is like weirdly unbelievable. I, I don't know why, but it's it's strangely unbelievable. Or you should have found like just any, just get like a guy that was taking the trash out that has one of those big like Scottish mustaches that I like so much from Courage the Cowardly Dog and have him just walking around like in a literal kilt with a shotgun and I would have loved this so much more. Kilt in a shotgun? Kilt in a shotgun? Oh my god. That, that, dude. Okay, critical. Hit me up. <laughs> you were foolish enough to send spies into my country. And as you can see, they have failed miserably. Ryan and Drake. I like, my man's like, no one should know who my man, my, my name is. <laughs> Better hopes this isn't a trap. Because if those assholes don't kill you, I will. The only people dying today are those fuckers. All of them. Do you do? Is there an, are there any Scottish people in chat? Do you guys say fuckers? Like, cause I, like the whole the like fuck is cool with the like. British Isle languages, right? And your guys' dialects. Like, but you guys can't do, like, motherfucker. Like, you guys just can't hit a motherfucker the right way. Can you guys do fuckers? Like, you fuck, huh? <laughs> it just... Your, your ER is just too fucking goofy. Like, it would, is it because he was trying to get this, like, the Red Band trailer for Americans? Like, cause he's fucking... He's fucking Scottish. So shouldn't he be like, we're going to kill those cunts. Like, or whatever the fuck. You know what I mean? Like, shouldn't he be hitting that? Isn't that your guy's version of that kind of phrase? The fuck, those fucking twat, twats. We're going to kill every last one of those cunts. You know, that would have fucking hit too. But like, fuckers? <laughs> oh. So, I mean, obviously, nobody knows who fucking Ryan Drake is. So, I guess, you know, if this, if this is just for the, if this is just for your audience and, like, you have an established audience who is like, I want to see a Ryan Drake thing and I'm excited about it, you know, I can see putting Ryan Drake in there, especially if you think it's got, like, franchise potential. But, like, it doesn't because you're the critical drinker and there's Ryan Drake who's going to watch this movie and you're going to lose money on it. Um or maybe you won't. It would be nice if you didn't. Hey, fuck, good luck, buddy. But like the. Um, all right, yeah, I'm going to keep this up for a second. But the uh, there, there's no real reason to put say like this is a, a novel and like a, a, a thing or not a novel, but like this is a, uh, you know, a part of a series when no one gives a fuck who the character is. Right. And also like your character has he is. He's not bad, actually. The actor who's playing it isn't, like, the worst thing ever. I think you just probably are really bad at writing dialogue, which makes sense because you're a fucking conservative. Um, but, like, what you should have done with this trailer, you might have fucked yourself over, unironically, because the... There's no reason to watch this, first off. There, there's nothing that's interesting about this in the scenes that you selected... Because I don't give a fuck who that character is. I, 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 I don't now, and I didn't at the beginning. And you have to know if you're going to be a movie critic that this, the quality overall here was like maybe a touch above a red letter media production movie where they're all just saying like, I can't believe I shit in the toilet. Oh, no. You, know, you just have fucking, uh, what's his name? Rich uh, birthday boy running around. <laughs> um. You should have fucking focused. If there's like action scenes, that's what I want to say. It seems like there's some action scenes in here or at least some good shots. You have some of this. You can always have people running. Uh, some set pieces. I don't know. It, 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 when you have a movie that is this like, you know, you're from like, you're a, you're kind of like an internet clown. Sorry. Um, who I don't think anyone has any respect for you. Creativity, creatively. You know what I mean? Like, it's not like we're going to, 
take you on your word that these scenes are going to be in here. When you fast cut all of these action scenes together, it makes it seem like you're covering up the fact that your action scenes are trash. And then when you let it lead with the bad guy's monologue, he is really wooden and a bad actor. And so like, it, it's not hitting. Maybe, maybe it's just an ADR thing. The camera grading's okay. I would say you need to put on one to two more lights per scene. Just one to two more lights per scene. Use a reflector because this is the darkest movie I have seen in a while. There's, the, the lighting is just so uneven. I can tell you're trying to go for a born type thing or, or, or whatever. You know what I mean? This has got kind of like a seven angle, but you can't do dynamic camera shots unless they're very well planned and have all of your light coming from natural sources because you, you're going to end up having your character. I can't see what the fuck is going on. the entire Guys, time. That room. So like when we see this, like, you know, we, we have this rotating floating camera and stuff uh, kind of going around this dude. Usually if you're, if you're fucking cinema verite, fucking loose, steady cam walking around in circles around somebody and you're doing multiple cuts it always is going to come off as being kind of unconfident in your creative, your creative decisions. Like ah, I fucking can't do it. Maybe you have one, but like if you can pull off some specific thing about it, atmosphere, lighting, your ability to like, maybe just edit and color grade or your ability to, in this case is an action movie. So nothing else matters other than the action scenes. You can kind of do it. If this is a cool action scene, that's from the beginning, way less, way less talking from him, way less talking from him. Good uh, close up on the eyes or something like that. <laughs> Maybe even actually do all of this talking should be over something else. Give us some like establishing shots, you know, show some dudes like loading their weapons. Chuck, 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 chuck. And then have him just say, there's no time. And then you know, hit this. That should be like, I want to see like 15 more shots. Blah, 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 blah. Because it's a fucking action movie, clearly. This is like a Jack Reacher, Tom Clancy, Rainbow Six, fucking whatever the fuck type, you know, one good guy with a gun, one fella with a Glock 17 versus the entire nation of Africa type vibe jam thing. We have some stuff over here. You know, you got like cars and shit. I would have you just driving around in cars, like sped up. He's into my country. And as you can see. See, like when we're in the native light, we're pretty well lit. When we go inside, it's fucking Fuck out in one piece. hyper dark. Look around you, Frost. Does this look like headquarters? This is the other thing I was saying. Like you need some reflectors. This guy, you're half in, half out. So you're getting your natural light that's being reflected off the ground and shit. It's always going to be super, super bright. So he's getting exposed hot he's getting exposed hot on one side of his face because of it you know and sometimes that can work but uh first off your fucking actor has his chest to the camera cool but his back is to the light so like you're you're setting yourself up to have most of his body in silhouette so you got to kind of like work around that put a fucking reflector on him just put a big fucking white sheet up here you know cut some holes in it if it's too windy or put some sandbags on it and then you can reflect back a bunch of that light onto him and we can have a much better exposure because these shadows are doing him no fucking favors. His eyes are mostly in the dark. We got barely a little bit of a reflection up here. I can't really see much of him. You know, Does this look like headquarters to you? This looks and sounds like a bullshit rush job. Same for this. Like, um, you've got him here. Either make it darker, unironically. Like, stop trying to, stop, stop going the middle road. I don't know if you're, like, looking at your histogram or not. Um, and you're trying to, like, if you're trying to fucking auto-expose and just go with your, your histogram flat, you're probably getting this, but you should be a little fucking more daring with your, with your overall lighting. So, for this, if this is supposed to be intense, this guy's got really good-looking eyes, I think. Like, he's got, like, a nice, like, colorful blue eye. That, that'll, that'll really, like, shine if you put the light on it and let it go. You should just have these guys get a little bit more into the light and let this be the color and just let this go out. Because this information is kind of useless anyway. Who gives a fuck about the interior of this here? And also balance this a little bit. Yeah, like he needs to be, he needs to, your shot, he should be here, right? In the middle of the screen. This guy should be a little bit further over and let this like kind of gap between them. It seems a little too cons conspiratorial. And when he turns to him, Shit, he's kind of turning into his space. So we don't have like a lot of like working area. It's more of a, a romantic type shot. But if you, if you let this expose hotter by making this darker, 
then the side of his face, I think, will look a lot better. Or just put a reflector in here and let them have themselves be fucking exposed kind of the right way. Because the angle of it, it's just, it's just not you're doing your, your character any, any fucking favors. You were foolish enough to send spies into my country. And as you can see... This is like a, not a lot of consideration for lighting. In they the have failed place. miserably. Ryan and Drake. And of course, I mean, put in some like, put in some booster lights, you know, put in some hair lights or some shit. Top down reflector, let the guy's haircut shine off. You're, you're losing a lot. You're losing a lot when you, uh, when you, when you, when you kind of get rid of people's silhouettes, you know, you have these kind of like foggy, futzy scenes and your characters aren't standing around, especially if you're trying to get action to show off. Even if it's like quick cut action, you want your silhouettes a lot more visible because otherwise it's just blurs. And also with all these, that that shot right there, where the guy was looking up from the uh, from up, up from the rifle. I like that one the most. You use depth of field. It's a good way to do an intention grabbing, an attention grabbing shot. You know, kind of just way too short. Like this kind of like good swoop in. You got this. Uh, you got the depth of field. Did you actually? Did you get your? Did your focus puller manage to move it from the scope to his face? I can't tell because you you cut it too fast. But like I'd like to see something more like that. <laughs> Ghost Gamer Super Chat at five dollars. What's up? If you're into horror and military, Evan Royalty's movies are pretty cool. His most popular one is SCP Overlord. He's working on a stalker movie too. Oh, that's fucking sick, dude. Ten dollars. Cat has, says the man has a dragon tattoo to match his surname. Oh no. No. Yeah, you think? Just to let, like he pulls it up. It's gonna be during the sex scene, the inevitable like sex scene that I don't know. Drinker's like a fucking conservative, right? So it's gonna be one of those like Jack Reacher, where it's just going to be the dude with his shirt off, and she's going to go, what is that? Oh, these. <sighs> There's story behind that. I don't like getting into it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I we got a stunt. A trap. Like, these stunts, all of this should be it. Th that should be the entirety of this. I want to see some fucking stunt work. Do you know what I mean? If, th if you have anybody... For your critical drinker, you know what I mean? Like, if you have a single person that's willing to take a drop for you, that you should be getting so much fuck, so much fucking work out of that. You need to keep that on screen as much as possible. Like, this, any rolling, this that, 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 that person's taking a hit. That's a full drop. Blah. You know what I mean? They're rolling off of something onto something that you should have those everywhere. Everywhere. Like, that should be, <laughs> I would try sneaking in there twice. Because. If those assholes don't kill you. See, this is what I mean with these. Uh, this is a weird camera choice, too. I mean, if the whole thing is like this, I, I don't mind picking this apart a little bit because I was just like kind of getting into it. Are these guys not friends anymore? Weren't they friends earlier? Yeah, this is this dude. But you see what I mean? Now again, he's like kind of facing the camera, right? But now he's got the a light at least on his chest, so he shows off a little bit more. But if you just had a reflector right fucking here, we could see more of this. Also, I don't like I don't like bottom up shots. I feel the only people dying today are those fuckers. Because <laughs> you kind of get like he's just a little orange on one side. He's a little orange on this side. He's a little green on this side. Uh, I guess they're doing like a, a I guess they're kind of color grading to that sort of yellowish that I see sometimes um, in British action shit. Because I can't remember what the fuck it was called, but it was on Stars. I watched it when I was in college. And I can't remember what it was, but it was the best worst show ever about like um, an American who was the most obviously a Brit ever and like a British SAS person who like teamed up and they both had Glock 17s and it didn't matter where they were. They would just Glock 17 their way through like armies of dudes that color grading in that show was very similar to this. It's this kind of yellowish like I played a lot of action games in 2007, 2009, you know, <laughs> kind of vibe. And this, this yellow kind of makes everything green in the shadow because it's yellow, you know? And um, I think you need to boost it a little bit. I think you just need a little, I think you need a, a little bit of a boost. I think this, this kind of color, wherever you kind of color grade into yellow, IMO, in my opinion, you, I feel like you need to have harder shadows. Like you should, like in your color corrections, you should be fucking like hitting the, like just upping the, the raw blacks on midtones and shadows. 
just by a by a minute because I think it'll kind of like it, it makes all your lines a little bit clearer. But here, you know, you're it, it doesn't have a good actiony bit to it. Like he's he's in silhouette, the top of his head's clipped off. It doesn't need to be this close. Just move the camera up or move them back, um, and, and darken this up, and he'll be a little bit more intense because also you'll let this shine a bit more. You know what I mean? And like his eye will be like fucking glowing and stuff. And you can fix a bunch of that with like other things. Um, but just be more in control of your light overall. Also, this the shoulders on this guy. <laughs> you're making he's supposed to be an action hero. And I, I know you're probably not thinking your way through this, but like you really need to have your action heroes with their chest back talking directly into the camera with their neck not moving more than like about 15 degrees off frame. Because this guy is making himself look smaller. Like, this is, if you think about it, the conversation that you're trying to have where he's supposed to be, like, in control, this body language is the same one where you ask someone, like, am I going to see you again? Will I, will I ever see you again? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, these are just things you're supposed to think your way through. Um, and I wish they would have thought of it. There's clearly money being spent on this. I mean, if you're actually making... This seems like an honest effort, so I'm giving it an honest criticism. You know what I mean? Like, you just need to fucking work your way through it a little bit better. You can really tell the color grading, too, because this sky is just f absolutely, like, f funk colored. I don't, I don't even know what that is. That might just be also my... Let me see. Let me see what this looks like on HDR. Oh, God, it's more yellow. On my bluest screen, it's still very yellow. This is... I'm watching these on my art screen, which is 1080 um and like set set for for accurate color so it this is probably what the display color would be printed not great um but yeah even just a, a little bit of a light back here on the back of his shoulder we might be able to get just a nice bit of nice like a nice bit of highlight you know to kind of round out his silhouette and give it some like clarity even for this dude maybe see his ear or something this knife is too small. Also, just this knife is too small. And it's it feels like it's in the wrong direction. I don't know how, why he's holding it like that. All of them. I guess it's side to side, but like... You know, if you're in a rush... I feel. Oh, it is. He's, he holds it weird. He holds it like sideways. So I guess maybe it was supposed to be shown off like here in this. And then maybe he was doing camera in camera. Uh, or not camera, camera, whatever, two shots. He's doing, he's doing a, camera A, camera B, but camera B is like down here looking up into this guy's nose. He's almost completely unlit and we're looking into his nose. And then we're on camera A when we switch. Oh, it is, it is. It absolutely is. I'm fucking, I'm, I'm 100. This is just a camera A, camera B shot together. Why? Why did you, why did you fucking two camera this? <laughs> Is it because you bought a second camera and you're like, just in case? Like, what, what, is the, what is the decision that goes into these angles and like this, this, this closeness? What a, what, a strange, what a strange shot. I bet you two bucks they weren't even, like, they had them blocked here, but they wouldn't even move the fucking car. Like, oh, <laughs> keep the car where it is. We have it. <laughs> they actually filmed on a B. <laughs> a literal B. And those fuckers. All of them. Also, just another, just real quick, another, th this, just as a, as a hint, if you're going to bloom with your title, make your, if you're, <laughs> just understand the concept of contrast. These brighter parts need to be behind the black part so that it will shine. Otherwise, it, this, this is barely, it's barely visible. I, <laughs> I don't know where guys like this get off criticizing like blockbuster movies because them being upsetty spaghetti about like some sort of insanely high up fucking decision that some studio made. You know what I mean? When they're at the top of the game and they're trying to like, you're, you're talking about the fucking, the council of fucking like skulls that fucking decide, you know, Hey, we're going to try to move this trend next and we want to make this star come up so that they can go in this direction, blah, blah, blah. And like, you're just like, I don't know if I like women in pants, like level criticism is crazy when you can't even do the most basic shit, like at all, 
like like I, I've never worked on a film. I guarantee you I could throw together some well, I mean I've worked on films, you know what I mean? Like I've made like little tiny movies and shit as fast as I can for like different reasons. I guarantee you I could throw together a little bit something a little bit better than this. Just it, it, it's all the standard stuff. This is just for like if you're out there and you're thinking your way through, like you want to make a movie sometime at some point, right? Uh just consider choosing some better scenes <laughs> um splurge for extras if you can or even just fucking gorilla shoot uh with a tight lens and try to get yourself out in some like living spaces because this is a, a movie that's clearly cheap as fuck like the this movie feels impoverished because first off action movies are supposed to feel like they have a sense of scale right because it's supposed to be like action-y so you should be having like fights or something or like interesting locations uh, i guess this is just scotland <laughs> it would be fucking hilarious if you like just owned it and just every scene you know where you did an establishing shot just had the little <laughs> the little like the little letters show up and it just said scotland just every time not even where you are not even like edinburgh or anything just said scotland every time <laughs> be fucking awesome um, but you got to have something that's at least a little bit interesting. You know what I mean? Set something in a bar, have some shit going on in the background, have people talking like by, you know, where, where, where stuff is happening. All of this just seems like we're trying to really hold as close to our chest. The fact that we had no money to make this movie, you know what I'm saying? But it's like way too obvious. Um, because you didn't show me anything in the film other than you have a main guy and he's got a really big chin and like no shoulders. Like I, I don't know why this guy's supposed to be dangerous or cool or interesting. I think I could fold him in half like a fucking towel. With all due respect to the guy. Hold on. What, what actually I can look him up. Who is it? That's not actually critical drinker playing his own fucking OC, is it? Because that's the most furry coated thing I've ever seen in my life. I would love to find out that that's true. Did you actually credit any of your people in the credits? Because that would be fucking dope of you, and I would love you forever because it would save me the time of having to look shit up. Nope. The credits just say we made a thing and here's the trailer for it. Thank you. Thank you, Critical. <laughs> Alan Wake, Ryan Drake, Tyler Rake, Solid Snake. You British people are crazy. All the characters have a unique look and seem formidable. Where are these NPCs coming from? <laughs> Oh my god. I mean, he's just getting ripped in the fucking comments. <sighs> I wish I wish it would say anything about it. maybe critical what is it called again? Rogue Elements. I was just I was just watched the trailer for like 15 minutes and fucking can't remember the name of the movie, which is a bad sign. Rogue Elements. Ryan Jake story, IMDb. There we go. Thank you. Thank you. Oh my God. It's plummeting <laughs> in interest. Yeah. Here, I mean, I, I guess I can, just, I can put this back up on the screen for you guys so you can follow along with me. Um, oh, and Mean Girls just pops up. Well, that's not Xander Hall. Top cast. Mike Dupood is Volkov. Well, there's him. I mean, these guys all do look like leftovers. He can be seen on the star's hit show, Power. He plays Jason Michik, a Serbian leader of a huge drug cartel, series regular. He's also recurring on the series The 100, CW series, where he plays the intense Vincent. So you got real actors. Dude, the... Derek Moran. He's got 11 credits. Dude, this is a tiny fella. Known for Clarice, Stardust, but the 2020 Stardust, and Astrid and Lily save the world. Oh, is he, is he, he's a, he's a voice actor. Well, that makes sense. Oh, he also played Clarice's father in the Clarice TV series for six episodes. Well, good for you, man. It's good to see that you're fucking, you're getting fucking work. I didn't star in anything. So this is his like moment. October 1970, TV miniseries, Branko Alton. Cowboy 3, Good Morning Tomorrow. I want to see his, um, do you have his agent info resume? 
Where, where's his? Where's his? I want to see how high, how tall he is and stuff. Don't they? Do they not have those anymore? Did they not tell you like the fucking like uh, the vital statistics of fucking actors, or did he? Did his? Did his agent just not give a fuck? Oh, that's right. You got to pay for fucking IMD now. IMDb now. Oh, that sucks. Stardust 2020. Hmm. I've never heard of this. Mark Maron was in it. Well, yeah. If Mark Maron's starring in it, there you go. Steve Boyle. I know that guy, right? Or is it a different Steve Boyle? Canadian. He played... He was in M. Night Shyamalan's Trap? What the fuck is that? Man in Suit, Bruce Wayne. I mean, it happens, man. It's alright. He's a little background guy. Steve Boyle. I guess that's another actual famous person's name, though. Carson Manning, Brian Bisson, Max White, Arthur Mokhtarov, Ryan Barton, Ryan Barton. <laughs> we got some work out of Ryan Barton. So you, you got some fucking actual actors, which is cool. Katisha Shaw, actress, writer, producer. She's got, she's not working. <laughs> I'm just kidding. She's got fucking jobs. I'm, I'm being mean at this point. Producer on a few things. Well, that's crazy. Ugh, that's fucking rough. Um, interesting though. Definitely the not the best casting for your main dude. Uh, I Stardust the streamer. How did he star in that? Yeah, yeah. Dude, doing an unironic, like straightforward, like Stardust movie about the Destiny orbiter slash like arguer on panels who surprisingly enough has a channel of her own stardust like it but she's just played by like john cena would be fucking hilarious i told you sunday you ran again that's why they call you president run day <laughs> I, like i don't know if imdb has a bot that scans credits but i got a page and i didn't even make it rough uh, sometimes your actual people will put you into. If you caught a check, if you caught a check, um, I think people put you on IMDb now. Already, um, I can't remember why that is. Also, I know that a lot of the, I don't know if this is actually the case or not though. A lot of the unions or something will stipulate that you get put. If you're a union, I think the unions stipulate that you get added to the, um, to like the databases and stuff. I, that I, that might be completely fucking wrong. I might be making that up. For some reason, I feel like I, I heard that and I know that it's a fact, even though I don't. Why well, no ad blocker? Uh, I don't run ad blocker. I support. <laughs> I support everybody. I feel bad about running ad blocker these days. And also, like the last time I had it, it fucking tried to eat my entire goddamn internet. I posted a comparison between. Critical Drinker and the guy he cast to play the hero in the Discord stream chat. Let's see it. Let's see it. Let's see it. Fuck. Keep accidentally covering up the important window, and that's not what I'm supposed to be doing. Stream chat. Mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> that's pretty close. It's kind of on the nose. Holly woke. Oh no, dude. No, that's just the same guy. What? You're fucking with me, right? Isn't that just the, that's just the same dude? You're going to give me fucking white people face blindness. This ha this happens to me when I look at Europeans. They're like ostensibly supposed to be like the same as me, but then I get like fucking face blindness because they like wear their hair and their face is different. But what in the fuck is going on here? This dude's definitely hotter. Of the two. Yes, this guy is a fucking, this dude's a fucking champ. This guy's way hotter. Even with the pushback hairline. I, this faux hawk shit, man. What in the fuck? <laughs> Stop trying to jump into the stream. Stop trying to jump into the stream. 
trigonometry, big thumb energy. <laughs> this guy plays a Serb. Let me move back up here. I've got to go take my break. It is time for me to take a break real quick. If you guys don't mind. You guys mind? You guys mind? F's in chat if I can take a break. No, <laughs> just kidding. That is our protagonist, I guess. Back in my day, the Twinks was on. We used to be a proper country. <laughs> when I was six, well, my old Twinks had nothing but a vitamin C deficiency. Yeah, they're all full of teeth and dreams. I'm on IMDb for doing a VFX shot that got cut and reshot in a student video for a class I wasn't even in because it was at a film festival. I've got IMDb credits, I think I'm supposed to. So, like, for various podcasts and other things that I've done, like, small amounts of voice work for. Because everyone's always like, do you have an IMDb? And I'm like, I don't want to have an IMDb with no credits. So, no, I don't have an IMDb. Don't. Like, no, we can add you. We have our own IMDb, and then we'll put you on there. I'm like, no, it's, it's fine. Just don't. Don't fucking do that, please. <laughs> but it's okay. All right. Folks, I'm going to be back here in a second. I'm going to leave you with our good friend, Miss Fennec. When we get back, we're going to be watching what might be one of my favorite segments ever. I don't know. It's actually, no matter what, the segment that we're about to see is going to be fucking fire. We're going to be covering um, a guy talking about a war movie that I had half forgotten about, except for when sometimes Afghanistan comes up. That is fucking hilarious it's one of the funniest fucking war movies i've ever seen next to black hawk down which is quite literally one of the funniest movies in the history of mankind it is fucking hilarious as shit um it's called lone survivor it stars mark Wahlberg. i am going to be back in a second hang out with miss fennec fennec make sure to like the stream and god bless Yeah.
Jones. Yeah. Welcome back. It happened again. Look, I don't know why it happens. I have the worst camera in streaming. Darkler. Fuck. I, I unironically, I am not doing this on purpose. Um, I don't know how to fix it. It just happens to me. I guess maybe I do have to just keep the exposure on automatic. Cause, but like, why would the exposure have changed? Do you know what I mean? Like, what the fuck is happening that it changes? Um, my God. I, I I have no idea what to do at this point. I have no idea what to do about the camera. I probably have to fix it in my fucking BIOS or something. <laughs> bunny cam, Tyler cam. Bunny cam, bunny cam, bunny cam. Hello, Miss Fennec. Gorpo? Oh, no. Did, did Gorpo get Gorp? Did she get gorpo <laughs> Thank you, Kusabake, for five pounds. Sterling? Yeah, the F and ch F's in chat were just for me to do a, uh, they were just for me to say if I was cool to be going on a break. The poor fox lady sits asleep, collapsed, trained, and to the point of exhaustion from dealing with all this shit. She needs a coffee. It would be hilarious if I, t if I, if I could let you guys tip during a break and, and she would, it would give her like a little dollar and she could get a coffee and wake up. I'll put a thing in if I can, if I can, if, if we get bigger, I'm just going to keep buying. Cause I love the best part about all of like the animations is it's cool that I get like money for it because you guys pay to see them go off, which is fucking wonderful for me. But also like I got to pay Alan, who's the animator dude, like a, almost $300, I think total, um, for this, or maybe a little over $300. Yeah. 325 bucks for the two animations, you know? Um, and they're great. And like, he's got animation credits now. Like he's a paid animator. The dude's a pro. <laughs> and that's fucking awesome. So I'm like, I'm tr always trying to do some more of those. I think it would be funny if I could get some, the hard part is fucking program cr programming them. Each time it takes me like a fucking day to get the thing to go off when it's a fu when it's fucking supposed to, because everything's just like confusing as shit, like terrible HTML flash encoding it's 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 all dog shit like there's no program that does it well even though it should be has the paintbrush haircut guy been covered yet who is is that is that is that critical drinker <laughs> um but I think it would be funny, you know, like to have like an animation or something where it's like, oh, if I could give Miss Fennec a blanket, she just boop, 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 boop. <laughs> we have other ones too. Um, we have other ones too. The uh, that I, I've got to make the other characters. I'm so busy right now off stream. I am almost done. Actually, I don't know if I told you guys this. I'm almost done with the audiobook for my novel. It's going to be coming out. In a week or two, I don't know exactly how we're going to handle it. I don't know if I just want it to be thrown up. I think we're going to do like an announcement like, hey, this is here. So I can get as many people to buy it as I can. But it is going to be, it's a full audio book. I've, uh, I've, or not, do you guys want to hear what it sounds like? I can, I can let you guys hear it a little bit. You know, if you want me to titillate you. Breitler. <laughs> Dude, Doc, I want to fix it, but I can't. I just can't. I can't even, I can't even pretend to fix it. Maybe if I... I feel like it's like the same. Ugh. Did you guys see the coffee bags? <laughs> Summerton, LOL. Sorry for being cryptic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We covered that already. That's at the beginning of the program. 
I don't know. I've, t- I've now turned my light down like almost off and it looks exactly the same almost to me. So did you see Onyx the Fortuitous is coming out with a movie? I don't know. Um, didn't, is that not out already? Onyx, for, Onyx the Fortuitous has been coming out with some sort of fucking horror movie with like a puppet or some shit for fucking uh, like years. Since I was using Instagram intentionally as the first time I ever saw that. And so it feels like it's been a million billion fucking years. Yeah, I don't know how much this is fixed. I feel like it's not much better. I know if I turn on something like a white screen here too, it's going to be fucking miserable. Let's see. It's not too bad, but still, like, fuck. What the? This is all going to be completely different anyway. Once I get to the new place, it's going to be a smaller room, brighter lights. Completely different. When you when you grabbed the camera, it felt like you grabbed me by the throat to move me. <laughs> Bullyedler. Okay, let's start the uh, let's let's start the last chunk of this. Chris Stuckman's film comes out later this year too. Chris Stockman's like, I feel like he's an all right guy, but I'm just not interested in anything he does. Is that okay? That's how I feel. Now I want to turn the light back up because I feel like, I feel like I'm at a lower frame rate. I am at a lower frame rate because the light went down. Dude, it's just the, uh, the internals on this are fucking miserable. Right, it's supposed to be. I can see, yeah, I can see the frame rate goes up too. What in the fuck? That is a little bright. <laughs> that light is direct on my face now. Who gives a shit? Let's just fucking get on with the goddamn show. Am I right, people? Am I fucking right? Move that over a little bit more. Put it down. There we go. <laughs> that camera grab definitely awoken something in too many people. <laughs> I felt like I was a gallon of OJ about to see my last just there. <laughs> Skin glowing like you drink water. I got that sweaty sheen, boy. Um, but yeah, I can tell I can tell my my fucking my frame rates all the way back up. Most of this is because this fucking light's too direct on my face. I need to have it like to the side and actually use a reflector too. I'm sorry. I just want to fuck with this. I, it, it's 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 pointless because I'm gonna fucking touch it again tomorrow and it's gonna be broken again. So is the gain just not even working? It's just not even paying attention to the gain. That's so strange. Hold on. Are there multiple of these open somewhere? No. This is so this is such this is such a broken camera control. It's very bizarre. The gain now longer now no longer works. So like, why not configure video and, and it turns off like that each time. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't leave everybody. Contrast a little bit. Uh, oh, Jesus. What like the contrast? I don't know what the contrast on this does. It's not a normal contrast. So that backlight compensation is what fucks everything up. Okay, I think that's a normal exposure. I think this is fine, generally. <laughs> Why does not Scalagrim 
the larger of the two nerds simply eat the shad. Because, my darling, they are in two different countries. If he was within grabbing distance, the shad would be devoured. Somebody said I got the fucking Windows boot face, and that just killed me. I can't, I can't even deal with that. <laughs> Bye, gang. Chicken in. What's up, buddy, buddy, buddy? Does Wahlberg do movies still? All I see him in nowadays is the hollow ads where he does half-assed sales pitches. Stay prayed up. Yes, um, I think he's in a religious movie right now that's about to come out here in a second. Um, I think fucking... I, I think he, like, crossed someone. I think he fucking fucked up. And pissed somebody off in Hollywood and it didn't like blow up because I know I think he's a massive like Trump guy. Uh, I have no evidence for that other than he's like a hyper religious nut who wants to beat the shit out of a person just for being Asian. Um, I, I don't know if that's evidence enough to say somebody's a Trump fan. Um, but like I think he pissed somebody off and he got kind of scooted. He also was not much of a draw like Mark Wahlberg's kind of short, you know. Um, and he's not the best actor. He's, he's kind of got his one thing like he goes to, he did the Ted movies, which were okay, but like he, he doesn't look very good as an older guy, um, as he did when he was younger and like, he's a million fucking years old now. So maybe he just doesn't want to be out there and he's got a lot of money, but I think he's doing like weird religious movies now <laughs> in a religious movie. So not in any movies, then got it. Yeah. Yeah. What kind of camera is it? If it's Logitech, I had an issue where I had to go into the separate Logitech camera settings and check off auto settings so it wouldn't change in OBS. Fuck off. That I do have a Logitech. Where's the Logitech settings? Tell me. Reveal your secrets to me now, internet wizard. I just search Logitech. If I just search in... <laughs> it just sends me to the fucking internet. I hate Windows so bad. I'm just too stupid to fucking do... Um, Ubuntu or whatever the fuck. So if I go to settings, I need to know if this is a if this is the thing now. I never even thought of this. Bluetooth and devices, cameras, C nine two two Pro. Why did you pop up notification balloon? You're not supposed to be here. Oh, it's AI. They put AI on my computer without telling me, motherfuckers. An app is using the camera below. Settings changed here and the app will affect the camera and the app preview below. Basic settings. I feel like if I click disable, it'll turn it off. Oh, I'm sorry. That probably fucking was miserable for someone. <laughs> no rotation. Reset default camera settings. This, just, this gives me four sliders, which I know it's fucking with me. If I click disable, I guarantee you it's going to disable it. So, like, where's... Wh why can't you go into the actual device settings of things anymore? I hate that it locks you out. Like, I just want to go to the, 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 like, gray dots. Where it's just fucking like uh, like the fucking horrible old ancient BIOS menus. Does the camera have a little widget in the taskbar? I don't think so. Focus. No. 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 Nope. OBS does. Oh god, I turned it off. Hope you guys are still with me. Everything but my goddamn camera does. This is insane. I hate that they do this to you. Like, oh no, we're not going to let you actually control anything. We'll give you four sliders that don't do any of the shit that you need to do. It should be illegal. If I could pass any law in America, I'm going to give up now. If I could pass any law in America, it would be to illegalize putting any internet links 
into hardware, just any uh, into software, just any internet, any external internet internet links like are illegal. <laughs> you just can't do it. Like if I try to click on something, you just it, it has to go into the computer or or not. Like you can only access the internet through the internet. The appleification of Windows has been a blight on my, mankind. Yes. Logitech probably has their own little camera manager application, but who knows where it could be. Mark Wahlberg's newest movie is about him winning a kayak race with a dog as his partner. No one was surprised. Linux. Ubuntu is shit. I see. I, it, it has begun. I got fucking brighter. I'm like, God damn it. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. Just stay right there, please, for the love of fucking God. Actors that bail out to religious movies seem to lose any talent they had. And then there's Kevin Sorbo. That dude has done some terrible movies. I think it's really just because when you go out to, like, movies, actors that you think are good actors are often good actors because they have good support personnel around them, both on set and off set, right? And you need to not be what conservatives are to, like, get access to the most amount of people, basically, is how to, how to, how to break it down. Like, you need to be approachable and not fucking insane and not, like, support policies that are anti-fucking half the population with women, uh, but also, like, anti-gay, anti-fucking minority and shit. Because then you won't have those people around you. And, like, you need those people to make stuff. Like, all the good actors, like, they also have good, like, secondary and tertiary script writers that float around them. You know what I mean? Like, gin, gin, like ginning up scripts so that it's like, hey, Mr. fucking Wahlberg only reads r lines like this. Like, we, we just, every aspect of their career is controlled in that way. I get the plots of Lone Survivor and Shooter mixed up, but I also don't remember their plots are actually similar. They're not. They're completely different, but it's also completely reasonable. So anyway, uh, we'll get into it. Lone Survivor is a movie made by Mark Wahlberg a million fucking years ago. And by a million, I mean like maybe six or seven, maybe ten. I can't remember. Back when Mark Wahlberg could do stunts still, for sure, um, he did Lone Survivor. It has one of my favorite, one of my favorite scenes in a movie ever. And I'll talk about it hopefully during the thing and maybe even a little bit here in a second. As I can remember, Lone Survivor is based on the true story of a Navy SEAL who went to Afghanistan and with other navies, not just because <laughs> he was in Afghanistan stationed there. Uh, and basically the mission that they were on went fucked up, went foobar, and uh, they had to get extracted. And on the way out, they lost a bunch of guys. Um, I don't know if I, I remember seeing this post my military uh, service and saying, this is the most outlandish shit I have ever seen in my life. Like this is fucking insane. One of my favorite scenes in any military movie ever, because it's so stupid is in this. I still can't remember exactly what they were trying to do. I was watching this on like live TV, so I couldn't just rewind and be like, hold on. And I hope this guy covers it. And I'm unironically individual whose video I'm watching. If you don't cover this scene in this, I'm furious with you. They say we need to get to the bottom of a mountain because we're being like chased. And they just jump off the side of the mountain by like rolling, like, like the way a little kid rolls down a hill. And so I can't remember why they just go, we're going to do the whatever technique. And they just start and they just roll bouncing down the side of a mountain in Afghanistan. And I still can't remember what they were trying to accomplish. And I remember watching it and going like, cause they said, I know it was like one of those things like based on the, based on the experiences of real Navy SEALs. And I think they were like, even like we had Navy SEALs watching it. Um, if I remember correctly, also, if you guys remember Dan Bilzerian, um, I can't remember if it's this, but I think it's this movie. Dan Bilzerian gave, uh, he's a, a fucking trust fund kid whose dad stole a bunch of money um, and then like passed it on to him. Like his dad did insider trading and got caught, 
but he stole like $235 million or some shit and then just hid it. And so Dan Bilzerian got access to it and pretended that he won 400, 500 fucking million dollars or some shit from poker, which is awesome and stupid. He's like one of the original. Dan Bilzerian is like one of the original Joe Rogan celebrities. Jan Bil- Dan Bilzerian, if I remember correctly, paid a million dollars to this movie as an investor if he was also allowed to be on the movie. Um, let me just double check this because I, I, I'm almost 99.9% sure this is a fact and I have to look it up now. Dan Bilzerian, Lone Survivor. Dan Bilzerian is in this. He is Healy. <laughs> yeah, actor sues Lone Survivor producers after roll cut. Professional poker player Dan Bilzerian is suing the producers of Peter Berg's Lone Survivor, claiming he loaned the production a million in order to whatever. Uh, Dan Bilzerian, by the way, is a guy who was famous for being a Navy SEAL and never having been a Navy SEAL, which is wild. He was on Joe Rogan like fucking three times, I feel like, talking about like SEAL training and how like SEAL training can like change you and stuff. And like, yeah, 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 like the SEALs are cool. Like, I'm so cool with the SEALs. Until it came out, it was like, well, I was never a Navy SEAL. Like, he never passed BUDS or INDOC. Like, he just never served as a Navy SEAL. He just went like two or three different times. And, like, broke his leg once and then, like, washed out the other times, which is fucking awesome. And so he paid a million dollars to be in a movie to pretend to be a Navy SEAL. And I don't know if this guy's going to cover it, but, like, Lone Survivor is crazy. Lone Survivor is a wild fucking movie. And and, and we're going to start watching this video now. This is by um, a – this is their only video. This is Burn These Books. Um, we're going to check this out. Folks, the movies are bad. They've been bad for a long time. It's hard to find an action movie that doesn't love a little bit of extrajudicial killing. Now, I will say, when they found out that... Uh, <laughs> there's a pause. Also, this is, this, is, this is a crazy way to try to stab somebody. I don't think that would actually fucking... I'd be wild to try to punch through, like, all of that fucking, like, corded muscle with, like, any kind of knife and then up into... Like, what would you do? Like, this wouldn't even kill you, I don't think, unless that goes, like, all the way up. Uh, but, yeah, like, people found out that... Uh, You know, James Somerton fell, and now, like, we're getting some, like, that's what this voice sounds like. It's even harder to find one that doesn't have some kind of relationship with the military-industrial complex in one way or another. Hollywood wants nothing more than to have some old guy from the Pentagon sit around on set telling them whether their fight scenes are realistic and how much he wants to glass Iran. It's not a secret. Movies like Top Gun will gladly tell you. (laughs) What? (laughs) What? Hold on. (laughs) Hollywood wants nothing more than to have some old guy from the Pentagon sit around on set telling them whether their fight scenes are realistic and how much he wants to glass Iran. It's- <laughs> I don't know if that's the case. <laughs> Why? Why is he old? <laughs> old people don't work at the Pentagon, man. Uh, I don't know how old you are. You might, if you, this guy's like in his early 20s, that might feel like old. But old, old people don't work at the pun- Pentagon. They work at fucking Congress. Uh, you kind of age out of the Pentagon. <laughs> uh, Tyler, you were, were you a SEAL because you were a Marine, or were you a Marine because you were a SEAL? I was just a Marine. <laughs> I was never a Navy SEAL. I don't want to do Navy SEAL. Navy SEAL training just sounds like cock and ball torture for no fucking reason. It's not a secret. Movies like Top Gun will gladly tell you about what a pleasure it was to work with the military. And this is not an accident. It's not just a convenient asset for the movie makers. This is a symbiotic relationship. The US armed forces care deeply about what the public thinks about them. Propaganda is a huge part of what they do. Noam Chomsky wrote in Manufacturing Consent that the US Air Force's public outreach program included 17 TV stations. The US Air Force's out- outreach? God, ugh. <laughs> I've got to read fucking, I've got to read that goddamn uh, Noam Chomsky Manufacturing Consent book because I hear it fucking brought up way too many to way too fucking much 34 radio stations 140 newspapers 45,000 headquarters and unit news releases 615,000 hometown news releases six that's fucking nothing man dude that's that's like nothing what 1,600 interviews and fuck it the quote is longer than my intro it's on page 80 you can find the book for free on google just pull it up the... 
Fuck it, the quote is longer than my intro. It's on page 80. You can find the... News Air Force revealed that its, its public information outreach included the following. 140 newspapers, 690 copies per week. Uh, so a circulation of 690,000. Airman Magazine, monthly circulation, 125,000. 34 radio and 17 TV stations, primarily overseas. 45,000 headquarters and unit news releases. Why are you... In- <laughs> 615,000 hometown news releases, 6,600 interviews with news media, 3,200 news conferences, 500 news media orientation flights. Okay, okay, so that's like 500 like ride-alongs. 50 meetings with editorial boards, 11,000 speeches. That's like no penetration, buddy. You know how many fucking, like, when is this, when was this supposed to take place? Like, you gotta, yeah, bro, 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 I know it's your first, I know it's your first rodeo. It's your first rodeo, son. Welcome to the internet. Um, when, when, when was this? <laughs> what was the timeline? Because if this was like, if this was less than like a year, uh, that's not like that much. Do you know how many fucking newspapers were in America? Like, last year? It, it was a lot. You know what I mean? Even compared to these numbers. If this is from like the 90s or something, well, I don't know when the fuck Noam no, no Chomsky could still move his fingers enough to type. But if this is from like the 60s or 70s, this is like a non-penetration at all. Like whatsoever. Like you're just talking about advertisement. Like people aren't, it's not like advertising and propaganda are two different things. All right. You're, like I know it's like a little kid brain. If somebody says they like something you don't like, that's propaganda. But this is, it's also the Air Force, man. Like who gives a fuck? Oh, the insidious fucking Air Force. Oh, did you know that in 1972, fuck Richard Nixon? Oh, shut up. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> well, for free on Google, just pull it up. The point is, they do a lot, and it's not a new thing. Movies can be very easily used for political ends. Make bang to base. Wait, were you actually? Right. Movies can be very easily Was used this incidental? For it's just because you took this, vi- this footage from somebody else? Okay, you did. Are you? Okay, you've got, he's got he's got like a little lower okay, third. The quote is there. longer than my intro. It's on page eighty. You can find the book for free on Google. Just pull it up. The point is, they do a lot, and it's not a new thing. Movies can be very easily used for political ends. Okay. Big bang you should do base. that for you. You need to do that for your fucking memes too, if you're gonna keep it going. They're attacked by commie Nazis. It's not an earth-shattering observation. So part of me thinks I shouldn't even be here explaining this to you. But over the course of the pandemic, I had the displeasure of watching Peter Berg's 2013 biographical war thriller, Lone Survivor which starred one of my favorite racist people in Hollywood, Marky Mark himself. My parents watch this shit and just memory hold it immediately. I promise you they don't remember they have ever seen this movie. But for me, it changed my brain chemistry. I became one standard deviation more annoying after I watched it. My eyes popped out of my head and steam came out of my ears when I found out that the movie was positively received by audiences and critics alike and it was the highest grossing post 9-11 war movie at the time. I knew deep in my loins this was, was the most evil movie I'd ever- Is that actually true? Also, how did you find that out? That seems like something you you would have had to have like looked up intentionally, or someone told you. But like, I thought, I thought Zero Dark Thirty was the biggest war movie post nine eleven. Was that before or after this? That fuck Catherine Bigelow. Oh motherfucker, I fucking hate Catherine Bigelow. The Hurt Locker. One day, if I ever do like a gigantic, you want to see a fucking video that's gonna be me like somebody ripping a fucking movie apart. Me versus the Hurt Locker is insane 10 seconds of me watching the hurt locker any fucking given point of it is like almost red line level pissed almost red line furious how fucking stupid it is is the dumbest fucking movie i've ever seen i got into an argument with i got into a fucking argument with a uh with a film professor at my college like uh, and, and um actually but like like you gotta understand. I was like, no, no. You gotta understand. Zero Dark Thirty or fucking the Hurt Locker is stupid as fuck. Like it's a bad movie. And he's like, no, but like there's I think a little bit more depth. And I'm like, no, no, no. Like it's inaccurate as shit. It's like with the beginning of like one of my like deep like things into like okay, lefties need to be fucking talked over sometimes. Because he was like a sweetheart. Like he's like he just loved films and stuff. But like, you know. He like walk around. He like wore robes to school. You know, <laughs> he wore robes to class. We got to go to some shit. That was the same class that I got in trouble with like another member of the class because we went to see that Sully movie. The, you know the one the I'm the captain now. That movie uh, I can't remember what the fuck it's called, 
but I cracked up laughing at the end when all of the fucking all the every fucking pirate gets sniped at once. Like, like what the fuck? I was like, oh shit! <laughs> like it's just fucking funny as shit because it's so stupid. Like those are actors that didn't really happen to them. Um, but I, I remember talking about Hurt Locker, and Hurt Locker is painfully inaccurate. Like, and it's not like. I'm being in. I'm my honor is being impugned by this libelous slander. Fucking whatever. No, it's just like things that happen in that movie would and could have never happened at all. It is like so made up. It is quite literally beyond the pale. I'll say the phrase. It is fucking made up. Somebody said I love Stargate shit. Stargate is unironically more militarily a- more military accurate just like for just like like giving a fuck about what's going on on screen than fucking hurt locker I- i'm not kidding like i'm not fucking kidding independence day id4 independence day is more on point than the hurt locker in depicting anything in the military because it's like the pilots got in the plane and then flew them through the sky I saw it. They took off from an airport. Bat! <laughs> Tyler, you should review the boot camp arc of Full Metal Jacket. Are they bullshitting or is it real? I mean, the, the, it's real, bro. That's just, just, that's it, man. Somebody commented and said that that is a fake Paris Island that he made. He made a fake Paris Island in Britain because they like couldn't get on the base. I don't know if that's true or not, but like that's fucking crazy. Uh, but if it is, like that shit's accurate as fuck. It is. And it's not also just accurate. It's like self-correcting for accuracy because everyone in the fucking, everyone in the fucking military or in the Marine Corps loves the first half of Full Metal Jacket because it's like, you call it Full Moto Jacket. Like you can quote, like the, the shit gets quoted all the time. People talk like that. And so it also sort of like, reverse engineered to the point where people are like, I fucking really like this. I'm going to act like this from now on and stuff. So like you'll hear people will get like the names from it and stuff. It, the, the quotes from it are everywhere because people like seeing themselves on screen and it's actually like accurate. Like it's just real. It doesn't matter if like bad things happen. You're like, well, fuck that shit. Hey, I feel, I feel fucking seen. You know what I mean? It's like representation. Captain Phillips. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ever seen. I then devoted hours of my life to reading the book it was based on, only to conclude that it was far more evil than I could have imagined. I then read like 10 books about Afghanistan just to better understand this country and unlock new ways to hate this film, this book, and everyone involved here. Oh, this is Friends, wild. I'm this is going to be a completely different this point than I would make. War crimes are good and they are none of your business. I'm here to tell you that Lone Survivor is the wrongest movie ever made. Whose music is this? I had originally written a lot about how the war in Afghanistan came about, how the Soviet invasion shaped the subsequent U.S. occupation, and how this all paved the way for the events of Lone Survivor to take place, but frankly, this is a video about a Mark Wahlberg movie, so I'll save it for the next one, and instead, jump straight to telling you the story as the book intended. Dude, okay, by the way, if you're gonna use all this footage, you gotta fucking credit these people. Where is it? Is it down there? What the hell? Your, your credits, is that, is there a credit? I can't fucking, I can't fucking see it. What the fuck? It's uh, your credits, bro. Your fucking credits are underneath the like entirety of this bar. Can you see that? If you watch back, you got to put your credits somewhere where somebody can fucking see it. But at least you did credit. It, I guess. Marcus Luttrell was sent into the Hindu Kush mountains of Afghanistan for Operation Red Wing. His mission, along with his friends and fellow Navy SEALs Matthew Axelson, Mike Murphy, and Danny Dietz, was to surveil a local Taliban There's leader Dan named Bilzerian. Ahmad Shah. The plan was to hide in the mountains above the town where they believed Shaw to be, and if necessary, stay there for four days until they could get a clear visual of him. It's a long time to devote to a mission built around one guy. But this isn't just any guy. Shaw is said to command an army of around 150 Taliban fighters, and was known to be tight with Osama bin Laden. Closer to the mission launching, oh, we turned it backwards. Word, Shaw was expected to have somewhere between 80 and 200 men defending him. In his book, Latrell says that Shaw just keeps coming up, and the size of his forces Remember this continue case to, to be in everything? In the adaptation, Matthew Axelson claims that Shaw killed 20 Marines in the week before the operation. This all starts to weigh on Marcus, so he and his fellow SEALs grab an extra three magazines, giving them a total of 11 each. The team was then dropped off via helicopter to begin their mission. 
To avoid arousing suspicion from the local Taliban, they made three false inserts. Once Marcus and the team rappelled down, someone in the helicopter cut the rope behind them. Luttrell points this out as a pretty big mistake to make, but luckily Murphy found it and they covered it up with some foliage and moved along. After over seven hours of hiking, they finally had a visual on the town they were sent to survey for Shah. The spot they settled for was great for observing the village, but pretty shitty as far as cover goes. As he got himself set up, Luttrell said that he could not move one muscle because if someone had long-range binoculars trained on them, they'd be spotted. I really appreciate doing a sneaking mission and you're just like fucking hanging out in your BDUs on the fucking side of a hill. Oh man. That's the that's the beginning. That's the beginning of the because I just remember this shit too, is they just look like ass the entire time. The trial notes that they couldn't be seen from below, and there was definitely no human being at eye level or above them. Until a goat herder with an axe jumped off a log immediately above the trail. It was a chance encounter and a completely unintentional one. The farmer dropped the axe as soon as Marcus pulled his rifle on him. He was then joined by his herd of about 100 goats with bells on their necks, along with two other shepherds, one of whom the author estimates to be 14 years old. The older man confirmed upon questioning that they were not Taliban, but their vibes. This shit just this shit is just so fucking crazy that these guys are just up here and like just the weirdest kit. I like I don't know who who they're like. I don't know who did the. Uh, you know what I mean. Um, who did the 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 military oversight? But I remember that from this movie, especially is like they're the, the way that they're kitted up for this mission is fucking crazy. Because I mean, if you just see, this guy's got fucking chocolate chip cami top, and they're in the fucking woods, so like you're just a weird. That's a that's a weird color to be, and they haven't done any sort of like uh, they haven't done any sort of obfuscation. Like so, you would at least try to like maybe cover some of your shit up in like cami netting or some cloth or something, so you just don't look like a guy with a gun in the woods. <laughs> like these dudes aren't fucking blended in at all. Appeared to suggest they were not fans of the Americans either. And this is where things get really fucking weird. Same reason May character the team must come to a consensus yeah. on what to do with the farmers. The author correctly identifies the three of them as unarmed civilians, according to the Geneva Convention. But he then claims that the strict, correct military decision would still be to kill them without further discussion, because we could not know their intentions. How could we know if they were affiliated with a Taliban militia group? He says that although these men, bro, you gotta. If you're gonna try to, if you're gonna try to, you gotta use your diaphragm. You you want to try to do that, boy? You gotta go down here. Because what do you try to do like this? You just you sound fucking a fucking terrible voice. And showed no aggression. They also didn't offer or want a hand of friendship, which, to be clear, is not something covered in the Geneva Convention. I know I said I would where, tell. Where, where was that? Which, to be clear, is not. Geneva Conventions of August, twelve August, nineteen forty nine. But but have you? But my friend, those are the entirety of the Geneva Conventions. You must go all the way back to eighteen. Fucking 45 or some shit. <laughs> Fucking there's oh the new ones don't cover the stuff in the old ones. They're additional conventions, and there's also the Hague conventions. So keep that shit in mind. I still don't know if this is the case, but not uh, something covered in the Geneva Convention. I know I said I would tell the story as Latrell did in his book, but I should note here that the movie actually gives the shepherds walkie-talkies, which they believe confirms them to be Taliban for whatever reason. It's a small detail, but I'll make sense of why it matters a little bit later. In the book's telling, the SEAL in charge of the operation, Mike Murphy, put it up to a vote. Axe said they should kill the men because letting them go would be a death sentence. Danny was indifferent and said he would go with whatever the others wanted. Luttrell said he thought that they had to kill them but was interested in Murphy's thoughts. Murphy said that if they killed them, someone would find the bodies not long after, partially because of the massive goat herd, partially because they wouldn't return home to their family. Oh yeah, and then we get to see the scene. Dude, they're, they're going to let this kid go and he is going to parkour down this mountain like you have never fucking seen someone move in your life. This motherfucker He then goes. says that when the Taliban inevitably find their bodies, they would make this a massive issue in the Afghan media and the U.S. <laughs> will also pile out of seals gun, who will yes. ultimately be charged with murder. Murphy made it clear that if they killed the farmers, they would have to report it and face the charges that come their way. He gives Luttrell the final vote, saying that he will follow whatever decision he makes. Luttrell ultimately decided to spare their lives, a decision he would go on to regret. With that, the team released the farmers, who were then out of their line of sight within 19 minutes. Then took the seals between 40 minutes to an hour to cover the same ground. At this point, they opted to lay low for a while and hope the Taliban had not been alerted. But if the Taliban was on their way, are we not going to see? Are we not going to see the well fucking scene? Found. After about an hour and 40 minutes, Mikey alerted Marcus that between 80 and 100 Taliban were coming down the mountain. Danny was instructed to call for backup. If he oh, come, I guess I can't show it. I can't show it because it'll probably it'll it, it's just it's just gonna fuck with goddamn content ID too much. 
the kid that was glaring at him from the tree like this, the most evil little brown kid ever, you know what I mean? Fucking obviously, like, try to, Mark Wahlberg's like, can we get one just, he just looks looks like a, a little bit more brown? Can we just get one that's like, he's just got to have dark eyes. He just has to, you know what I mean? <laughs> that kid, they let them go, and that kid goes down, and he is literally jumping down, like, 20-foot outcroppings, like, whoop, Doing like jumping rolls in slow motion. Blatch, 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 all the way to the bottom. It's fucking crazy. <laughs> to the point where you should keep it in here because the whole point of that's for like uh, fucking Midwestern white people. Like, hey, shit, I shot him. <laughs> You'd make the radio work, which it hadn't for much of the mission. When he's spotted by a member of the Taliban, the Marcus draws first blood, dirt. killing him and allowing his team to start cutting down the enemy with precision. He remembers thinking that the estimate of 200 hostiles was a lot more accurate than the 80 minimum they had been advised. The firefight went on for what seemed like forever. It's unclear how many members of the Taliban they killed in the fight, but the trial says that after 40 minutes, there were still around 80 men coming after them. When Danny Dietz was shot through the neck and killed, the author estimates there were just 50 to 60 Taliban remaining. After being hit multiple times, Mike Murphy walked into the open to call headquarters on his cell phone and request reinforcements. After making the call, Marcus was unable to reach him and he was killed by the Taliban. At this point- It's not, it's not a cell phone, it's a sat phone. Uh, I don't know it did if he said cell phone that's wild I, that might be the case i don't think it's the case sat phone is what that is it's a satellite phone marcus estimates there are 50 taliban remaining after reaching axe's location the two men were blown apart from one another by grenades knocking marcus unconscious although marcus did not see it happen axe would be killed shortly thereafter when he came to marcus was able to break line of sight and hide from his hiding place he observed what he believed to be hundreds of taliban looking for him what he didn't know at this time was that Murphy's call to headquarters had actually gone through successfully. They responded by packing a helo to support the team, which was immediately shot down by the Taliban, killing everyone aboard, which Marcus calls the... So that actually did happen, if I remember correctly, which is just like a, an absolute fucking freak shot. Um, and I think that was one of the biggest um, single casualty incidents in Afghanistan in the... I think still to this day, to the entirety of the operation. So like that was the largest single like um loss of life incident suffered by our forces in the entirety of the afghan like that was like a day you know what i mean worst special ops catastrophe ever at this point marcus is severely injured and dehydrated wandering around the mountain looking for water he believes he's being followed multiple times but is able to keep them off his tail because he keeps accidentally falling off of cliffs <laughs> after briefly considering killing it happened so many times <laughs> The part before, the part before, uh, where like that guy was like dying, like that, that is most of the big chunk of the beginning of the movie, right? Like, or the entire, that's like, like the first three quarters of the movie, if I remember correctly, or like half, two thirds, first two thirds of the movie is all that. And they do it a bunch. If you saw the one little scene, the guy went Bleh! down, dude, they are falling off the side of fucking mountains in this movie. The whole time. It's like you, you get to a point where like, how are we not on the ground yet? <laughs> Killing some civilians to steal their water. Marcus they is use ultimately a stinger found. Or an R they used an RPG. Um, by a group of locals who after missile. a tense introduction expressed to Marcus that they are not Taliban. The men take him back to their town and protect him from his enemies for several days. While staying with the village, Marcus befriends Mohammed Gulab, who he identifies as the son of a village elder. Gulab and the village band together to protect Marcus under a Pashtun hospitality law, which he describes as an unbreakable commitment to defend a wounded man to the death. This law goes beyond just one man and actually calls every member of the village to take part in the defense of the guest. After the village elder delivers a handwritten message from Latrell to a local U.S. military base, he is ultimately saved a few days later before the Taliban can get their hands on him. As portrayed on the big screen, it all plays like a Greek tragedy. Latrell's Christian soul compelled him to not kill innocent civilians, and it led to the untimely deaths of 20 good men. The fact that Luttrell refused to fight the Taliban on their own brutal terms was ultimately his team's downfall. It's tragic, it's apolitical, war is hell, case closed. That is, if you actually believe this version of events. Which you- Okay, so we're gonna get into something that I will stand by 100%. Never believe a fucking Navy SEAL. Just, if they tell you snow is white, they're lying. Is the quote I heard from someone. Those motherfuckers have uh all every single navy seal has individually saved democracy 20 30 times on their own they are the most story filled individuals ever no navy seal has ever had like a fucking normal day 
they just can't. They can't just like there's not a single Navy SEAL who like became a SEAL and then like just got on a fucking helicopter six times, never really did much, and then like got out after like six to ten years. Not a single fucking one. Every fucking Navy SEAL has literally rode one rocket ship into the stratosphere before halo diving into like a fucking enemy compound and like, I don't know, maybe fucking like half of their wives before blowing the thing up and, and riding a fucking bald Eagle back to America. They are insane. I know there's probably a bunch of normal Navy seals. If one of you guys watch this, it's fine, but you know, it's on your guys. Y'all motherfuckers can't tell your friends to just write one normal fucking book. It's always gotta be the most over the top shit. 200 Taliban. <laughs> I think he got fucking hit by like, they, they just probably got ambushed by like a fucking normal amount. I don't know how you even get that count and fucking got hit by a grenade and he had a concussion and fucking wandered down the hill. <laughs> That's probably what fucking happened. Oh my God. You shouldn't. I mean, Jesse Ventura has been dishonest with me. Je Jesse Ventura is always honest when he's saying almost every single other famous Navy SEAL has been a fucking liar. <laughs> I don't, I just don't believe any of them. Like I, here's the, and I don't feel like I have to either. Cause like, it's just funnier to not believe them and just say like, you guys went through cock and ball torture as the fucking buds is just fucking like literal, just like hardcore German nut torture. And you all feel fucking like, you know, Y'all feel a little bit let down by that, so you just make up stories. Like, if you just tell me that, like, oh, yeah, like, but it's, like, a top-secret mission, I'm just gonna say I don't believe you. <laughs> I just don't believe you. Because, like, the one time you guys all killed fucking Osama Bin Laden, you told everybody. So, like, why, I, like, how the fuck are you not... The, the time, the, the fucking... Do you guys remember the when they killed Bin Laden, the fucking team that was in there immediately broke down and started arguing with each other over and over and over again about who specifically shot bin Laden for like, like who was there? Like they're fucking insane. Rambo was a Navy SEAL documentary. Don't you know? I think Rambo was a uh, green beret. Anyway, I don't think Rambo was a Navy SEAL. The story that Marcus tells us appears to be factually wrong in at least four major ways. We're saying you were too much, yeah. To hear the author tell it, Ahmad Shah was a high-ranking Taliban officer responsible for killing 20 U.S. Marines. He commanded a force of somewhere between 80 and 200 troops and was known to be a close associate of Osama bin Laden. The reality is far less exciting. Ahmad Shah was a small potatoes Taliban upstart with a fighting force of just 10 to 15 men. And Shah could not have killed 20 Marines in the week before the operation because the U.S. only lost two soldiers In the entire country in that time and although shaw had ties to al-qaeda did you just read read that the wrong way and shaw could not have killed 20 marines in the week before the operation because the u.s only lost two soldiers in the entire country in that time dipshit read the fucking part marines that you the highlighted the, the operation you because asshole. the u.s only lost up to that point only five marines had died in combat he's talking about marines not soldiers fuck <laughs> two soldiers in the entire see AI casualties are in the U.S. did not use 20 Marines in the Operation Red Wings. Only two U.S. soldiers or Marines died in Kanar Province in 2005 before Operation Red Wings. In the week before Operation Red Wings, only two soldiers died in the entire country. Up to that point, only five Marines had died in combat since the war started. You gotta say that. You should just read that whole fucking thing out, man. Our country in that time. And although Shah had ties to Al-Qaeda, his association with Bin Laden was an outright fabrication. Although Shah had ties to Al-Qaeda, his association. I don't trust anyone that fucking pulls these up and down this fast. I read the article in the Washington Post with great interest and was stunned by the omission of Marine Corps involvement, the misstatement of the name of the operation, the exaggerated enemy numbers, the outright fabrication that U.S. intelligence officials believed Ahmad Shah was close to Osama bin Laden, and among other items. <laughs> I don't know why I'm taking this guy for serious. Um, I can't remember. Was, was fucking... Was Osama bin Laden in Al Qaeda, or I think he was just side because Al Qaeda is the Taliban is different. Hold on, let me just double check this real quick. He founded Al Qaeda. Okay, okay, sick. According to the FBI.
Oh, uh, okay, 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 that's how this works. It gets confusing. So, yeah, Bin Laden founded Al-Qaeda in 18, 1988 um, after Soviet forces were, were defeated and withdrew from Al- Afghanistan. Bin Laden founded an organization called Al-Qaeda, or the base, to continue the cause of jihad, holy war, through violence and aggression. And that was to basically get all of the other people out. Uh, all of the other non-Arab, or non-fucking, non-Muslim people out of uh, Muslim countries with bin laden was an outright fabrication shah was specifically so targeted weird. because the u.s feared that he could ultimately tell and al-qaeda don't like each other anymore not because he was already a major player I remember correctly it's Having very difficult shah to disappear wouldn't do the taliban any favors but it wasn't exactly a game changer prior to killing these three navy seals ahmad shah was essentially an unknown local taliban aspirant number two as Latrell tells it the most pivotal scene in our story occurs when the seals capture the goat herders and need to make a decision on what is what to be done with them a mudshot, a once unknown local Taliban aspirant, gained instant global fame and saw his ranks, finances, and armaments, including those taken from the SEALs, burgeon, enabling him to renew his attacks with greater intensity and ferocity. Taliban aspirant. Number two. As Latrell tells it, the most pivotal scene in our story occurs when the SEALs capture the goat herders and need to make a decision on what is to be done with them. Murphy, the man in charge, decides the team will hold a vote. As Latrell tells it in his book, Axelson was immediately adamant that they should kill them, Dietz remained neutral, and Luttrell initially felt the same as Axe, but was open to hearing Murphy's perspective. Murphy then conveyed that killing the men would be criminal, and they would need to face the potential repercussions of their decision head-on before ultimately deferring to Marcus for the final decision. Luttrell claims that his Christian soul compelled him to let the men go, a decision he believes cost his friends their lives and would haunt him for years to come. I'm going to say that that never, all of that never happened, would be my guess. Um... What would that be? SOP. Okay, so if you get if you get it depends on exactly what's going on. But like your your missions have certain things you're supposed to do. Okay. So if like your mission is about to get fucking like is your if your mission is to go look at something and not be noticed, the second you can't look at it anymore or you get noticed, the mission's a flop. Right? Unless you have like some sort of secondary thing, and so you need to leave. So if two people stumble on you and you're up in the hills, unless you're like on some sort of, I don't know how deep they were. And I mean, it's Afghanistan. So it, it's not like it's fucking hard to get helicopters in and out, especially if you haven't been sighted. If you catch two guys and you have a, what, I think four Navy SEALs total, so, right? You got a SEAL team of four and you can, you have restraints. You know what I mean? You can just like take them with you. <laughs> you can just abduct them. I know it's not like the best thing to do probably, but like, um, I know, I know that that's happened while we were in country, basically, uh, it wasn't with my guys specifically, but basically like dudes showed up at the wrong place at the wrong time where it was like, yeah, you could, you could shoot them if you wanted, like technically speaking, but everyone's like, I, like, don't do that if you don't have to, because it's the stupidest thing to do. <laughs> just start lighting people up, uh, just because like you can, that's like the dumbest fucking dumbest fucking move to make. So um, you just go and like arrest them for a second. Like, Hey, we're going to like, you know, detain you. And then you take them out of the area and then you just let them go again, <laughs> which I thought of the first time I saw this, I would be like, I'm not going to like let you go because that's too dangerous, but I am just going to like put some handcuffs on you and just be like, Hey guys, like, look, we're going to get into a fucking firefight with these guys. If you go and talk to them, we don't want to shoot you. You want to be chill and just like, we're going to abduct you temporarily. I mean, I know that's still like not the best thing ever, but I don't give a fuck. As far as the solutions of me getting shot or you getting shot, you walking with us for like three miles, you know what I mean? Until we can get fucking like the air comes to get us and then we'll just let you go while we're getting on the helicopter. It's like, you could just do that. Um I don't know why their exfil was like so fucking far away. I don't know anything about the military or the, the, the operations. I would have to read the book, but I got to say the dude talking about his Christian soul. I'm like a 99% sure he just made some of this shit up because it's kind of fucking embarrassing to get like smoked by a goat herder. Cause you're like, you're a Navy SEAL. So like, if you get fucking cracked by some fucking nobody up in the woods, it's like, Oh, you were supposed to be super cool. But then you fucking took like the fattest fucking L that sucks. You know what I mean? And that's what it is. He has the Metal Gear, Metal Gear Solid strategy. Yeah. Put him in a locker. Now, before I try to debunk this, 
it is worth mentioning that Luttrell and his team almost certainly had some kind of discussion this about what their next movie should be. Trilogy starring Mohamed Wahlberg, Gulab, directed the man who saved guy. Luttrell, Boston told Newsweek that other villagers had told them that such conversations occurred. However, we should be extremely skeptical about the author's claim that the lives of these goat herders were put up to a vote, as this isn't exactly common practice among the Navy SEALs. Luttrell's own Wikipedia has a quote from Navy Special Warfare Command spokesperson Steve Rue saying, This is the first time I've ever heard of anything put to a vote like that. In my 14 years of Navy experience, I've never seen or heard of anything like that. Bro, you gotta stop with the voices. Please, Jesus fucking Christ. I, I, what, let me hear this at fucking normal speed. In my 14 years of Navy experience, I've never seen or heard of anything like that. Now, I <laughs> you can't, you gotta stop with that, man. You gotta, just don't ever, that's not for you. You can just read it in your normal voice. Just don't, don't that's not for you. Don't do that anymore. <laughs> I don't love citing Wikipedia, but I'm working with a lot of dead links here, so get off me. But if that doesn't persuade you, Murphy's father said this version of events. It directly contradicts what he told Maureen, myself, and Michael's brother John in my kitchen. He said that Michael was adamant that civilians were going to be released, that he wasn't going to kill innocent people. Michael wouldn't put that up for a committee. The easy response to this story is that Luttrell didn't have the heart to tell Murphy's family that their son was open to the idea of committing a war crime. But it doesn't seem like he expressed it anywhere before his book was <laughs> The wild part is, is his, his buddy that's dead was like, he's like, nah, he really wanted to kill him. Like, could you imagine being that guy's family and like, you see your son <laughs> Being portrayed by the guy that one like scruffy piece of shit dude who plays villains, and he's like, oh, we should just kill him. <laughs> I gotta take his word for it, man. Written, author Ed Derrick, who wrote his own book about the mission, stated in a blog post: Murphy placing something like this up to Tyler. I forget who is it. Delta Force or Green Berets who rescue seals when they're in deep shit. Probably the fucking Marines. Unironically, like uh, I. Delta Force, I can't remember what the fuck Delta Force does. Green Berets is just Army Special Forces. They're just the same sort of thing. So they're just, they do Army shit, whatever the Army needs to do. Um, maybe, like, if they have, if you have somebody that's like in a in part of SOCOM that has a specialty for that situation, but like unironically, like Marine QRF is around the world at all time. We're like the closest thing to actual, like, Team America World Police is United States Marine Corps QRF because we're on two different floats at all times, you know, East Coast, West Coast, in the Pacific and the Atlantic. So, like, if there's an army base where they want to have people come from, and this is a general sense, it's always going to change because of the mission. Like, QRF will be there with, like, a Navy, a Navy, like, fleet. You know what I mean? <laughs> They're going to have, like, one of our fleets or whatever. I can't remember how to break those down. Um, but, you know, it, it's several ships, aircraft carrier with aircraft on it, close support or uh, quick landing, quick takeoff craft with Marines, um, boats, all that sort of shit is going to be waiting in the wings, usually immediately for pickup for that stuff. And all the QRF or um, QRF was quick reaction force. Those people are all trained in like that. It's literally for extraction. It's not like it's the coolest thing ever. Like it's you're a badass. It's kind of like a paramedic same sort of thing like you're just an emergency support personnel you're gonna go in loud as fuck get in there pick them up and go i think it still to this day army rotary wing is like one of the best in and out rotary wing units that you can get like army fucking it's not they don't do black hearts but i think it's army cav um army cav is like the best that you if you want to get uh fucking any sort of extraction that's like in a low area like that uh, that's what you do. These guys are getting pulled out on 46s anyway, it looks like. So that's fuck. Those are Marines anyway. <laughs> it's a Marine, air Marine helicopter, or at least it looks like one. If you're an air winger and you want to correct me, please. I, I can't ever keep track of these fucking things. Uh, but like, it's, it's not like you're a badass. So like, you're the next level of cool. So you've got to go in there and do it. Just everybody has different specialties. The Navy has been kind of like overtaxed recently with the SEALs doing shit that the SEALs weren't really meant to ever be doing because we don't do naval warfare anymore because we like kind of conquered the seas. So like the Navy was Navy SEALs were originally supposed to be like SEALs, like like literally a SEAL in the water next to the thing, like defusing bombs, um, doing sabo shit on boats and doing like infiltration missions and like sabotage and like whatever on docks and ports. And kind of like sneaking up. Whereas like the army people were kind of like on land. 
you know, and like most of the Marine spec ops shit, even going back, I mean, the most you get would be like Marine Raiders and shit. Those are still all the Marine Corps stuff because Marine Corps are the entirety of the Marine Corps is literally a special forces unit. Not like it's like we're super cool or anything. It's special forces kind of like saying like special teams on, in football. Think of it more like that. So you just have highly unique specialized missions, which is why the Marine Corps training off rip is so fucking hard and why you have to do all kinds of different shit, like be able to fucking swim and shoot and climb ropes and slide down ropes and not have a horrible fear of height because you have to be able to do all that shit. Even as a normal Marine, you have to be able to be fucking like dropped in somewhere so that you can file paperwork and like the shittiest paperwork job you've ever had, whatever the fuck do water dog shit, like in a weird special circumstance. Those are your special forces. And so like the Marines thing is being highly mobile infantry, highly mobile up armored infantry. Like they were the closest thing to like a shock troop that the U S army or the U S military has um, army is really for like holding places and slow pushing and taking areas and kind of like the army's real ability, like their real strength is taking an area over and kind of making it unretakable, which they're pretty fucking good at. The Marines are about tip of the spear stuff, right? But it's like a spear still. You're holding it. So the Marines don't really kind of peel off from their own main forces very often. Our spec special forces inside our things, our SOCOM guys are mostly like, as I recall, um, snipers, uh, long, long range reconnaissance from a base. So you can just walk out. 75 150 350 miles something stupid like that and then you come back you know what i mean and Jake, you go check the stuff and you have like special techniques and stuff i think the green berets if like they're not lying and shit because you never know they're the ones that do more of the like tier one operator type stuff which you have to do because it kind of makes sense with the army's mission. So like yours is like, okay, so we have an area that we're taking over or we're going to take over. They're specialized for doing like, you know, insertion ops, doing cointel, uh, doing fucking fifth column shit, going in there, building up like, or destabilizing areas or building up fucking allies, that kind of daily work with the fucking CIA. If I remember, I'm half talking out of my ass on this, trying to remember what I know about it. Most of it's secret. Who gives a fuck shit? They're probably making it up anyway. I've met CIA spooks. I met a fucking, I met a literal fucking <laughs> enhanced interrogation expert who told me at length uh, when I finally, I fucking kind of talked her, I talked it out of her because she had to sit in my box that I was fucking in charge of, like that I had to like, she had to wait. And I was like, so what do you do? And kind of like, I talked her out of it because I'm still me, but in uniform. So she didn't take me seriously enough. And I guess she, she talked, she chattered with me. And I was like, so you like, do you torture anybody? And she was like, no one would ever torture anyone. That's the stupidest thing. <laughs> she was like, no one's ever tortured anyone. Fucking, this is the stupidest thing you can do. Anyone that says you should do it should be fucking thrown right in prayer. <laughs> She's pissed about it. <laughs> it's not hard to find them. Like if you go overseas, like they have to stop at your base. It's not like they just go to, you know, fancy. It's not like a movies where you just get off a plane, you know, in Abu Dhabi and then go to a fancy restaurant and then find out that they tried to poison you or some shit like that doesn't happen. They're just like fucking desk wanks that actually like work out a bit. Like they do Pilates and then they go to Iraq wearing fucking, you know, pretty clean, like well put together. What do you call them? Strike plates. Oh, fuck. I can't remember the f trauma plates, trauma plate, you know, plate carrier type things with very little protection. They're wearing white, tan whatever cut off at the mid shoulder polo shirts and fucking button ups and stuff they've all got somehow they get the same glasses same haircut you know they got a bunch of them have they'll have a little one piece ear thing on the face talk to you like this hi hello can you uh help me marie um i mean i need to get to a place or kind of like blah 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 walking with like a little crew of people <laughs> because like they have to still like do cool like cia shit but like also like they're literally just there because they have to sleep in one of the Connex boxes and then like shit in the same dog shit shitters that we use and eat at our chow hall because like that's where you get food if you're an American. Like you don't get to go. You don't get to go to like the Four Seasons fucking terrorist edition to have like food with some hot, scary lady in a fucking red dress. You got to hang out with me like, hey, what's up? What are you doing here in a polo shirt? <laughs> 
it's always the best. Like I've seen operate operate like tier one operators, the cool guys. I've just seen them because like when they're not doing the cool stuff, they go to the same airports that we go. So like it's us sitting. By the way, the first place I ever found a Warhammer 40k novel. Shout out all my TTRPG people. The first place I ever found a Warhammer 40k novel. One of you guys probably even know which one it is. Um. It was, uh, they land on a jungle and they find out the jungle's trying to eat them and there's orcs there too. It's fucking space marine stuff. And I found a marine thing. I'm like, I'm going to read this shit. And it was fucking great. It slapped. But we had to wait. There's like, basically like squads, right? This is a, at a fucking uh, airport. I can't remember which fucking air in and out. This was on the, one of the times we had to go on a weird one. Did we have to go to fucking California real quick before going overseas? I feel like it looked exactly like the one in California, but it, no... It was the Cherry Point waiting area. That's I'm I don't know why I'm thinking it was California. I think they just they look similar. It's like the Cherry Point waiting area because you have to get on a big civilian plane because you can't fly the scary military planes over the ocean into like Stuttgart. You like I mean you can, but like you generally don't. You just get on a big nice 747, 757, whatever. And so we're sitting in there and they have big squad areas, so to say. So it's like fucking 250 seats, right? For your like your chunk of your company. And so, like, we're filling up two of them and then, like, a little bit of another one. And then there's, like, an empty one. And, like, in the other one that we're half filling up is another guy that's going to be riding with us. And he is literally just in his mid-30s, bald, sunglasses, full beard with a plate carrier on, like, just basically, like, reading a book with a fucking machine gun. Like, you know, not a machine gun, but, like, a fucking, like fully kitted out fucking m4 between his legs and like his like packs and stuff and he's got like a little knife <laughs> like there he is he just has to sit in the same airport as us so it's like hey there he is it really is i like the, the military is very easy to demystify unironically because it's it's kind of like hollywood in the same way where people are like i don't quite get it but like i know how the i know the stars and you're like well they, you know mark Wahlberg's not really all he's cracked up to be in real life and like, I wasn't like a cool guy. I was on the staff. You know what I mean? I was just a fuck. I was a gaffer. <laughs> I was a best boy. <laughs> Tyler, did you ever move nukes around? Oh, fuck no. I didn't, I didn't do anything fucking cool. The, the most, the coolest thing I moved around technically would be uh, regimental ops for fucking 8th Marine Regiment because I was on his personal security detail because somebody had to ride on top of one of the Humvees. <laughs> And I was getting out soon, so they were like, hey, that's what you can fucking do. That exact scenario is like 20% of novels, not gonna lie. Fair enough. So when the U.S. does a military invention in a foreign country, it's the Marines who show up first. As a main force, generally, yeah. Usually we're on the ground first. Um... A lot of times, if you just think about it, like, because we, the Navy moves us. So, like, the naval boats will get into position, and the Navy's got the best fixed wing because the Navy's got the fucking carriers. If you want the Air Force in another country, they have to either visit from America or someone has to go and establish an airport in that country or take one over. So, we go over with the boats. We're on the boats that have the planes. We have the boats that have the other little smaller boats. And then the, sometimes the smaller boats have an additional smaller boat yet. Um, then you get on those or whatever, or AAVs, you get dropped off on the land, or maybe you go and fucking get whatever in there. If sometimes it'll be army, army fucking airdrops, uh, there, that's like their thing is to be airdropped, airdropped in like the army will be like with a thousand little fucking parachutes and shit. Um, generally you don't want to do that unless you have like a big strike force ready so they'll kind of come in after and that's like once the army starts doing those big airdrops and i don't know i think they i think they they fly those from friendly countries right they go out drop come back i i can't i can't i wasn't in the army those are like when we've started really taking shit they'll drop all that we'll go set up some stuff and then the army will make it fucking nice and then like you can stay there right cuz they'll drop they'll drop a fucking whole city into an area you know fucking generators cars fucking people water food food cooking facilities trucks the whole fucking nine yards the army will get it there and fucking establish like a big fucking setup area they can still fight too like it's not like they, they can't do it or they wouldn't be used for it in certain circumstances but like yeah the marines are definitely like what you would just that's what you use them for because we're armored infantry 
essentially, and like ship to shore infantry. So you get over there, maybe we have to fly over a country or two or like whatever, you know? Um, and that's like on initial insertion after that things kind of like change, but usually, yeah, you'll have the army will be in an area and maybe they'll do like little pushes in and out and stuff with the way that they operate. But generally like you'll have the Marines then going way deeper and like doing punch, punch out fucking operations, which is kind of like why the, the army had like its area in Iraq. And then like the Marines were fucking all up through Anbar where the fighting was. Because that's like what we get sent out to do. It's not it's not like me diminishing anyone's fucking impact. I'm just telling you like why things are the way that they are. Um, that's why the SEALs get put up ahead of stuff too, because the SEALs are also Navy. So the SEALs operate off the same boats that we do, which is why you run into them all the time for different things. They go super duper duper deep off of uh, from naval vessels and from like, you know, whatever friendly bases and stuff we have. Because we have so many bases that standard operating procedure isn't the case as much anymore because you can fly the army off of any of our bases. The Air Force can fly the Air Force out of a base. But when you're trying to get onto the ground, usually you will send the Marines first and fucking and get it. Which is one of the reasons like we did the island hopping campaign in Iwo Jima because that's specifically what Marines are built for. On the ship, off the ship, on the ship, off the ship, next place, next place, next place, penetrate hard, like penetrating super fucking hard in positions um, using close support, calling in naval fucking airstrikes, calling in Marine fixed wing, Naval fixed wing, and doing fucking like slow, slutty, slow, steady punch-ins um, over the, over the course of time. Whereas the army was unironically better suited up for the most of what you needed from Europe. You needed a lot of, a lot of people to spread out over a line and push the Germans back while also maintaining the areas where you were and creating like hard points to move up the next aspect of the maneuver. But then like also the best thing about the American military is everybody can also just not do their jobs very often and do it very well too. Uh, Tyler, have you ever seen anything from that Spec Ops guy, Mike Glover? His optimal room clearing is wild. Room clearing is insane. Uh, I don't, I, I think, I, I don't even want to get into it. Anymore. That's like one of the things that kind of like, I was just done with TikTok because the 12 year old kids, that 19 year old kids that have never been in the military, but they, like their parents let them buy a fucking rifle and like a laser dot and none of them know how to aim the rifle. And they're like, you couldn't shoot somebody in the face from a hundred meters away, like moving, like, Wait, you can't do that? Like, I I know it's not that hard because it's 100, 100 meters is like the easiest shot ever. They all fucking like aim with like lasers and they just burr, 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 fucking like spray and pray. And they're like, oh, this is room clearing. Room clearing at its hardest. Like, dude, room clearing is a fucking, it's a joker's game. If you get sent in and room, sent in to clear rooms, you are the least valuable person in your unit. I'm just telling you that right now. No one likes you. <laughs> if you're the first person going in rooms room clearing is a fu- is psychotic you shouldn't do it you just shouldn't do it just tell them to come outside <laughs> just wait them out siege <laughs> room, room, there's nothing you can do that will that will like make room clearing safe or 100 percent like you can win there's a lot of things you can do to be like i can, i have a one basically like a 99 percent win chance as like a sniper right I can set up so that I am basically literally fully in control of the situation and I cannot be, I cannot be countered. Room clearing is a fuck you the second the door opens. Every time, anybody that says they're good at room clearing or like they're confident with it, like I could clear any room, I could like, I could survive. Like anyone that just says I could survive clearing more than like a few rooms and they're not a fucking like a SWAT officer who's like, yeah, I survived because I have a full bulletproof shield and we walk in there after gassing the room turning off all the lights and then using strobes to blind everybody. And then we slowly move forward and fucking like (laughs) beetle them to death. Everyone that they're running in there with like plate carriers and shit. You're done. Sorry. That's not how it works. That's not, they they fucking know that you're going to do that. So like the, the fucking main thing, they'll just fucking sit. Like you can't look at this, this thing. You can't see the entirety of a room when you go into it. And it's not a video game. You can't shoot while you're moving to the left. It's just like very difficult. You can possibly do it kind of at close range. I guess that's why the lasers, you know, whatever it is, what it is, but you can't get like steady shots. And also you have to do this much. You have to like, so if you just go in 
and you look left and they're right, statistically speaking, the guy that's got a trained shot is just pop, 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 pop. Then you hope that you, because you were the first one in, you're, man, you're the one man. <laughs> Sorry, bud. Uh, you're the one man. Two man, statistically speaking, maybe a 30% chance, maybe a 70% chance of hitting that guy that aimed at you. But also, like, these motherfuckers would be like, I can clear rooms, I can clear rooms. Like, what if they shoot through the wall? <laughs> what if they shoot through the wall? What do you mean? What if they're? What if they just knock holes in the ceiling and then they shoot you when you come in the door? What, what do you mean? <laughs> what, how do you get to the building when they're shooting at you from the windows? What, what do you mean? No, I, I walk to the room. It's a th- we walk to the room and then I go in the room and I shoot the little metal. I, I shoot the little metal thing. Ping, 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 ping. That's how you do room clearing. Like, okay, okay, honey. What if they have a bomb on the door? You're fucking so stupid. I'm a room clearing expert. Okay. <laughs> you know how I know you haven't done it much? Because you're fucking alive. <laughs> and confident. You're one of the funniest, the funniest fucking things. You have to do room clearing in the military. It's insanely dangerous. Insanely dangerous. There's no good way to do it. There's no, because there's, there's, you just see the people when they do it. Like you're running into rooms that are like empty. Just think of your room that you're in right now. Looking around. You know, carpet on the ground, maybe like a loose tile, un- unaccounted for tables and like drapes and shit. You know, okay, the rooms are full of stuff, packed full of shit. Um, and there's just no accounting for what you're going to see in there. And you have to have people not be freaked out because that's how you just get civilians killed. Because civilians, by the way, will be in the rooms way more than the enemies will. That's just the case. Um If you have to go into like clear houses, a lot of the times it's like repeat clearing houses to like clear a neighborhood not because you actually think people are in there once you think people are in there you know like the clearing is about being as safe as you can while you're hopefully proving the room is empty because there's just literally no way to safely do it if there's someone in there if you know someone's in there that's an entirely different fucking like setup maybe you do flashbangs or you just fucking smoke them out with a literal smoke grenade because uh, let me tell you you guys want to know a secret Smoke grenades outside, bunch of smoke. Wind blows it away. Smoke grenade inside is smoke inside. I mean, I'll let you put that together for yourself. Talk about people like I know all the possible war crimes. Um, it's it's that's not OC gas. <laughs> I was trying to mark a position. I've never done anything like that. I've gotten gassed with one of those things before and I fucking almost literally almost died because I didn't have a gas mask on and we were doing marking and I (laughs) fucking literally just there's just no that there's just only fucking solid colored particulate in the air and no oxygen. Um, You just have to you have to fucking smoke them out or something. But the best advice I ever got, the guy was like, all right, Marines, this is fucking like 29 palms. Now we are we've gone over a room clearing. And this is about being safety, but let me, let me ask you, what is the best way to clear this building? If you know there's a 100% chance there's enemies in here, um, it's two stories tall. I gave us kind of like the, the curriculum vitae to distract us. Two stories tall, there's probably about 20 guys in here. How, how do you clear this building? Um, and, and we all gave like answers and shit. And he goes, no, you call a bulldozer. Because <laughs> there is no way... To go inside a building and that has more than a guy or more in it and be able to out outmaneuver a trap that's set up for you. It's crazy. It's kind of like saying, like, I have to set off bear traps. I don't know where they are and I have to use my leg. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's why the actual SWAT people and stuff have big ass ballistic body armor and shit. They use gas. They turn out the fucking lights. They're doing all sorts of sh- climbing down the fucking walls and going through the windows because you want to know everything you can about the inside of that place. You don't fucking, you don't fuck around with it for a second. But, but my shooters don't have wall penetration. Dude, you know what's crazy that people don't even account for? Cause it's, it, you can't do it in like real shooters. You know what bullet slide is or reflection? You know, like you have ricochet, right? Ricochet, bullet bounce, hard thing. Sometimes bullets slide. That that's crazy, right? Um, if you have a wall that has a soft covering on it, something like plaster, that's not particularly hard, but like it's got the bullet will treat it like water, right? 
because it's kind of the same consistency at that point, and it will actually slide on the wall until it pops off, which doesn't mean which means like you could stand here and think, okay, somebody's shooting. I'm gonna do fucking like billiards math, right? If it, if it can't bounce off at that angle, so I should be safe. Wrong. It, it won't bounce off. It'll hit the wall, gouge, travel along it, and bounce off. Bullet slide. You can't like rely on it. It's not like a thing like, oh, I know how to curve the bull. You know what I mean? Floors, same thing. Bullet slide. It'll slide on it. Like that. Dig off and then fly up. Insanity. Bounce. Roll. Tumble. Spin. Fuck, bullets can do anything they fucking want to once you put them in the air. It's a, it's a it's a metal football that's been fired off of a goddamn explosion, and it's this big, and it's just gonna do whatever the fuck it wants to do. Like this, <laughs> hits people in the fucking neck, comes out of their fucking kneecap. It, it, it's insanity. Like, dude, just the thing. Here's the thing: if you have anyone that's like, I can confidently like, I would be fine. Any combat situation, I'd be fine. Okay, that guy's gonna get people killed. <laughs> The fucking safest combat situation ever is the one that you're not in that can't get to you. That's fucking, that's the fact. Occupied buildings, less than a JNAM. And they had to stop fucking Marines and stuff from using novel explosives. Those got illegalized. Goddamn, goddamn. The vote almost certainly did not happen. I'm so certain that I don't it did know not how happen, we fucking but I'm going to just say that it this. did not happen. After reading this in Lone Survivor, I re-interviewed the Marines who had intimate knowledge of Luttrell's after-action report. All those I re-interviewed... Because... I fucking knew it. I told you because the Marines probably picked the Marines probably picked him up because <laughs> it's just like, it's just one of the jobs that the fucking Marines do. It's QRF and fucking recall or, or recovery. Dude, stated that nothing in the report said anything about a vote. After rewatching the movie, I was surprised to see they actually retcon this entirely and have Murphy authoritatively decide that the SEALs will not be killing any civilians, which is a dramatic difference from the book in which Luttrell is given the deciding vote, which Murphy follows. This change could be attributed to Peter Berg. You said I can't throw a hologram to check rooms like in seals. Rainbow Six. But no. it seems at least equally likely that this version of events... Uh, not, like, without reservation, by the way, you know how like re like Rainbow Six always feels fucking defender-sided? It's because it is. Like, just real life, just it is. <laughs> defender-sided like crazy, man. It's just more accurate than what we got in the book. Number three. What how civilians tend to forget the, the, the story other guys a human with a brain and roughly the same intellect as you because the team warfare. often oh, yeah. free the goat herders. It's, it's, it's just the shadow diversity. Like I would move this way. Latrell states that had but they not guns. followed the rules of engagement, that his friends would still be alive today. But we actually have a surprising amount of alternative explanations for how they might have been found. Now, it's important to understand that the mission was originally planned by the Marines, who had intended to enter the mountains on foot. When the Navy SEALs took Walk. over, they insisted on going in via helicopter. The Marines believed that this was a bad idea because, I don't know if you know this, the mountains of Afghanistan are not a lively place. There is no nightlife in the Hindu Kush. There is a distinct lack of helicopters in the neighborhood. An entrance this conspicuous was bound to draw unwanted attention to the SEALs. So they offered a compromise. They would fly helicopters over the region for a few days so that the actual insert wouldn't seem so out of the ordinary. On the day itself, they would stage multiple false inserts as well to throw the locals off their scent. <laughs> Damn SEALs. This is so worth it for me. I didn't know any of this extra details. Fucking, of course, the Marines are like, let's walk. <laughs> you're gonna do an observation mission, and you're gonna have you're gonna fly in on a helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking amazing, dude. Despite these false inserts, Luttrell actually considers it a possibility they could have been seen at this point, as he notes seeing two sources of light that could have been lanterns or fires in the area. Muhammad Gulab, the villager that saved Luttrell, felt very strongly that this is why the team was compromised, saying that the Taliban and other locals had heard the SEALs come in and started searching for them in the morning. You might be thinking, yeah, but it would have been hours before morning, so how could they have possibly tracked them down? And hey, that's a great question. It would, in fact, be very difficult to track them down, unless they left some evidence behind showing exactly where they had been dropped off, like a giant rope, for example. Now, Luttrell mentions in his book that the team was baffled as to why the rope had been severed when they got off the helicopter, but the idea here is that in a covert operation, you want to pull the rope back up so that there's no evidence of SEALs being dropped off, whereas in an active combat zone, you'd rather sever the rope so that the helicopter doesn't linger in the air for too long and get shot down. 
In this case, the mission planners had never actually discussed what should happen to the rope. Did they want to have the helicopter linger and risk being seen by the locals, or cut it and leave behind a huge piece of evidence? The crew chief, having not received direction otherwise, instinctively severed the rope because he was used to working direct action operations. Luttrell says that he and the team were ultimately able to hide the rope, but he neglects to mention how fucking huge this thing was. When tightly coiled, it would be around the size of three suitcases stacked on top of each other, making it difficult to hide and yeah, so Fast Rope is big, by the way. You guys know about Fast Rope. Fast Rope is fucking huge. It's like this gigantic, thick rope that you slide down. The other reason that you cut it off is because it can get caught, and it's attached to the fucking aircraft. It, it's attached to it, and it's insanely thick. Like, you can fuck it. It's supposed to support multiple fully armored human beings sliding down the cocksucking thing at once. You just lay it on your lap, right? Bloom, slide. If you've never gone down a fast rope, it's a lot of fun. Exploding knees. Um, they cut them off or they detach them and shit like that so that they don't get caught on stuff. Um, that's one of the things. And if they like, if there's any risk of it too, uh, because it's also because it's so big, you have to haul it up. Heavy as shit. You know what I mean? So you gotta pull a fucking rope back in. Um, I, yeah, I think you, you, you cut them most of the time, right? Uh, I think they might even dislocate. I, I can't remember. I never had to fuck with fast rope other than like basic. Um, that wasn't in basic training, was it? Was training ropes? Or was that just, was that, uh, was that fucking um, SOI? I can't remember. I just had to do basic ropes training and it was super, super fucking easy. Uh, that was the day you got to see people freak the fuck out. Um, if you guys don't know, like there's like, what is it called? Static hang. Um, there's, there's two. There's one where you go down and you bounce, repel, bup, 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 bup. and then there's the other one where you fucking free hang, repel, like that. You don't do that one, even though it has a smaller rope. You tend not to do that one out of helicopters very often because it requires you to have an entire fucking harness on because you have to use the harness to slow yourself down as opposed to the, ha the fast rope, which you can slide down and then go, right? Impossible to carry around with them. This was a big enough deal that Lieutenant Has anyone Long ever been hit by a flying rope? People have been hit by, the mission been hit by the fucking helicopter. Avoid being compromised. <laughs> you know what I mean? Instead, they continued on. As Luttrell tells the story himself, the SEALs bumbled their way through the mountains and repeatedly offered up opportunities to be seen by the enemy along the way. It's said that an enemy could have been easily lurking and watching them, and that after walking for about four and a half miles, they nearly walked into someone's front yard. Because it was late, it's pretty unlikely the team could have been seen without night vision goggles, but not long afterwards, the team steps right out into the open and became unmissable. It's entirely possible that someone could have reported them to Shah and his men at some point during the trek, even if the rope had not been found. But whether it was a giant rope or these guys dicking around the mountains for hours, it seems as though the seals had been found out. Unironically, I would have brought the rope with me and just told any Afghan that I ran into, like, hey, be chill. I'll give you this gigantic, free, very expensive rope. And they'd be like, fuck off. I can have that. A hundred foot of rope, dude. I can unweave that into a normal size rope. It's like fucking 400 yards long. Like, yeah, 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 buddy. That's all for you. <laughs> Before they came across the goat herders. Lieutenant Long reported receiving word from the SEALs late in the morning of the 28th. The team had been soft compromised by the goat herders. Ed Derrick writes that, Then after what seemed along like just a few minutes from the soft compromise call, the next- So like, here's the other thing. Are these guys- This is crazy because this doesn't sound like a fucking like actual like- This doesn't sound like any sort of normal recon mission. Like this sounds foobar off the fucking- off the- off rip. Because, like, I have friends who were fucking snipers, right? It was, like, I play fucking video games with. Also, just like me, does not give a fuck. Yeah, I was literally sni scout sniper recon. Fucking, he did all the cool shit. He's like, it's fucking lame and it's fucking gay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> fucking crawling around and stuff. And they have to crawl. They crawl when they're trying to sneak up because you got to. You know, you know that you guys remember Metal Gear Solid 4? This? It's that shit, you know what I mean, for miles, and you're covered in stuff. So, like, these guys are just guaranteed going to get fucking caught because it's just easy to see people walking around in the fucking fields. Oh, yeah, that moment all the time, man. Walking around at night sucks, too. I've fallen in so much shit. Except the recon Literally teams the times. echoed through the room. Contact. We're hard compromised. Now, it's worth noting here that Derek says that the gap between being found by the goat herders and found by the Taliban felt like a few minutes. Not necessarily that it was a few minutes, but this still feels drastically different from Marcus's account which suggests that the team moved for about 40 minutes and then hid for an hour and 40 minutes before being found. Wong's account appears to be supported by the locals. 
Remember how I mentioned that Muhammad Gulab had heard from other villagers that the Americans had discussed the fate of the goat herders? Those villagers heard that from the Taliban, who had already found the Americans at this point. They simply waited for the Americans to let their prisoners go before attacking. If this Based is true, Taliban. it seems likely. It refutes the entire thesis of the book. The goat herders could not have possibly ratted the seals out to the Taliban because they already found them. Marcus and his team killing these civilians would have done absolutely nothing to save anyone. They were dead the minute they let go of the rope, they just didn't know it yet. Number four. Once Marcus and his team were found by the Taliban, I'll the tell you what, would have you believe that even just finding that out, my earlier fucking, my earlier solution is just 100% accurate. Is it not? You should just fucking just clap them up and fucking walk back to the exfil. If you're fucking compromised, just, you're done. There's thing as a soft compromise in an unfriendly nation. They're going to fucking tell on you. Like, you're trying to go look at their neighbors. They're not going to be fucking cool with you. You know what I'm saying? Started picking bad guys off one by one. Isn't that what happened with Black Hawk Down? It was just a very, very badly prepared off. As I recall, yeah. In the book, he says that the force was probably closer to the 200 than the 80 minimum that they had been advised. In probably subsequent speeches, even after Lone Survivor came yeah. out. Yeah, you haven't lived. You haven't lived until you've low crawled. <laughs> <laughs> you don't even know that there's a different types. High crawl, low crawl, belly crawl. The trial would stick to the 200 number. Which is weird, because he told the Today Show it was like 80 to 100. You were attacked after you let them go. Yes, sir. By between 80 and 100 members of the Taliban. Yes, sir. And it was nasty. Yes, sir. And his after-action report immediately following the attack said it was just 20 to 30. And look, I get it. When the bullets are flying, things can get confusing. And it's understandable that one could overestimate exactly how many guys are shooting at you. But it does seem at least a little bit suspicious that Latrell repeatedly contradicted himself by such a wide margin, right? Like, he jumped from 20 to 200. This alone is enough to make me skeptical of his figures here. A man's trying to tell a fish story. Latrell is once again contradicted by Mohammed Gulab, who heard the battle take place. According to Newsweek, Gulab said the battle was short-lived and scoffs at the idea that 35 Taliban were killed in the battle. Perhaps more surprisingly, Latrell's numbers are also contradicted by Marines involved in the mission. Patrick Kinzer, a Marine infantry officer who helped plan the operation, called the trial's claims exaggerated nonsense, saying that there weren't 35 base, enemy fighters in all of- Base fucking LT Kinzer, bro. <laughs> base fucking LT. Oh, he's probably working with them. He's probably a fucking captain or a major. Base fucking Captain Kinzer, bro. What a, what a fuck, what a tremendous fuck, what based fuck, dude. Oh my God. I do. How about it? How about it, dude? Am I, is it? I'm not special. I'm any other Marine. <laughs> Tyler, you're uniquely a dickhead. Then you see these guys, this is other Marines talking about this dude supposed to be like, he's a fucking war hero. Like, he's a fucking lion piece of shit. This fucking moron. Talk about, like, what, there's 500 people down there? Fuck that dumbass. <laughs> That's fucking funny as shit. Oh, he read the after. I've been at the location where he was ambushed multiple times. I've had Marines wounded there. I've been in enough firefights to know that when shit hits the fan, it's hard to know how many people are shooting at you. But there weren't 35 enemy enemy fighters in all of Korangal Valley that day. Oh, they're in Korangal? I don't get it. But it would be, like, here's the other thing, is it's hard to get a fucking count. I don't know why you would think it, but also, like, sometimes, especially, like, in Afghanistan, because shit's so fucking mountainous, like, you can't get that many people. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, going after you, like, of or Korangal Valley that day. Like, 200 people is a crazy amount. Like, 80 people is a large amount. That's, like, I just think about it like this, like, in rep, that's, like, two like whatever two to four classrooms of of fighters right you know like if you're thinking about it like that so like do multiple squads of people just all together like oh, just attacking these random people like how did you even fucking organize that like it would be the biggest that's one of the biggest assault forces that they have going like in the taliban like at the moment you know what i mean for these According four guys at derrick intelligence reports pegged the number of enemy combatants around eight to ten Videos shot by the Taliban during the attack, which were later analyzed and authenticated by U.S. military intelligence, appeared to show just eight men ambushing the SEALs, including Ahmad Shah. The generous way to interpret such a video would be to suggest that less enemy fighters could be seen because the SEALs had killed so many of them. However, Newsweek reports that Andrew McManus, a former Marine colonel who helped draw up the mission Another was Marine. Seen during the search and recovery effort for the dead SEALs, says there were no reports of any enemy casualties. This is backed up by Gulab, who says that the villagers and the American military who searched the mountains after the attack found no evidence of any Taliban casualties. Gulab even claimed that when he found Luttrell, he still had 11 magazines of ammunition on him, which is exactly how many he claims he packed in Lone Survivor. This would appear to suggest oh, that Marcus is not just exaggerating the scale of the fight that occurred, but that he did not participate in the fight at all. 
So to summarize the bullshit so far, he was wrong about the importance of the mission, he was wrong about how the story's pivotal conversation shook out, he was wrong about why he was attacked, he was wrong about how many people- Bro, you don't even have to say wrong, you can just say lied. You just say lied at this him, point. And he was wrong about how the fight played out. Hell, now is as good a time as any to mention that he even got the name of the mission wrong. It's Operation Red Wings, dipshit. Not Red Wing, two words, plural. Like the hockey team. How do you put this on the cover of your book? Multiple editions. How do you, like, didn't anyone think, why wouldn't you, fuck it, it doesn't matter, because as- I'll tell you why, that's a good old fashioned, that's a good old fashioned, uh, reference smudge. Just, if you misspell it a little bit, it's harder to look up the actual one. <laughs> Mind-numbingly stupid, as that is, I need to address why this book was written so you can understand just how wrong this thing can get. It's easy to look at this story and all of its glaring holes and just conclude that this is about one sad man looking at the most traumatic time of his life and trying to save some face or something. And it's entirely possible that that's exactly what happened here. But I actually think that this book and its purposes- Oh no, bit... he's on fucking Rogan. Damn it, look, he, mu he mutated into a th The longer he stayed out, the more thummy he got. Why, why, he's, he's starting to get Mackie shaped. More sinister than that. This isn't just about protecting Marx's reputation as a seal. It's about war crimes and how you should feel about them. It doesn't take long for Luttrell to start whining about how much more brutal US forces need to be in Afghanistan. Less than 40 pages into his book, he begins to complain about the, quote, ever intrusive rules of engagement. They are very specific. We may not open fire until we are fired upon or have possibly identified our- Bro, also, please back up for your mic. You're popping your, popping your peas. Just get a fucking, get a, get a, get a, get a fucking- Get a pop filter. Enemy and have proof of his intentions. He thinks this is all very gallant, but he immediately counters these rules by saying, but what if we'd been fired upon in the previous days of patrol? And our very This nearly dude's fucking been through it. I don't know who the fuck this guy is. I love these fucking hats. I would start wearing one of these. Exhausted and maybe slightly scared. And I'm not going to beat around the bush on this one. This is fucking awesome. Like, he can't even commit to making the case that he's a small bean or whatever. He can't just say, what if I'm scared? He has to qualify it. What if I'm a little scared? Maybe. I mean, like, if you're going to go down this route, you have to go all in. What if they're scared? What if they're petrified? You don't get to kill anyone because you're maybe slightly scared. Get real. Fuck off, dude. This is when Luttrell lays the deaths of the three seals at the feet of the three goat herders that he claims to have spared, saying that, I can say from first-hand experience that those rules of engagement cost the lives of three of the finest U.S. Navy SEALs who have ever served. They would not have died right then, and in my view, would almost certainly have been alive today. It's a pretty bold claim. I could just put the whole... Why do you put some quotes up and then not read the whole quote? And then you had another quote that you read the whole quote, but then it wasn't all on the screen. <laughs> and why, as discussed, why do do almost these? certainly a lie, but it's also a small piece of this book's campaign. His cheekbones to his jaw is crazy proportioning. I was thinking the same thing. My man's got some like... The author claims that the entire business of modern war crimes as identified by the liberal wings of politics in the media began in Iraq and have been running downhill ever since. It's possible that if the author had skimmed a book about Vietnam, he might get the vibe that the U.S. Yeah, was doing really criticism for committing war crimes long before the U.S. invaded Iraq on incredibly flimsy grounds. Which, by the way, uh, Luttrell unequivocally defends in this book. Uh, he actually takes on the impossible task of trying to convince the reader that Iraq had direct ties to Al-Qaeda, something so ridiculous that even Wikipedia calls it a conspiracy theory. But this whining about liberals is a recurring theme throughout the book. Every time Luttrell starts talking about killing innocent people, he starts complaining about the liberal media's feelings on it and suggesting they are complicit in the enemy's attempts to make the war effort look inhumane. He writes that, If we did shoot a couple of them, they would be on their cell phones with the speed of 10,000 gigabytes, direct to the Arab television station Al Jazeera. And that, <laughs> The media in the States Old would school. crucify us. Was there ever a greater uproar than the one that broke out over Abu Ghraib? And look, I can sympathize to some extent. Have I told you guys I've been to Abu Ghraib? I gotta talk about that again sometime. That's actually where I got fucking, that's actually where I got gassed out by that fucking goddamn... Smoke grenade. I think it was like 15 fucking smoke grenades. It was well after that shit happened when I was high school and there was no one left in there anymore. Like the whole prison got fucking emptied out and we were part of the changeover committee with the uh, committee. I don't know how to even say it, but like, I don't know. There was 20 Marines, maybe total, including our officers on the base. And we changed it over to the Iraqi army and gave it to them. But I've been to Abu Ghraib. It is the creepiest. It's the creepiest fucking place on earth. Creepiest. With the idea that in the fog of war, soldiers can at times be put in an ambiguous situation where they might need to make split second decisions that could ultimately lead ambiguous. to good, innocent people being killed. Oh, God. I haven't, I've never seen a picture of these. I want to show you guys something. 
This is what's gonna kill me. Need to make split second decision. This is what's gonna actually have killed me from the Iraq War. Good. That right there. Anyone know what that little? Anyone knows what this is? I'll give you a dollar. Here's another one. Does anybody know what this fucking thing is? This might as well be me, dude. This looks like this actually kind of. This is on my last deployment. This is kind of what Al Assad area looks like. This is a chameleon. Um, these little these little domes. Uh, they might have a different name for it, but this little fucker right here. Um, obliterates all of the signals that like exist in the area. It is just putting out every kind of like radiation that we transmit signals on at once so that it can block all of it. We turn these things on. So, but it only has like a, it has a limited range. Like this chameleon right here only covers like this much because it's, it's like high intensity, but it, it bleeds out so that you can still use all of your stuff and your comms equipment basically there's like a fucking hole in this that like it all it stops on little start bits and then you put like your 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 changing signal and so it's bouncing around in there um so that it can go past it and you can actually talk and if you fuck it up or like you you don't have your clock set right basically it won't fucking work but i was a turret gunner that's what this guy's in right now this video is a dude in a turret gun by the way does it say I don't, was this actually in fucking? Does it still say the thing? Twenty twenty three. This is this is some fucking this is some fucking Lance Cooley like me up here. I know this 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 is the turret with the fucking goddamn. If I <laughs> another bored person super chatted five dollars. Thank you, buddy. Like, what do you mean by it being a creepy place? It was. Fucking terrifying. I, remind me, and I will tell you guys about Abu. Abu Ghraib is not like I have. I have to have hours because that's got the ghost story in it. It's got the story about the crows. It's got the Scooby Doo op story. It's got the fucking um, Gunner Major came by and we had to do a weird range. It's got the my team leader almost fucking killed himself trying to shoot a lock off a door. It's got the poker cheating story. Dude, Abu Ghraib was fucking wild. It was the wildest part of my first deployment. And my first deployment is the first time I ever got fucking, and the last time, I ever got fucking mortared. <laughs> I was there for two weeks. That's it. Two weeks. There was no prisoners. There was no anyone except for Iraqi army people. And we were in the middle of it. I cannot, I will get, that's a stun lock beyond a stun lock. That's a whole thing. Um, but yeah, I had to sit. This is a Lance Cooley. This is I've been in these turrets before. This is I think these are cougars if we call if the, if that's what we call them, uh, cougars baby, which is like the advanced one, advanced version of the advanced bomb anti bomb thing. These were coming in right as I was getting out in two thousand nine. The only time I was in it. These are fucking biggest shit. This is bulletproof glass and rolled homogenous steel or whatever this goes in here this is like a little can't quite tell innocent okay yeah no no this is my baby that's my baby that's my baby right there that's my baby right there that's the 240 m240 golf buddy that's the pig baby um uh, yeah this is this is literally me so this is a 240 that's the that's the changing handle some of these have weird stuff that's on them and i thought that might be what that is but this is this is just the 240 this is the top of the feed cover where you can put a scope if you want to fucking have something hit you in the face and when you're not able to see through it. Um, were you also bricked? No, I was not bricked. Uh, man, yeah, but this is a little, this is like a plexiglass, bulletproof glass thing. Um, and this whole dilly rotates, right, back and forth. This whip right here is a permanent whip antenna that you plug your radio into on the inside so that you can take your radio in and out and in and out. Can't quite tell what we've got going on up here. I think that's no, that's an up armored seven ton. I don't know why I'm looking at that screen. Yeah, this is a seven ton, I believe. That's what this this is an up armored seven ton, uh, which is a big ass like transpo truck. This thing's fucking huge. These are big metal steel. Um, if this is what I'm looking at, because that looks like the door. So this is like a semi truck tall, right? And then this is a troop carrier right here. And you might have like a little bit of cover. This right here is this same turret. But on the top of basically like a, a semi truck thing, you can just get up in the back of these, and this is heavy ass steel. 
um, on the back. This is the Cougar. This is this same thing, more than likely. I can't quite tell what's going on here. These are some dudes outside of their trucks. One, two, one, two, three, four, five. They're out in the middle of fucking high sand, so who, who the fuck only knows where the fuck these guys... This could also just be Pendleton, you know what I mean? Um, but al looks a lot like this as well. But this thing was next to my head all the time while it was running, and we used to get headaches, man. I mean, like, like your whole body like this level headache all the way down into the, the base of my fucking, like, neck. Like horrible pain like you could feel it like almost in your fucking cheekbones like walk 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 and like the doctor would just be like you're dehydrated and i'm like i've been drinking water you stupid bastard <laughs> what do you mean i'm fucking dehydrated it doesn't happen when i don't go and stand next to the thing like well you're not going out on patrol that means you're not out in the sun where it's hot i'm in the sun all day I'm a Lance Corporal. I'm fucking sweeping things at all times, and I don't get the headaches. I drink the water all day. What do you mean? It's dehydration. If I ever do anything, like, insanely violent, it's because this one of these little motherfuckers right here cooked me fucking inside out. People being killed. That's war. But the trail gives the game away here by equating these split-second decisions with the state... If the range in the jammer is so short, what's the purpose? It's to jam... Uh, you don't want it to be too big uh, either. It's to be just the size to block the remote detonation of certain things that are on the sides of the road. So like anything further than that, like it can blow up. It doesn't matter because the armor will beat it. So you don't want it to go too far because ah, fuck. there was a, they explained all this to us, but basically you don't want to, you don't want it to interfere with everybody's communications first off. So you don't want to have like, all of the civilians in your area unable to use their phones and shit. So there's no reason to fucking like make it too big. They also use a shitload of fucking energy to do all that stuff. Uh, but basically it's just big enough to cover you. And then like a little bit in front of you also that like area that looks small, that vehicle looks tiny. It's big as fuck. It's twice the size of the fucking room. I'm in almost all the way as tall and like going back. You can fit, um, and there's ones I was just looking at. You can fit like 12 people, I think, in the back of those. Or maybe it's just eight. Um, and then there's like a driver. You can fit a driver, a passenger, I think like four to six people in the back section where the little windows are. And then another person in the turret. They're, they're fucking massive. And they sit super high up off the ground. Sponsored abuse, torture, and humiliation of prisoners at Abu Ghraib that were so egregious the U.S. couldn't even argue that these abuses did not violate the Geneva Convention, and instead tried to argue the Geneva Convention just didn't apply to them at all, which was wrong and stupid, and they lost in court because of it. Even when we reach the turning point of our story, when Marcus is faced with a choice to kill three innocent civilians or to let them go and risk the lives of his entire team, the author spends less time focusing on his Christian inclination towards mercy and instead makes his decision because he's worried about what the libs will say about him if he kills this 14-year-old boy, writing, Was I afraid of these guys? No. Was I afraid of the possible buddies in the Taliban? No. Was I afraid of the liberal media back in the USA? Yes. Okay, I'm just telling you right now, this guy got fucking, somebody, somebody fucking ghost wrote this for him, or with him, because to make him, like, this is just an old, this old Rittenhouse shit, same deal, you know what I mean? We just need to make you into a little... You're going to be a little propaganda guy for something because nobody's thinking about the fucking liberal media back home. The statement is, and unironically, like, I'll just share this with you. Um, the the routine thing is to say, like, it's better to be fucking uh, better to be tried by 12 than carried by six. Like, it's not like a thing that you have, like, a whole conversation with people about. Like, if, if it's like you're freaked the fuck out and you've got to shoot someone, you just do it. And then you fucking take the consequences on the chin like a fucking adult which I lived by that and I never had to do anything with it. So I'm fine. Like I shot a guy's engine block basically one time. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I fucking think I fucking hit anybody as far as I'm concerned. Um, but like, that's the whole thing. Like that, that's like a really common talking point. No one's ever just like, man, the fucking, the liberal, like, I'm <laughs> What if they get to talk about me on the news? <laughs> what the fuck? I've never heard that concern. Um, I never heard that concern while we were over there. We had like embedded journalists and shit twice on my first deployment. And I, we ne I never heard a fucking thing about 
from like anyone like wait like, maybe like some people are like i hope they fucking get the story right kind of thing but no one's just like don't know if i'll be able to kill anybody because I, I don't know how i'm gonna fucking appear in the liberal news media <laughs> i guess it's because we were all like 19 to 22 in general i don't know maybe like older people have that concern but we we're all just like i hope i don't fucking die i saw a guy die the other day i don't want to die too <laughs> I would rather. I hope I never have to learn how to kick a fucking soccer ball with a fake leg. That's, like, that's really your big concern. Like, I'll fucking shoot anybody if they fucking try to fuck with me. That's pretty much it. Not like I'm going to have some fucking deliberate, like, pray to God about, like, fucking Isaac coming down. You know, do, do I have to fucking slay Isaac up on this fucking hill? Is that who it is? I think, you know, uh, angelic fucking intervention. Now it's just like. I mean, if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Like, I got a fucking job to do, and I just want to go home. <laughs> like this dude. After deciding to spare the farmers, he laments the decision the and says, media. It was the stupidest, most southern fried, lame brain decision I had ever made in my life. I turned into a fucking liberal. A half assed, no logic nitwit. All heart, no brain, and the judgment of a jackrabbit. I mean, I can keep going and tell you about all the times that Latrell complains about liberals for being too hard on war crimes, but it happens so often that it's just a waste of time. He throws this in throughout the book, seemingly without thinking, and in doing so, he lays out a pretty alarming contradiction that he never attempts to grapple with. Early on in the book, Latrell asserts that the Libs should stay out of deciding who he should be allowed to kill, because... We know about bad guys, what they do, and often, who they are. But he doesn't actually believe this, because he goes on to admit over 100 pages later that not only can he not discern good guys from bad, neither can anyone else. In this kind of a terrorist insurgent warfare, no one can tell who's a civilian and who's not. So what's the point of framing rules that cannot be comprehensively carried out by anyone? Rules that are unworkable, because half the time, no one knows who the goddamned enemy is. This is a take that the average person would be repulsed by. That's why they needed to craft a story in which the only way to save our brave heroes... What? ...average person would be repulsed because half... This kind of terrorist insurgent warfare... No, I can't... I, it's, I'm sorry. I was, like, zoned out. I was just... <laughs> <laughs> thinking about Iraq in this kind of terrorist insurgent warfare no one can tell who's a civilian and who's not so what's the point of framing rules that cannot be comprehensively carried out by anyone rules that are unworkable because half the time no one knows who the goddamn enemy is you would have to point me to one of them I mean we kind of like said that to each other like that was like a, a thing but we were like also like all of them kind of made sense like it was like a little frustrating but also like it was pretty well known that if you had to clip somebody, like, more than likely command would be on your side if you weren't a fucking psycho. Like, if you just, like, lived normal, you know what I mean? And you weren't, like, walking around like a gibbering psychopath, like one guy we had, you know, that fucking talked to his gun and eventually murdered somebody and had to go to the fucking jail for a fucking long time. Um, If you're not like that, and, like, you actually, you were like, fucking, I had to do it, like more than likely people are going to be on your side. Like it's the American military. So I, I, I can't imagine anybody that was actually like felt so restricted by the ROEs that they didn't fucking shoot at somebody. The ROEs are pretty fucking soft too. Like most of them are about v at least in my area. You know, I guess this is Afghanistan, but like it has to be even softer then. Cause like I was in an area where it's fucking hairy as shit all the time because I lived basically like, the, the best way to describe it is I lived in an area that would normally have like an Applebee's and a TGI Friday. <laughs> That's where we were. We were all like on one of those exits. You know what I mean? That's like to a, a random weird town. Like I was on that overpass bridge. If it makes any sense, there should have been McDonald's on the corner basically. And there kind of was, I think it was the banana stand that kept getting burned down. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and so like we, I saw thousands of people and tens of thousands i'm not even shitting it was a four-lane highway tens of thousands tens of thousands of cars every day loaded up with the craziest shit these gigantic red water jug things the fucking iraqi farmers would stack onto the back of like ford f-150 style cars they weren't like actually that they're opals no opal is i think a black sedan this is what my brain says an opal is i can't remember but i think they're the toyotas that never die stack so fucking high the wind would blow and you would see the car fucking going up on one or two wheels the guy's fucking like back and forth and like if you were so fucking froggy if you were as froggy as this fucking seal like you would have fucking you would have probably smoked like a lot of people being nervous up there because we would have people just come by and they'd be like fucking mad at us like fuck i hope you'll die you know what i mean like fuck you like all right like fuck you too bud 
Um, <clears throat> and it is what it is, you know, but like, fucking, I, I never really felt like, and I don't think anybody else ever was talking about like, dude, the ROEs are going to get us fucking killed. The ROEs are going to get us killed. Like it was, they were super basic. It was just like, don't shoot anyone before you're real sure is basically what it boils down to rules of engagement is what an ROE means. Don't shoot anyone unless you're like real sure. And like, but like, you know, if you don't feel safe, but like, make sure you feel like reasonable, you know, um, have like, I think they were basically, it was, it was all the stuff that's like kind of like justified. Like, yeah. All right. Like if the guy has a gun and, um, he points it at you, then that's probably okay. To, like, yeah. Okay. That, that makes sense. You know what I'm saying? Um, if somebody like, but there's no rule against like preparatory action generally not until i was on my second deployment and the fucking sunni awakening or whatever it was happened um because you can do you can point your gun at people and be like fuck off like go away like you can still do that you can talk to them you can tell them like fuck off you know what i mean like like i'll fucking kill you get the fuck away from me Hiff, hiff, stop go away fuck off like leave and people be like, ah, oh, what the fuck? Like, I gotta go this way. And like, shut, get the fuck out of here before I fucking shoot you. Like, I will fucking shoot you. Go away. I'm like, all right, fine. Fuck you. Like, yeah, yeah, fuck you. I'm working here. Come on, get out of there. <laughs> you know? I don't even think I did that. Uh, <laughs> that would probably been a, that would have been a pretty crazy day. That's probably a fucking story I heard from somebody. Um, most of the time we went on patrols. I went on patrols in areas like what this guy sounds like, uh, when we finally started patrolling on the second half of my first deployment. I mean, I've been on patrols in Ramadi, but it was like chill then. So fuck me. But like I, we went on foot patrols in Saklawea and outside and it's just like fields and fields and fields and fields and like weird scrawny fucking Iraqi cows and aqueducts and shit. And like, fire, like basically like walking around like, dude, if somebody wants me dead, I'm fucking cooked, man. I just got to look like I'm fucking less important than the rest of you. <laughs> There's nothing I can do. There's nothing I can do. If somebody wants to set up in this field over here and shoot me in the neck from 200 meters away, like that's just it for me. I'm fucked. Like I just hope he's a bad shot or he wants to shoot one of you idiots first. Cause I'm fucking cooked. <laughs> and that's pretty much it. But Tyler, what if it's late at night and they're wearing a ski mask and carrying a bag of Skittles? Dude, everyone's fucking over there is wearing fucking like masks and shit. It, it's, that's the other thing. Like <laughs> they fucking walking around wearing fucking masks and stuff all the goddamn time. They got their little, you know, the Kafia. No, I can't remember the goddamn name of it, but they got their little fucking headband. The, um, that they get from the Hodge green one, black one, red one. And you know, sometimes it'll be like chill, but like if it's a sandstorm, they'll fucking, you know, wrap their faces up and you have sandstorms all the time. Guys will be walking around with fucking like, like this much and maybe even goggles. Like you can't see anybody fucking whatever. Like you're just going to shoot somebody cause you can't see their face. Like wait, watch their hands anyway. Like don't be watching people's faces trying to figure out what they're going to do. Also, <laughs> Like, why would I even care if they're wearing a mask? Like, they fucking look like everybody else around here. It's like, you're just one random Iraqi dude with the same fucking mustache beard combo. And you look like all of the rest of the dudes from a hundred meters that I've seen. He's, it's good. Wait, I'm like, oh yeah. Can you pick him out of a lineup? Um, he's a dude. He's five, five dark brownish skin, big fucking mustache. Kind of looks a little angry hat wearing a white fucking dish dash. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like every time, like uh, there he goes. Like, you don't even have to fucking wear a mask to shoot at me, and I won't know who the fuck you are. You're like I, you're in, you're not even in squinting distance. It's fucking just a dude over here. A lady shot at you. What is she wearing? She is wearing a fucking burqa. That, okay. Bye. <laughs> Half the time, no one knows who the goddamned enemy is. This is a take that the average person turning into Dune. Repulsed. It does look like Dune. That's why they needed to craft I, I, a story. I don't have any pictures of sandstorms. Save but our they brave heroes wild. would be to kill Very unarmed orange. civilians. The reader is supposed to come away from this book thinking, "Wow, war is a lot more complicated than I thought. Maybe I should back off a little bit." But Luttrell doesn't just want you to choose to stay out of it. He thinks that these kinds of stories are not your business to begin with. He says so when he complains about liberals blathering on about the public's right to know. Well, in the view of most Navy SEALs, the public does not have the right to know. Not if it means placing our lives in unnecessary peril because someone in Washington is driving himself mad worrying about the human rights of some cold-hearted terrorist fanatic who would kill us as soon as look at us. And this is why this what story was dork. written. This is what they wanted the audience to think about war. 
that what happens overseas is none of your business because you couldn't possibly understand how hard it is for the soldiers, like Marcus. They don't have it quite as bad as Jews during the Holocaust, but it's close enough that the author thought to make the comparison. What? The locals didn't love us either, as if they were sick to death of having the American military around them. <sighs> yeah. In fact, there were districts in Manama known as Black Flag areas to signify Americans not welcome. I guess it wasn't quite as vicious as Judenverboten was in Hitler's Germany, but there were undercurrents of hatred all over the Arab world. That's a wild point to make. The black flag is, by the way, um, over there while we were scrapping. The black black flags are the flags of Al-Qaeda. Al-Qaeda's flag is a black flag. So if you see black flags around, it's a gang the sign. It's not like... completely unwarranted. He believes that U.S. forces it's have not like been incredibly It's not like seeing enemy. fucking any, but enemy the flag. Also believes very strongly the way to ultimately defeat a ruthless enemy like the Taliban is to fight them on their own terms, whether you like it or not. And maybe on a battle level yeah, scale, this could be true. We have the right if you're to fighting know someone shut up about and you know, they're willing to pull your hair and gouge your eyes, you might need to match that energy if you want to win. But that's not war. In the entirety of this book, the author never grapples with the fact that war is about people. So long as there are a significant number of people that want to keep fighting you, you cannot win a war. You can continue your occupation, and you can delay the inevitable, but you can't actually win. You need to understand why, in spite of the Taliban's brutal theocratic dictatorship, people continue to join their cause and lose faith in the Americans. It's because there was one thing that continued to drive people back to them. The Taliban resurged because the United States could not stop capturing and killing innocent civilians. The ex huh? Huh? I don't know if this is necessary. I don't know if this is necessarily like the geopolitical f understanding this guy thing. By the way, this is from 2010, so we're <laughs> fucking. We left in like 2022. <laughs> exact thing that this book wants to see more of. Now, this video is entirely too long for what it is, so I can't devote anywhere near as much time to this as it deserves, but try that, that's just like crazy and accurate. stories of American excesses are not rare. There are a lot more examples that I'm able to share, but the absolute state of the US occupation can best be understood by reading Anand Gopal's book, No Good Men Among the Living. In it, he illustrates the point that US forces would often incarcerate Afghans indiscriminately, even if they were staunchly anti-Taliban and collaborated with the Americans. Gopal tells the story of Dr. Hasfula, an anti-Taliban government official in Zermatt province who was sent to Guantanamo Bay after he was falsely accused of terrorism by the corrupt head of police, Chief Mujahid, who would also be sent to Guantanamo Bay soon after. The <laughs> Imagine! You get fucking ratted out by a dude, and then, like, you're in Gitmo, and fucking you turn to the left one day, and he's in there too, like... Can we bury this hatchet? <laughs> oh my god. Uh, that's so stupid. Local security chief Naeem, who was also fiercely anti-Taliban. But also, you kind of touched on it. The, the, the thing is, is like American, uh, America went into Afghanistan, destabilized a bunch of shit. And then we had uh, years of fuck conservatives can't do anything. Obama basically fucking kicked the can down the line on that one because we George Bush fucked everything, quite literally, just by starting it. Because he went into two, started a two front war that's not even two fronts. It's two different countries that aren't, don't even touch each other and don't touch our country. So it's insanely difficult to fucking like do the logistics surrounding it in the fucking first place. But like, we neither of them have any sort of cultural crossover really other than like some people are muslim in both countries but not even in the same kind of way neither people in both countries speak different languages they have different crazy different histories crazy different relations with the u.s crazily different like uh goals and opinions of how the fucking uh, country or like the different aspects of the country should be run it, it's so much to fucking get into american fucking like uh, Americans doing bad things occasionally is I, I I know this sounds crazy. It is not something they care about as much as you would think, um, because it just basically like everybody commits crimes is kind of what it, what it gets to. And a lot of the American crime committing a crime during a war is not a war crime. It's just a crime. <laughs> war crimes are 
governed under an entire different auspice. You know what I mean? Like if a soldier just kills a civilian, that's not a war crime. That's just a crime crime. That's just murder. And you get charged with murder because the war crime aspect of it has to be like, it is intentional. Like it, it, it it's a fucking order. Like you have to be moving the, the entire army in that direction. Like one dude fucking up is not that case. And just the longer conflict goes on, the more people are going to fuck up. The Afghanistan, the nation of Afghanistan and like the greater, the, it it is a very difficult thing to describe even from what I know about it. It is hard as shit to boil down, but like corruption is basically the first and foremost thing, which you kind of couldn't even not, you can't even tell a bad story about Americans without hitting like a fucking Afghanistan corruption story. Like immediately as, as you turn around, um, the, there was no point where we were going to turn Afghanistan around is really the thing. It was like, it's, it, it was a political L right off the bat. Uh, blaming the military for Afghanistan is crazy because that just infers that the military could have done something different. And like, it would have, it would have gone in a different direction. Like the, it's the department of defense, the defense department, the state department does all that other diplomatic shit. And none of the members of the military are part of the state department. Those are the guys that show up sometimes with the little fucking polo shirts. And we didn't see them anywhere near enough to think that they were going to actually be doing something. So like, that's all state department shit. It's got nothing to do with the military. The military did their job fine. They just stood there, held ground, fought. You fuck up. As far as fuck ups go, ours were like the least. Uh, and like we're one of the most best behaved militaries on earth without, without reservation. I'll say that because you just got to put any of the other one, all the other ones that people are like, well, this army never did anything. And it's like, you're always naming an army that either lost. So who gives a fuck? Um, or that uh, just hasn't done anything recently or like never did anything when people were taking records. You know what I'm saying? Because now we just got any other armies going on. Every fucking arm, Hamas, war crimes, atrocities, IDF, war crimes, atrocities, Russians, war crimes, atrocities, Ukrainians, I think maybe a few possible war crimes and no atrocities. Cause like it's, it's very difficult for you to commit war crimes and crimes and atrocities when you're being invaded. Um, but yeah, like every other military, it's, it's insane. Like it's, it's so cool that we get to held to such a high standard that like makes every other military on the earth, like look like the most play school fucking like idiots (laughs) never did a thing in their goddamn lives. The American, Americans fucking sneeze, man. And it's like, this is the worst shit anyone's ever seen. America's America's conduct in Japan. What did those poor Japanese go through? And you're like, you got us, us. <laughs> was also sent to Guantanamo after being falsely accused the military of terrorist fail the sympathies politicians by his it, rival, yeah, Mullah like, Kasim. Kasim, who actually had terrorist ties, was able to avoid being captured by the Americans as they instead grabbed another Afghan. Of the- I heard this lecture on NPR a few years ago and it rang true. The U.S. great is is great at tactics, shit at strategy. No plan to win, just plans to kill. I mean, we should have a great army. We have great fucking military. Our military is solid as shit. It's well-funded. It's well-fed. The people believe in it generally. Uh, we're falling short on recruiting right now. The problem is, is like, like our, our military doesn't, isn't affected by the same problems that affect the executive and legislative branches of, or really just the legislative branches of our government, which is, you know, you can't, if, if Fox News could figure out a way to bribe you know, your average fucking guy on the ground to start like killing civilians like Fox news would, but like they can't do that. It would be too expensive. So they just bribe the legislative branch to try to get shit like that to happen. Incidentally, like the legislative branch is fucked, dude. It's just full of fucking fascists and fucking like Republicans. You know what I mean? There's like, it's either dumb or evil everywhere. And so they can't even agree on something. Like if you can barely run your own country, you're obviously not going to fucking establish much of another one. So we should have just let them go off rip. I don't, I don't think we ever needed to really invade Afghanistan in the first place. It kind of just reset itself. Just going on a fucking hunter killer mission and fucking taking out Osama bin Laden and just being like, Hey, we're just going to not respect your state's sovereign rights 
until you stop harboring terrorists as a flex, like that would have probably worked and people would have gotten mad about it, but they're going to get mad about anything that you do militarily. You just have to like, all right, well, if you can't do anything about it, so always the people are like, well, I'm very upset with you morally. Like, okay. Hey, real quick question. Do you vote? I'm not voting in this upcoming question. I'm not voting in this upcoming election. Okay. So you just fucking, you can't fight and you don't vote. <laughs> all you do is talk, huh? But I can talk better than you. <laughs> I got you on all the other three accounts. Now I just got to get you on one more. The same name and shipped his ass to Guantanamo. And to top it all off, when the pro-American commander... Better than everyone else's mean, has that massive to room to agent, improve. He was sent to Bagram prison. That's the thing. It's like, I don't think there's... I don't think there's really, really room to improve. Uh, there's mistakes that you could not make. Basically. But, like, most of the issues that have come up with our military are all top-down. Like, they're top-down issues. It, it starts with policy that comes out of Washington that is confused, that is insane, um, or propagandized. I mean, like if you, if you start rolling the clock back to conflicts that happened before my dad was born or before I was born, like, okay, sure, you know, whatever. If, we, if we're going to take it, let's, let's bring back Chapultepec and talk about the, the, the Marines' conduct at, in fucking Mexico. Like, okay. But, like, right now... I mean, God damn, don't do that much wrong compared to like just any general civilian, you know, like the military is just, they're still people. So like they commit crimes uh, on my last deployment, there was a massive syphilis outbreak, massive that we didn't have to worry about because we were over in fucking all dude land, but the Pogues had something like 2000 people. I think that might be too great. That might be too big. It was at least like 200 though. It was definitely triple digits. Like 200 people got syphilis within like a month and a half because it was just going there all fucking too much. Boys that he and his men would sexually abuse was sent to Guantanamo where he would be the youngest detainee. I don't intend for this to be an exhaustive list of how the US fucked with local Afghan politics. This is literally just a handful of errors carried out in a short stretch of time in the Zermatt province alone. Further inspection of Guantanamo as a whole would tell you that one inmate was accused of being a supporter of Ahmed Shah Abdul Rahman. No reason for keeping him. He stayed for three more years. And this has nothing about the indiscriminate killing carried out by U.S. drones, which killed an obscene amount of civilians relative to enemy combatants. And beyond the death from above, U.S. forces would. But is that like in Afghanistan? Like, are those Afghani drone strikes, or are you talking about the Pakistani ones? Because that's like who? That, I mean, obviously that's bad, but like, how does that affect? Afghanistan. It's two different countries. Are we ta we're talking about the Pakistan drone strikes, which is still bad. And I, I, to this day, I cannot understand what the fuck those strikes were ever to do. That shit's just horrible. Also, I haven't looked into it that much, but it just doesn't seem very military, militarily efficacious. It just seems like something like people are like, we have to do something. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like your tough on crime moment is just like randomly bombing weddings. Uh, were we doing a bunch of indiscriminate drone striking in Afghanistan? It doesn't seem like it would be highly necessary. I mean, obviously there's going to be fucking flubbed air missions. That's just going to happen because it's a fucking war zone. The longer you go on with your war, all of the incidental civilian deaths are still, by the way, America's fault for being in Afghanistan and Iraq. Like, because you being there is causing the conflict and you could literally always leave at any time. Uh, Technically, we kind of eked out a sort of kind of W and a W. We got a little bit of a W in fucking Iraq, but like Afghanistan was an overall like waste of time and money. So like we could have just literally left at any time. You know what I mean? So like that is all their fault, but I can't remember. Kill you in your own home too. Journalist Lindsay Billing dug into a zero unit squad who conducted night raids in Afghanistan on behalf of the CIA and found that across hundreds of night raids, she was able to identify at least 452 civilian deaths over a four year period. Now, 452 should be an alarming... Who was this? Number L. Billings. What in the f... L. Billings. ...or of innocent people to kill, and found that across hundreds of night raids, she was able to identify... Bro, no one can read this. ...at least 450 in your own home, too. Journalist Lindsay Billing dug into a zero-unit squad... Lindsay Billing. Lindsay Billing? Who is this person? 
Lindsay, what a name. L Y N Z Y. L Y N Z Y Billing. Journalist. Al Jazeera. Journalist photographer. What did he say? A zero squad? How I did it. Investigating. US backed night raids. Can I get Canadian's National Observer? Let's see, just like night raids. Because that sounds wrong. Truth about Afghanistan's zero unit night raids. Okay, so this is just this is just literally the ProPublica thing. He's just taking straight from their article. These uh these animations. Oh god, this is horrible. This is this is this is the worst thing I've ever seen. Look at this piece of shit. I, people were trying to do these things for forever, but like I I just give me the fucking texts. Chapter one prologue, March twenty nineteen Radat district. Oh god, this is fucking literary journalism. Zero units, squadrons of U.S. trained Afghan special forces soldiers. Okay, so they're not even Americans. U.S. SOCOM was there. CIA often joined them. Oh, okay, hold on. They're suddenly funded traded by the CIA to go after targets. How do you know? It's classified later. Say the funds. Bubble stories as a journalist. This sounds like bullshit. As one army ranger ruefully told me after the Taliban's triumph last year, you go on night raids, make more enemies, then you gotta go on more night raids for more the more enemies you now have to kill. What in the fuck is this? <laughs> My younger sister killed in a nighttime raid in the very same district as Mazala's son, long before the Americans arrived. Okay, so this isn't just, this isn't like, so d uh, d Americans didn't <laughs> invent this. So people just get killed in the middle of the night in Afghanistan. Okay, I don't give a fuck about any of this shit. Sorry, I don't care about you. You're making a, a statement. I need to see how you proved any of it. I did what happened to I tracked what the U.S. trained and sponsored squads were doing on the ground, concealed from most of the world. This is all from talking with Mazzalo, whoever this chick is. Cataloged hundreds of night raids by one of the four zero-unit squads, which is known in Afghanistan as O2 unit, eventually identifying at least 452 civilians killed. I talked to survivors, eyewitnesses, doctors, and elders that no one else talked to. They were mad at Americans and the US backed Kabul government. My reporting showed that even the raids it didn't, you know, where's the proof, dude? CIA declined to answer my question about the zero units on the record. In a statement, CIA spokesperson Tammy Thorpe said, as a rule, the U.S. takes extraordinary measures beyond those mandated by law to reduce civilian casualties in armed conflict and treats any claim of human rights abuses the most serious. So, like, the U.S. responsibility is quietly muddied because of things, but how do you even know what's happening? Like, how, what, how do you identify? Like, I need all of that information front-loaded that these people are doing anything. Forward operating base Fenty. <laughs> In Jalalabad, Narangahar, Nangahar province, 2019 was the headquarters for the O2 unit. A lot is proven here. We got some Texas barriers. What the fuck? A reporting, based on interviews with scores of eyewitnesses, shows the American government had scant basis for believing it had a full picture of the zero unit's performance. Again, again, I spoke with people. I spoke with him. 
Very big. I talked to a lot of people. I talked to very many people. They said the zero units, they're very bad hombres. They're everywhere. It's very tragic. They're all over the place. Oh, she's a spy. She was talking. He's a, good, he's a spy. He's a spy. Oh, so the one person, the one person that's chronicling the zero unit survivors is a literature teacher. <laughs> Where is the fucking... He said 14 stories of deadly zero unit raids that his students had described to him over two years. The literature teacher had his students describing stories of the zero unit raids. This is almost like a fucking creepypasta about people imagining something happening that wasn't maybe happening. Or just trying to like... How do you know? This is, this is insane. This is just made up. This is just fucking, this is just gibberish, man. Even if it's not made up, you can't prove me that it wasn't. Like, this dude, he's put to, he witnessed the raid. My man's got a fucking AK right there. It's, <laughs> that might not be, it might be something else. Found his brother's dead. Okay, so certainly, uh, skip, skip, skip. They got killed and like, just shot in the night. But where is the proof? That it was an O2 unit. How do you know? You know how like even when cops kill somebody, you're like, I know there were cops because they were in like badges and guns or like, you know, like they were detectives, but like they at least had like a copy vibe about them. Where is the proof that this was the O2? It could have been anybody. It could, it could literally have just been anybody just showing up. And you could just be somebody saying like, I'm in the O2 unit and they're not. And the O2 unit is real. Maybe they did do like half of them. Maybe they did like 75% of them, 10% of them. How the fuck? There's no facts in this. It's always just like, I know a guy who said this. I know someone who talked to a friend of mine whose sister's mother's aunt said, this motherfucker's a bad hombre. <laughs> Pictures. Th yeah. The O2 unit later said it carried out the raid in a statement announcing that the men were ISKP members. What statement? Do you have the statement? This is just, this sounds like gibberish. I'm just gonna, this is made up. As far as I'm concerned, that's fucking made up. Who conducted night raids in Afghanistan on behalf of the CIA and found- You can't have a thing that starts off with a literal animation that you made yourself. And then not hit me with like a lot of facts. I went through part four of that fucking thing. <laughs> It's no fucking. Found that across no fucking hundreds of night raids, she was able to identify at least 452 civilian deaths over a four-year period. Now, 452 should be an alarming Where number Rico? of innocent people to kill, but I can't stress enough: this was attributable to just one of four zero-unit death squads over just a four-year period of a 20-year. So, buddy, you got fucking. You got All to say that the U.S. was hardly handcuffed. Like I say, if you're if you're watching this back, you got. You got fucking run because I don't know how the fuck you just believed that story after reading fucking the other guys. Because he had as many facts, there's as many facts in fucking Lone Survivor as there are in her story. You know what I mean? By the rules of engagement. And this consistent humiliation wore on the Afghan people, and in many cases, it turned them against the Americans. And it didn't need to be this way. Some U.S. forces did reach out hey, to the Afghans. Hey, what the fuck? GMA, wasn't this... What is this? Was this not the thing from the fucking second thought? The square cut with the, like... The wet the letters. I think his said like BPO. What the fuck is that? And treat them as a people to be invested in rather than eliminate. Oh, good morning, America. I don't want to make it sound like the U.S. occupation was all sunshine and rainbows. Believe me, I was not a fan. But it by happens. the way, you're using all of these illegally. You're 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 stealing that content. This is not free use. <laughs> Understand? This is none of this is free use that you're doing. If you watch back through this, it's not free use at all. You're just stealing news items. If you're trying to do reporting, and other people have done the reporting, and they're their images you're using them to illustrate your own reporting on something which is that's what this is you're stealing this is all stolen it doesn't matter if it's credited this is this is not fair use <laughs> you're not talking about what's happening in here you're using the the illustrations to illustrate your story you stole all of this so just know that the crediting you did was it didn't work sorry um any of these news orgs could sue you to have this taken down sometimes this is the fundamental difference between counterterrorism and counterinsurgency in theory at least
The former seeks to what? kill whoever needs to be killed, and the latter is supposed to win people over to your cause. To be effective, though, this requires a zero-tolerance policy towards civilian casualties, as just one can ruin weeks or months of humanitarian work. In one particularly relevant instance He's that I not found, wrong, a local but Marine that's just a weird distinction to make. was introduced to a local Afghan who told him through a translator <laughs> that although he was typically scared to approach America, I'm dying with this. This this went crazy off the rails. Why do they have this man getting a picture of himself taken during his fucking uh, PFT? Like my man's doing his fucking fitness test and he got him carrying, he got him doing the fucking ammo can carry. That's fucking, that's rough, dude. They should have gotten, it would have been way funnier if you would have found a picture of this dipshit getting fucking, uh, having to do his fucking rope, cr rope climb. <laughs> He's somewhere nice, dude. This guy's, this guy, or I'm, I'm circling on the wrong thing. This guy's fucking hooked up. Is this like Pendleton or something? There's not a single field in all of fucking, in all of fucking, uh, Lejeune that's this nice, unless they fixed everything. Tells ...was introduced to a local Afghan who told him through a translator that although he was typically scared to approach Americans because of previous negative experiences, he had heard about the Marines' work with the local girls' school and wanted to be friends. It's possible that if that Afghan had not seen that humanitarian work, and instead lost friends to American forces, that he would keep his distance or even provide aid to the Taliban instead. But he didn't do that. Instead, he put his life on the line to help American troops in spite of the threat to his life posed by the Taliban. That Afghan's name was Mohammed Gulag, and he saved Marcus Luttrell's life in this story. And that's the frustrating part about the narrative. Yeah, fucking, Mar he hung out with fucking Marines. My dude met some Marines, and he's like, dude, Marines are based as fuck. What's going on with you? Like, oh, we fucking hung out with Navy SEALs. We shot like three of them. They fucking suck. Like, the author chose to tell here. If you want to tell an inspiring story that gasses up the U.S. military and casts the occupation of Afghanistan in a positive light, you would tell the story of Mohammed Gulag. An Afghan who saw that the Americans maybe could make a positive difference in his community, so he put his own life and that of his family on the line to save a complete stranger to him. He stood up to the Taliban, and for years he was terrorized for it. His nephew was shot in the head and killed because of it. But the goal of this story was not to inspire or inform, it was to spin a very specific narrative. That's why, while all this was happening to Mohammed Gulab, Marcus Luttrell was back in America peddling a book about how the United States needed to commit more war crimes. But why? Like, oh, I mean, it wasn't here. Don't show that. Like, this isn't when Lone Survivor came out. I know what I know what era this fucking stupid ass studio is from. Is like, Lone Survivor looks like it came out in like 2013, right? It had to be before the movie, and I know this came out after, you know? Would he lie about all these details just to make himself feel better about how things shook out? Yes. Maybe, but Marcus didn't write this book at all. The Navy commissioned <sighs> Patrick Robinson to write it. And I they did so you. within weeks of Operation Red Wings coming to a close. He wrote the entirety of the book based on unrecorded interviews with Luttrell while he was away in Iraq. This is not oh, something no. you do when you are concerned with the facts on the ground. It's something you do when you only need the gist of a story to craft your narrative. This is why the book has- I fucking told you guys it was probably- I Did I not say it was probably somebody was fucking just like they gave him to someone and that person wrote it within like 10 seconds of getting it? That's fucking hilarious. I'm not even going to double check that fact because it's probably not 100% true. But Layering fucking, errors, like the name of the operation and Shah's kill count, because the guy who would have known that stuff was halfway across the world when the book was actually being written. Now, Robinson claims that he was chosen because the Navy felt he demonstrated a strong knowledge of the SEALs in his fiction writing. If this is true at all, it's- of fiction writing i don't think i don't even believe i don't believe the guy was picked by the navy even like maybe somebody like fucking hooked him up but that's crazy that the department of the navy like specifically was like we need him to write fiction it's just half the reason he was brought on to tell a fictional version that would paint latrell as a hero he was brought on to push a political message he specifically crafted a story in which the deaths of some good old american boys could be laid at the feet of innocent afghan civilians despite considerable evidence suggesting otherwise this is why the novel positions Marcus as the man who casts the deciding vote against killing the goat herders, because the fact that he has now changed his mind and supports killing them makes the narrative all the more persuasive. This story tells the reader that rules of engagement be damned, sometimes war crimes are okay. And if it started and ended- I was gonna say, it's still, it's not a war crime. It's, it's just not a war crime. It's a crime. It's just a crime. It, there's, it's the distinction is very important because you can't take, not only can you not, take him to the Hague over that, you don't have to, or even need to. You can charge him with murder underneath the Uniform Code of Mil Military Justice, like the UCMJ, because that would just be murder. And, like, like I've seen it happen. I've just seen it happen. We Like, it happened literally in my unit. A guy murdered a person, 
because he was a fucking mentally unfit psychopath and he was fucking tried and he went to prison <laughs> like just normal prison because it's not a war crime it's just a crime that happened during the war like you have to it has to be you have to be directly ordered by like by like war crimes are against governments you know what i mean like the government does the war crime not the individual because like if the individual acts against the government's wishes in that situation, then like, you know what I mean? Like, how are you getting caught up? Like who, who are you? Whose fault is it then? Because if you can act against the government's legal wishes, which are for you to not murder anybody unnecessarily, then what value does like the war crime aspect of it happen? Cause like then, then just, is it always their fault? Like no matter what you do, like if you just put on a uniform, you're like, that that would create like an untenable situation where any mistake that occurs in the standard conduct of war, whether it's, you know, an ally, whether or not generally everything else went right or not is like suddenly like, okay, this entire operation is tainted because this entire operation is a fucking war crime. Like, no one guy that was like mentally unwell, did an insane and mentally unwell thing. And then we punished him for it. Like, that's not a war crime. It's just, it's just a crime, but it's very important too, because this kind of comes back. It's the written house effect. I'll bring this up again and again and again because I think this is the one that's actually going to hammer it home to fucking lefties. Hit them on the crime they did because if you, because eventually it has to go before a jury, right? And unless you're willing to start doing the fascism as well and just doing vibes based policing, uh, you have to prove that they did the thing. So, like, if you're trying to say, like, he was thinking about committing a war crime, he was just going to commit a crime. Like, him and his, those, that unit was going to commit a crime. It's not a war crime. It would be a war crime if the directive was to engage in that shit, like in general, right? And that's why they say like that doesn't even come up, like because that would be the, the fucking marine was like that's the most insane shit I've ever heard. No one would have a discussion like that because that's just conspiracy to commit murder. Like th that's already established. Like that's part of the UCMJ. You don't get up to the fucking Hague. That stops right there. You know what I mean? Wasn't it an ongoing war? Sorry if I'm being dumb, but why isn't it a war crime? It has to be a direct result, an intentional and direct result of the policy, right? So, like, if the, if, you know, I'm in, a, I'm in a country and I'm walking around and I purposely push over a pole, right? Because I'm stupid. And the pole falls and it breaks a family's house and kills one of them. You're not allowed to attack civilian structures you're not allowed to attack unarmed civilians you know those are like things that are like illegal to do right that because i was just walking and i did that i just negligently did all of those things but because i did it because of my own decision and it was not part of the operating proceed like then it's not a war crime it's a crime it happened during the war yes but it will more than likely be adjudicated by the command war crimes are tried all the way up at the top it, it's a thing that whole like command structures and shit are 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 called to account for you know what i mean that, that's why when you see the people that are being tried for the war crimes it's generals it's president it's like milosevic right was fucking tried for war crimes because it's his intention now if they say we want you to go out on a patrol and we want you to make sure there's no one alive in like Sodder City, whatever, right? I shouldn't say that because it's an actual real place. Um, in, in City X, like we want you to go to City X and make sure there's no one alive. Even though you don't say like we want you to kill anyone. If you go there and then you start terminating everyone and then you come back, like that's that's a war crime. Because that even just the insinuation of like, hey, we want to make sure that that's empty. Like you start just free firing people. Like that's a war crime. It has to be a, a an act of ordering um, uh, an act of issuing orders at a, at a significant way, at like a significantly high level. Like even like, you know, I was like a Lance corporal corporals that were right over like a team level. Like if your team leader's like, yeah, do this stuff. Even that's just, it's just doesn't rise to the occasion because these are things that are handled by treaties between nations. So it has to be basically, if you think about it at a national level, right? It has to be, occurrences of such extraordinary 
occasion that it threatens the sovereignty of other nations as well and makes them feel uneasy about your conduct in war. The point of war is literally to go kill people. And like, you're going to do violent shit. You know, it's that it's just the case. Like, it's just miserable. You should just not do war if you can. Once you start doing it, though, it's governed under certain rules. You can feel bad about it. You can be like, this is fucking bullshit. Yeah, go vote. Like, fucking establish political fucking uh, strongholds in your neighborhoods. Build cells of leftist thought in throughout the country that fucking... <laughs> that, that, that push toward anti-war sentiment. But being butthurt about it on the internet is going to change shit. Um, but, like, it has to be bigger. And it has to be intentional. Intentionality, all of those things go. And if you get up to the tippity-top of stuff and you don't have that, motherfuckers get away with shit. They get to walk away. You know what I mean? They don't get brought to heel. And sometimes you can oversell yourself. You can be like, this is a war crime, war crime, which is going to be like pinned on them. And they're like, no, it's just like this one guy. You could have maybe asked them to just try the one guy with murder. Oh, they, well, you just have this dude murdered somebody. Obviously, we don't want to call this a war crime and escalate it to the next area, but we would like to see this one guy like charged with murder for being like a literal murderer to show that you're kind of like handling things in your own court because that conduct is still like not in line with your mission, correct? And then you can probably exert more control that way. But this like, especially like hyper lib predilection, I don't know what it is specifically with like vibes based misunderstanding of shit. Just not even trying to fucking understand it any better or like looking deeper than surface stuff and just be like, it's fucking war crime. You know what I'm saying? Um, it, it really gets in their way of like, of making like salient political points and like rising to the case. Cause if you like the, I don't have anywhere near as much experience or ability to articulate this shit as the people that are up at the tippity top of the military generals and stuff. If you're going to start talking to them, if you actually got political office and this is the, in, this is the extent of the thought that you have about this shit. And you're trying to articulate with generals, like why were you committing war crimes in Kandahar? And he's just looking at you like, what the fuck are you talking about? And they're like, this thing, like, are, are you not ashamed of the war crimes you committed? He's like, what are you, t we weren't, we didn't have troops there. Who are you talking about that was committing a war crime? But like, what, what the fuck? And like, you, you describe a thing and he's like, well, that was six years before we were there. That was British troops, which didn't fall underneath our command structure. And they were, they were tried and like sentenced to, to, to years in, in the brig for, for those things. They, they, they were dishonorably discharged. Like, why are you talking about this like this? Like, well, I heard through a source that if you didn't know, I don't know if you saw this report. And it's like, dude, you bring fucking grounded facts. Cause like these people don't have all the time in the world to like hear out your inane lefty conspiracy theories. Like have your shit fucking ready to go. Like know what you're talking about, know how to address it. Like you don't get to have your own fucking interpretation of like what the stuff is when you get to the top. You don't get to be like, well, it feels like it. You know what I mean? Cause you just don't even have the fucking, you don't have the political backing for that. It may be, I don't know. I feel like maybe it is like even that guy got told no. You know what I mean? Ah, okay. I didn't I admit I didn't know it was a very legal, legal, limited legal definition. So a lot of the atrocities committed by Japanese soldiers in World War II would technically not have been war crimes legally because they were ordered by lower officers. No. Um, incidents. We're talking about incidents and like repeat behavior. So that kind of goes to why I was talking about the other one where it's like, hey, just make sure there's no one left alive as opposed to like literally go kill everyone there. If you have a... God damn it. There's actually a term for this. It's a command climate a command climate um of of certain types of behaviors those behaviors become an aspect of command so it's called there's a fucking there's a literal term for this basically not stopping things is the same thing as doing things is, is in this case right so one single officer and officer orders are way when i was talking about a team leader team leaders are non-commissioned officers or sometimes just um, rank enlisted, right? Just th there, there's two different command structures and basically all Western style militaries. There's officers, which are over everybody and enlisted officer orders are technically all officer orders are technically commissioned. They're commissioned officers commissioned by the legislative bodies or the military governing bodies of the countries that you're in, right? I'm, I'm stepping on, this is a JAG person will fucking eat me alive for the shit I'm trying to explain right now more than likely. But basically, officers 
are direct representatives of the government, which is why officers, even lieutenant grade officers, have the ability to order you to shoot somebody, right? Um, on the ground, non-commissioned officers, which they're non-commissioned, they're not from the government, they're just promoted within the ranks to basically lead stuff, they can make mistakes, right? Um, if you disobey an order from your Lance Corporal, right, you know, who's like, you know, an E3 right above you, you're a PFC, there's nothing, <laughs> there's literally no legal remedy remedy for it. You have to ask higher ranked people to tell him to be in trouble. Because you can just be like, fuck you. Like, it's the chain of command. There's a lot of things, but that's like, it's kind of like a, we're all on the honor system sort of like behaving. When an officer tells you to do something, you are commanded to do that by the authority of the entire government over the top of you. It's literally in the UCMJ and probably in most other countries, uh, military codes that disobeying a direct order is literally punishable by death. If I, my Lieutenant who I didn't like, if he told me to do something and it's what you call a reasonable order, you have to do it or you can literally be killed. It doesn't really come up to that, but that's disobeying an order like that in the course, the due course of operating, right. Uh, can be considered like misconduct in, in front of the enemy and stuff. It can very easily lead to a dishonorable discharge, especially if you were especially cowardly or if you just did it because you just didn't want to, <laughs> you're just feeling saucy that day. Um, so that's how much different an officer order is versus like an on the ground, like enlisted order, which is usually just generally a command given by somebody who is still underneath the auspices of an order of, of, of an officer. So it's canned up. There's also something called a command climate, right? Um, this isn't necessarily always an official term, but most military people kind of get what I mean. If you go to a certain command and there's a behavior that normally would not be typically permitted or would be counter to standard operating procedures, but it's okay there, that's usually considered part of the command climate, which means they're permitting that negligent action. It might be something as minor as nobody's shaving. Like, so you go in there and like the, you know, general comes down, I probably, a major comes down, talks to a captain, right? Hey, captain, why is everyone in your company not shaving anymore? No one in your company shaving. Well, it's like, okay, like, well, I don't know. They sh you know, my men don't shave. Your lack of discipline over your men is directly reflected upon you. So if you're not doing that, then you know what I mean? Like that's your, your non-order is still in order. If it's a case of, uh, captain, why are your men testing your store, your sword, their swords out on the POWs? Like, oh, well, you know, I, I didn't tell them they couldn't. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But like you're in charge of them kind of thing. And it, it's very obviously something that keeps happening and happening and happening again because it's not been stopped. That's command climate as opposed to like if like a, a captain finds out like, hey, you stepped out of line and like chopped a guy up with a fucking sword. You know, OK, you've got to go to you've got to go to therapy and you've got to go to the fucking you got to go in the box for a bit. Completely different situation. Yeah, I don't think the Japanese soldiers were punished or disincentivized. I think they were actually incentivized. I think it was actually a, I think it was actually like a running order was to do stuff like that. So it's crazy. Catherine Bell is coming for you, Tyler. Loved her on Jag. <laughs> yeah, fucking Jags. <laughs> fucking Jag offs. Ended there. I wouldn't waste so much time talking about this. But this is not a fringe opinion held by a ghostwriter gone rogue. Some American soldiers in Iraq would tell you the same thing. With one telling Seymour Hirsch, "We're going to have to play their game." Guerrilla versus guerrilla, terrorism versus terrorism. We've got to scare the Iraqis into submission. This is an opinion. That's a shitty, that's a shitty little bitch baby quote to pull out. Who said that and why and what was the context? And like literally, like that, that's such a shit quote. I, I am actually, that's, that was, that was, that's bad. That was bad on your part. And held all the way up to the highest reaches of American power. Jimmy Carter, the guy that's always trotted out as. How the fuck are we talking? Are we talking? Can we? Don't show me anything that's made in 2024 and talking about like the current issues facing the military and then show me a picture of Jimmy Carter that is in this level of fucking like disarray. W when the fuck was this shit filmed? The most moral post-World War II president suggested that William Calley, who was convicted of killing 22 civilians in the My Lai massacre, was a scapegoat whose conviction was a blow to troop morale. 
And it goes without saying that conservatives are the worst offenders of all, with Ben Shapiro writing stuff about how the Democrats critical of George Bush's war in Iraq should be charged with sedition. And I cannot stress enough that this is not just a case of Robinson agreeing with those guys. But like, who gives a fuck? Like, unironically, like, at a certain point, can we, can we, we need to establish. <laughs> at the moment when none of, the, none of the people, none of the people, pretty much, that were in the military when Jimmy Carter gave that statement are still in it, or maybe even alive, can we move to the next thing? Because I'm like, at what point do we, <laughs> how, how are we connecting uh, mid 2000, 2010, 2010, 20, 2013, how are we connecting that to the My Lai Massacre as an act of like, or as a, as a general, like, as a, as a disposition thing, like, I, I don't even, first off, I don't understand the actual connection other than like. I guess a laissez-faire attitude towards war crimes. The My Lai Massacre was insane and just, that's it, pretty much. It's just that one word is, is fine. It was a nightmarish, scorched earth, war. it was actually a war crime. It was actually a war crime. When you say war crime, My Lai Massacre, that's what people mean, right? It's a war crime. Let me, let me rephrase this. Let me phrase this so you guys can understand this better. There are crimes that are crimes everywhere that you can commit during war. And it's still a crime that you committed during war. War crimes can only be committed during war. Let me ref let's let's think of it that way. From now on, when you think of it, war crimes can only be committed with an act of war. It needs war level fucking shit happening, which is what my lie was hundreds of people killed, raped, murdered, enslaved, tortured, cut to pieces, set on fire. Um, uh, by people for like what is it days, months, something like that. It was an insane, ongoing meat grinder. Of every single person that was involved in that deserves to be put into a fucking box for a very long time, or at least a short time. Uh, regardless of how like fucking just following orders you were, that was that shit sucks, man. You probably need to get put in a box just for your own fucking health, even if you tried to stop everybody and failed. Like just sitting there, man. Give yourself a couple days. Just we'll bring you food. Think about anything else. You know what I mean? Like, it's so just obvious and on its face. I mean, we would start talking about like fucking like Sarajevo and shit. You know what I mean? Um, in Serbia, pits dug, people shot in the back of the head, hundreds in fucking pits covered in gasoline, set on fire. Uh, the Nazis, like literal fucking camps with people burning in them. Uh, gassing people. Saddam Hussein gassing, literally just raw off off rip, gassing civilian populations with fucking um, ICBMs. And he just did that, by the way. That's not like that's not like you know uh, weapons of mass destruction. I almost got it back. There's old W. Bush. I can't quite get it though. Uh, he just he was just doing war crime, war crimes. Like that's just <laughs> that's just it. Americans have created committed a lot of crimes during war. Because that does happen, and covering it up, I think, is probably arguable that it's extremely deleterious to the overall mission goals of anything that you do. But like a war crime is some serious shit, and and I think this desire—it's it's the America bad first kind of vibe. You know what I mean? Because like you can say the same shit about the fucking ad, everything that you're accusing the Americans of, of being like responsible for you're taking it off the shoulders of other people that do the exact same stuff that are our enemies all the time, which you, you shouldn't like it's, it's bad when all of us do it kind of thing, but like hyper focusing on the Americans doing it, I guess just because we are fucking stacking the dubs in most of the fights and being like, you guys are responsible for this shit a hundred percent of the time. You know what I mean? Like you guys are the only ones that are doing any of this awful stuff. Like, but bro, we left, and they're still just like skinning people and setting them on fire and shit. Like they, they just, they just do crazy stuff. Like, <laughs> are you going to talk about that at all? Like, like what is, what is your intention here? Like, what do you actually want to accomplish with this? Are you just trying to get people like whipped up? You're not doing that much fucking research. A lot of this seems kind of secondhand. This book is fucking 10 years old. That movie was fucking hilariously shit. I don't think anybody fucking remembers it. So it's kind of like even this dude at his, at the beginning of it's like, I'm bringing this up kind of apropos of nothing because I'm upset about war crimes, but like 
Also, most importantly, none happened in the book, which I, I feel like we're kind of glossing over because of how much we're talking about American war crimes in this is that no war crimes happened in the book or in real life either. In real life, they like let the guys go and then got ambushed and fucking the one dude survived by getting blown up a bit and I guess crawled away and the dude dragged him out and was like, all right, I'll send you back. So like just no war crimes happened in the book. Even the book, which was like pro war crimes, I guess, is like um, saying like, well, I didn't do the war crime, but like, I kind of wish I did vibe. But then also it wasn't even the guy that it happened to. So like, what what is the point of this actually? Like when we really get down to it, did you just want to talk about like, you could have just talked about American war crimes in a different way. I wanted to watch Mark Wahlberg fall down that goddamn, that goddamn hill. Out of happenstance. He was handpicked by the Navy for a reason. They reviewed this book for accuracy, of which there was none, and gave it a green light for publishing. And that is why this is the wrongest book of all time. Not because it leaves out important context or lies about the significance of the mission or how it happened, but because this is a book that comes straight from the military industrial complex to convince you that the reason the US is not winning wars is because they need to kill more innocent people. Who did it convince though? That's, this is the thing. Like you're, buddy, you're the only person talking about this book. We could, you could have gone with American Sniper. I guess because you wanted to have a, cha a, like a channel that has like that Nazi vibe, but it's like not, you know, like burn this book. It's a little fash. I'm not going to lie. This, this is coming off a little fucking America bad. Is, is there going to be a pro-Russia book coming up here soon? Or is our next thing going to be, uh, what is it called? Um, Red Winter or whatever the fuck. What was that? I hate keeps you warm. You can have one of those. Uh all right i've spent at least two years thinking about all the ways i wanted to shit on this movie and the book that spawned it from hell but i had no idea it would get this long and i'd have to leave so much out i didn't get to talk about the fact that when the village elder sauntered over to the nearest u.s military base to tell them about finding marcus the marines sat with him and drank tea before planning to have him walk them to the location only for the navy seals to black bag him and drag his ass to another location for interrogation despite being fully cooperative I didn't get a chance to talk about the way that the trail. Can I just say the Marines are based every time? Maybe, maybe, maybe the military does suck, and just the U.S. Marines are fucking based as shit. Like I, like I we sent the one guy I know to jail. Every time they're brought up in this entire thing, it's just like, well, the Marines are really cool. They sat down, had tea with the guy, uh, but then the fucking dickhead ass fucking seals black bag the dude. <laughs> he come over to the Marine Corps base, we're like, hey, do you want crayons? Can I make you tea? Continues to talk about Gulab as though they have a brotherly relationship to this day, despite Gulab publicly calling him out for lying and abandoning him all the way back in 2016. I didn't get to talk about the fact that Joe Rogan had Latrell on his podcast in March of 2021, despite all these lies being readily accessible for years. And I decided not to delve into this stuff because- I feel like that's not well, much of a number news. one, I'm not h guy, I don't have the clout for that, but also because these more minor personal grievances I have with everyone involved here is nothing compared to the American exceptionalism that this book represents and how many innocent people these ideas have killed across the globe. And make no mistake, I'll keep watching this garbage. And you can too. But for the love of God, don't ever let the people that direct movies like Hancock and Battleship inform your politics. I'm a little disappointed in this one overall. Um, it started off strong when we were still talking about the movie. The back end of this is, is just dog shit. Um... I, I I mean I guess like yeah the book is pro war crimes not even it's not even really pro war crimes it's pro it's pro murder I mean it's just not a war crime war crime um, and it's not even a thing that would happen and it's a thing that not a thing that did happen I mean I guess maybe if you articulate it as the guy's trying to be like it's pro, like you should shoot civilians at the drop of a hat more often i guess technically yeah if you did change the entire roes to you can free fire on civilians for whenever you feel like it sure but um that's never going to happen because it, that would be insane um th that would go counter to like all of the like education and discipline put into the entire like people i don't like i just personally don't like I just personally don't like them. I don't like their fucking leadership stuff. Even they wouldn't agree that you should give um, everybody on the ground like free fire rights because you would just start indiscriminately killing, which is a bad thing. And it doesn't suit any mission. It would make everything more difficult. You would run out of ammo because you're shooting. Like you can just get callous with it. You would just run out of ammunition because you're shooting normal people too much. That happened to the Nazis, I believe. 
um, during one of their fucking thing. It was it maybe maybe it was Barbaros? I can't remember. But they were literally shooting. They were executing prisoners so much that they had to find different means because they were running out of fucking ammunition, which they needed to actually fight in other places. Like, and it, it's just stupid. It's stupid in every like from the most evil direction to the most like okay, I'm going to be a moral purist about stuff, which I, I just don't find is convincing to the people that need to be convinced in these kind of things. So like, whatever, but like also th this, this entire video just seemed like we were resurrecting, you know, when they, that thing where they pulled that pro Pope out of his grave and dressed him up like he was still alive and then put him on trial. That's just what this is. Like the book is 11 years old now, if not more, I guess the movie's 11 years old. Nobody fucking remembers it. It wasn't good. Mark Wahlberg's career doesn't seem to be an ongoing thing where it's like, oh shit, Mark Wahlberg's about to run for president and like lone survivor is going to get him the knob. This just feels like uh, pointless as fuck muckraking for, for no real reason. Uh, there's so many things to make fun of that movie for. I could, like, I did. I wanted to talk. I thought people were like, why is this getting so grim? I don't know. That movie is a fucking romp. It is the stupidest film ever. It's so fucking dumb. It's badly made. <laughs> it makes no fucking sense because it's built built on a lie. Half of the fucking like uh, cool like fighty scenes, it's like oh fucking something happened and no one knows, and now like a guy's getting killed. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's uh, it's it's. It, it, I don't get it. I don't. I don't understand the point of this, other than I guess ongoing America bad sentiment right now. Which hey, you know, whatever. It is what it is. Good luck on your views, by the way. Six K. Um, I would watch out stealing that much. Stealing as much. You stole f so much fucking B footage, uh, and did not credit the did not credit it the right way. Uh, they they will fucking tank you. Talking about the movie with the movie playing in the background is ugh, sus at best fair use um especially with fucking youtube tos like people could fucking mass report your video and get you fucking annihilated in a day for having that much of that video even though you turned it backward which seems like you kind of know that it's bad um but taking news organizations um b-roll footage and not paying for it especially reuters reuters will fuck you up reuters will fuck you up some of that shit probably belongs to getty and stuff just because it's even on the news organization's site doesn't mean that um, it's not like it belongs to them. They might've licensed it even from, you know, Getty or fucking AP or whatever. You can kind of like read stuff. Like when I read it and you see the images, that's me doing commentary, fair use commentary about it. If you're not even talking about the fucking footage and it's just playing in the background and you're talking over it because it's, and it's, it's highlighting your point because it makes the video more visually appealing. Well, that's why they made the fucking B-roll footage in the first place. Like that's why they shot it because it's really good to illustrate the points about the same sort of reporting that you're trying to do right then. So that's just theft. It's just raw theft. Um, unironically, like you could report this video to Getty and have it fucking annihilated. He could actually probably be sued if he made money off of this and he's using any, every one of those things. If he's not, if he doesn't have those licensed and purchased, they have to be bought by the way. I make money still because of a picture I took. In 2015, um, of a brown ass river that a I was on Fort Berthold Reservation. You could probably still look it up. It's Tyler Bell, AP, um, Fort Berthold Reservation. There was a gigantic brine spill, uh, massive ecological event because of oil fracking in that area. This is specifically a storage pond, I believe, and it broke and it went right down into um, the Sakakawea. Uh, Lake Sakakawea, which is like the the water reservoir for all of the Dakotas, basically. Uh, and then it turns into the Missouri. So it's you can't be putting poison in there. I took a picture of that. And I still get paid for it because I licensed it to the AP. I sold it to the AP with a royalty agreement. And so the royal, the, every time the AP licenses it to somebody because they want to talk about oil fracking, and it's a picture of a brown ass fucking river. They pay me a little bit of money. I get royalties off of it. If you're stealing those people's fucking B-roll footage to make your on fucking YouTube video um, and you make any fucking money about it, they're going to come after you stupid hard, but they can all fuck you up because that's copyright violation. It's just raw copyright violation. 
if somebody brought up my photo and they were talking about me, right? Or they were talking about like that thing, like, okay, they brought up the AP article, my photo's there and they're talking about it. That's fine. But if you start like making a, if you make like a little documentary and you're like, poison has spilled into um, bodies of water across the thing. And you like, you flash my picture up on the screen. You owe me $25 for that. And you owe the AP fucking 150, I think it is. It might actually have gone up. It might be a higher license right now because of inflation. So like, I will always fuck. I like. I don't know. Maybe I should fucking report it. Get this guy fucked up a little bit on it. I I was giving him criticism, so it's probably not in the best interest. But like, he should. You, if you watch this, you should really double check because fucking Getty finds out that you're using unlicensed photos, they're gonna hunt you like an animal. AP same. Uh, they don't like it because that's how they fucking make their money is by licensing those photos. You know why you like to use them? Because they like to sell them. They they, they sell that good shit. Show us, show us. Oof. Holy shit, that river is brown, brown. Um, yes, and it fucking sucks, too, because brine doesn't have a color. Like, that that river is brown because rivers are brown. That's it. Uh, the brine that went into the river. Like, the, the, the river is brown because it's in the Badlands, and leaves fall in it, and the leaves rot and release tannins that turn the water and the water, the riverbed, brown. There's actually a beaver down there somewhere. The brine is and this is actually worse, invisible. So, like, it's kind of like a, yeah, like, bad, but fuck you. The the brine is just hyper-salinated salt water with benzene leftovers in it from oil fracking. It's, like, ten times or something more salty than than seawater. It has, it's hyper-concentrated brine that is part of the fracking juice that they use to blow the ground up. It spilled, I think it was a million gallons of it from a storage pond. It spilled down the side of this hill in the Badlands. Every fucking tree it touched, and we were there two days after the spill happened, every tree it touched was dead brown and so brittle you could fucking break it with your hand. Like, like that. All of the grass was brown. Like, dead, dead. And not like that, like, that winter brown, you know, where you're like, okay. Like an ugly, like, your brain tells you, like, this land is poisoned. Get away, get away, get away, get away. Like, fucking that kind of fucked up. And it went down into the reservoir and they're like, we had a net up. And then like my buddy, I was actually, that was me and Josh that I always talk about. Josh Wood was there with me. Uh, we got threatened by the uh, reservation police said that if we got too close to certain areas, they were going to send us to prison <laughs> or no, like it was the, uh, it was her, it was their PR lady who was a white chick. She's like, um, you guys might be speaking with the police if you step any closer to this, blah, 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 blah. And like, sometimes people don't. Uh, they might have to like stay in the fucking prison kind of deal. Like, like giving us a little like needling, like, oh, okay. And then they had me. I was just like standing up on top of his shitty ass car, which he still has somehow, um, taking pictures and stuff. That lady fucking hated me. I brought out the fucking big white telephoto lens, man. I'm shooting off the fucking 200. Like, she would get distracted while she's trying to be like, oh, the beautiful, like, you can see, you know, native stewardship of this land has kept it so good, blah, 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 blah. And then I went like, <laughs> snuck away and started taking pictures of all the fucked up shit. She's like, hey, 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 get over here. <laughs> oh, man. Off topic, did you know that artificial vanilla scent is beaver booty aroma? I've heard that a bunch of times. I think I've been hearing that since I was like fucking 12. Summerton, new Summerton just dropped? Maybe. I hope not. Um, the guy just probably doesn't have a lot of experience, but there is that vibe. There's just a vibe about it. Um, bad video essay. I, I feel like this guy, he, he kind of got away with this one because maybe it was just like a personal project that got way too big. He does have a mic and stuff, and he does know how to edit. A little sus, a little sus, got that big, 6,000, he got like 6,000 fucking subs off his first, that was his first video he ever made, or at least released. Uh, he might just have some expertise with it and just knows how to be pro about it, but it does have that, it does have that like second thought vibe to it, doesn't it? America bad, no real research. He read the book though, and was quoting the book directly from the quote, which is fine, and he should have just, you should have just left it with that buddy, because the other stuff you were looking at was bad. That ProPublica article was crazy. I gotta ask my buddy Josh about her, the uh, Lindsay chick, because he might know her. He did fucking combat, fucking journalism back in the early two uh, late late two thousands, early twenty tens and stuff. 
So he he was probably actually you know he was literally in Lebanon while that kind of covering was, that kind of coverage was going on, working like around those kind of people. I think he knows ProPublica people. I think I met ProPublica people at his fucking wedding, actually, um, with my CIA connections. But no, 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 yeah, yeah, sus, sus reporting, sus, sus theft, he just straight stole, that. those little animations are just straight stolen from the ProPublica article, I know he doesn't have any fucking permission for that. I mean, I guess if you're a real fucking communist, I guess it's the people's, it's the people's fucking, uh, images. Tyler, the stealthiest journalist giant, I just talk to people, I just talk to people. I'm glad you covered the video because I listened to the original video at work and was like, dang, that's crazy. But you can contextualize a lot of the video for me. Well, I'm welcome. You're welcome. welcome, welcome. Yeah, it's like mid. I would say it's mid. There's so much. You could just, just, you could have just rocked. If you just know anything about the military, you could fucking rock that movie for forever. It's so stupid. Uh, I'm not surprised. I was, I was talking shit. I told you guys, I never read the book. I fucking think I even really knew that it was based on a book other than probably it says it but like it's one of those things where it's like everything's kind of based on a book but who knows how good it is but even I was like I, I'm telling you guys I'm fucking like it's not like you know I have like genius level experience but even me I'm like that sounds like bullshit you know what I'm saying? like that just doesn't sound like it just doesn't make any fucking sense <laughs> we get to it it's a fiction author wrote it <laughs> oh my god I can't believe it is this live stream end song Sag. yes it is yes it is yes it is I am so tired. I stayed up late tonight. It's 1.34 a.m. I'm probably going to do a late stream tomorrow to make my time back up. Um, sorry, buddy. Sorry, buddy. But this is a good one. Also, I don't think this was too... I don't think this was too dark at the end of the night. But it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. Uh, definitely not something I could have gone back for a second. So it, it wasn't supposed to be this long. I thought he was just going to fucking make fun of the movie. And it would have been better. But he just kind of fucking went off in the left field saying shit <laughs> and then like fucking address all of it uh, but I did listen to I did listen to the entire video did I not? I listened to the entire video that's just how long it takes if I listen to the entire video boy oh boy oh boy have you seen Shogun yet? I think you dig it people keep asking me and I keep saying no if I could I will I'd love to see you clown on Peter Coffin they've been going on a pro AI shtick later Peter Coffin goes by they them pronouns but I find that weird. I don't know why I find that weird. Maybe I just didn't know that. Boy, 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 boy. Ladies and gentlemen, you have been listening to Westside Tyler Live, and I have been Westside Tyler Bell. I'm going to be back tomorrow at 9 p.m. Uh, for a shortened three-hour session. I hope you guys enjoyed this session. I've got to get up in the morning and edit the rest of my fucking audiobook. Audiobook? Audiobook? You, he creates stuff? He writes shit? You're goddamn fucking right. I do. Hey, my name's Tyler Bell. Did you know you have access to a great audiobook coming out very soon about a book that you can buy right now? Yeah, it's called West by God. Um, and it's based. If you like my uh, approach to critique and you think that I have any modicum of talent or you just like listening to my voice, you can get the book and listen to my head, your, my voice in your head, like I'm a fucking possessing demon from the third circle of hell. Um, you can buy that at westsidefairytales.com. Actually, I have the thing. I program them. I program them. I program them. I program them. Did it work? Hell yeah. Novel. There we go. There we go. There we go. So you can click either of those two links and get the novel. The audiobook is going to be coming out in the next few weeks. I'm finishing it up probably tomorrow. God. shoulder exercise um so check that out as i kind of wrap that up and finish moving into my new house i'm gonna get back to writing again thank fucking god uh and, and hand off some of the additional responsibilities for this channel to my editors um and i am probably going to be reorganizing my current patreon which you guys don't even know that i have but i do i have a patreon patreon.com slash westside fairy tales um, I'm going to turn that into a WSF Productions thing, so it's going to mix all of this shit together, and you'll also be able to hear, read, and listen to probably some of my sword stories and shit that I am releasing, uh, or I'll be releasing going forward. And then, if you want to hear my writing and stuff, or listen to my writing or read it, there we go, there we go, um, you'll be able to check it out there too, probably as well. So I'll be talking about more of that coming up soon, 
but yeah if you're interested in any of my other shit my fiction that i make find out more about it patreon.com slash website fairy tales i'll be back tomorrow um with i don't know what maybe we will be talking about um I think we have the fat acceptance cartoon all the rest of this doesn't seem long enough i'm definitely not going to fucking noah samson versus destiny shit um so maybe we'll be talking about peter coffin um cringing with coffin cringing with coffin new on nbc um so yeah yeah check, check that out at nine if you want to recommend content you should join motherfucking vod gang by hopping over to the discord right meow right meow meow the Discord is a cool place for all of the people that enjoy the podcast to hang out after the fact, which is going to be as soon as I end this thing. The invite code is, as always, in the episode description down below. Yet again, westsidefairytales.com for more information about me and about all of my stuff. And that's it. Ladies and gentlemen, one last time, you have been watching West Side Tyler Live. I have been West Side Tyler Bell. And y'all have been fucking great so stay easy be cool and until next time as always stay safe out there